Well, this is it. Hello, world. Hello, Bru. Hello, everyone here in Newcastle. You're watching all over the world. The Legends of League, the third year of this very special tournament, also raising funds for the Mark Hughes Foundation. Old school rugby league, great rugby league players. We go back as far, well, the oldest player on show today will be Cliff Lyons, uh, closer to 60 than 50 years of age. Rod Silver is now about to turn 52 years of age. Billy Peden, 49. There are wall to wall stars. And alongside me, too, greats. Rugby League. Great. Andrew Simons, yes. Brett Kamali, no, former. Great, great well, well, let's well, there we go. Look at this. This is what happens at Legends of League. Andrew Simons is here today representing the Brisbane Broncos. Yeah, it's a How passion. did this happen? It's a passion of mine. I used to train with the Broncos back in the day and uh, built some good friendships there over the years. And they always welcomed me back to the club to come and watch or to do whatever I have to do. So, yeah, it's nice to be a part of this and there's a, there's a nice buzz building here. I understand it's because Sailor Takiri just haven't lived up to expectations the last couple of years, so you've been called in as a secret weapon. True or false? Probably false, but we can't <laughs> we can't uh, divulge everything no, here, Bossy, okay. you know? Yeah. Secret I've weapon. I've also said that all the other league players there, Andrew thinks that league players are soft. Yes. So that when he runs at him, just to let him know that he's a cricketer. With, with a watch and the sunnies. With a watch and the sunnies on. <laughs> and so a cap. What they, don't hit a guy with a hat on or something. Now look what has happened. Canterbury, if you haven't followed the Legends of League the last two years, Canterbury have been outstanding. Shifty Sherwin, Big Willie, Andrew Ryan, Luke Patton, the general, been amazing. Brett Kamali has jumped ship. Uh, not part of the Canterbury no, squad. You're no, in no. fact in charge of the Barbarians. You are coach of the team I believe is the dark horse for this tournament this year. Yeah, well, I got the program this morning and I saw that I've been given a job. Yeah. Far from okay. commentary today. I'm coaching as well. So uh, I have jumped off Canterbury. I, I, I can't say that too loud. Not yet. Yeah. Boys around. No, I'm not out of yet. Uh, obviously, favourites again, Canterbury. Yep. They've got, they've got jerseys coming with kit. They've done an off season. They're ready to go. Yep. But yes, the Barbarians. I'm when they win it, I'll say great coaching. Yeah, yeah. Now, a little, little bit more about the tournament. It is Nines Rugby League. So you've seen the Nines play before, most recently the World Cup. Same rules. Uh, nine aside, uh, nine-minute halves, of course. Uh, and we have sets of five. That's very important that you notice that. We do have four-point tries. We have bonus zone tries that are worth five. If you score between the posts, we do have golden try extra time. So there's a whole lot of things that will explain during the course of the day. But let's get down to business. I do have a clipboard, which makes me pretty special. And we want to run through the sides right now. Now, this is the first year that we've had a full Penrith team competing. Uh, Andrew Simons, they're going to bring you in on Penrith. Uh, one of my favourite players from the 2003 Grand Final, and there's plenty of stars at this 03 Grand Final side, Reese Wesser, great Queenslander, Reese Lightning. Can yeah. he be a star at this tournament? Oh, I think so, yeah. I mean, a dynamic player, a natural, naturally gifted player, plays what he sees in front of himself. So, look to watch for him today. What about the coaching staff of Penrith? I, I mean, know. they've blown the budget. Luke Lewis, Clive Churchill medal winner. Luke Prittis, Clive Churchill yes. medal winner. Internationals. Very good. And, and obviously, it's important. We, you know, the coach plays a big role in today's game. Massive. Yeah, massive, massive role. Massive and role. obviously, two legends there. I'm wondering how Luke Lewis is going to go commentating and coaching. Uh, so, I don't know whether he's... He'll stop on the live streaming for some messages for the right. team to the other coach in, in Luke Prittis, but just talking to the, the former halfback and Craig Gower. Yeah. The chocolate soldiers, he called the jerseys back. That's it, they're wearing the yeah. brown and white. Yeah, Craig Gower, the 0-3. Frankie 03. Pritchard's jumped off Can Look at Frankie Pritchard, Amazing. jumped off Canterbury Amazing. as well. It looks enormous. So good luck to Louis the chocolate there, get, soldiers yep. today Louis, for Penrith. Louis, what are you saying to them? What's the messages? Are you as the coach? What's your message? We're just to checking the team? live here. Luke Lewis can't hear yeah, us. He's got no idea. Yeah, no. He's oh, hello, Luke no, Lewis. He's got a coach's role. No, it's not an autograph session, no, Luke. No. We were just asking a question. Mate, you're the coach of the Penrith side on the big team. What's going on? There what we go, Luke what's Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen. Tell us what Penrith are going to do. He's got a complete high. I'm going to say, well, he's going to complete high, get the ball out wide, kick the touch. We've got Lukey uh, Walsh there, who's uh, so only boring. just retired. That, that so. Is so boring. Why did he come over here and say, we're going to throw it around? Because I can't really tell you the truth. It's like playing poker. You can't tell the truth. Luke Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Thanks, boys. Let's move on to the exclusive interview there. Next team we're going to have a look at is the Parramatta side. Now, Nathan Hindmarsh is captain of the Eels, as you know, going all the way back to his days at Robertson Primary School. Nathan Hindmarsh competed in 73 grand finals in his life, from primary school all the way to when he finished with uh, Parramatta. He has finished second on all occasions. Now, that is such a sad story. Will this be the day that Hindy breaks through for a, for a victory? The word that comes to mind when you talk about Nathan is eluded. 
right. these things keep eluding Nathan, and it, yes. today won't be any different, I'm afraid, Bossy. <laughs> so, so, joke. Joke. So, yeah, no luck for Nathan. That's a shame. That's a shame. So we just move on. Anything you can see at Parramatta? Mark Tukey could be their yeah. secret weapon. Yeah, I played a charity game once before with Mark Tukey, and he gave himself a kicking license. So that's not what Luke Lewis said. Luke Lewis is a bit boring, but, you know, we're not going to go hiking for it. Mark Tukey could do a chip and chase from a kickoff today and regather nice. and sidestep nice. the fullback on the way, and nice. it'll be one of the best tries. It's like the Brett Mullins try yeah. up here in the mid 90s from Canberra yeah. Raiders. Yeah. Like, yeah. That could be something like that. That could or be. Or not. Maybe. Not. Mark Tukey shaking his head. No. <laughs> Let's move on to the crowd favourites. I'm assuming there's a few Newcastle fans here for this one. The Newcastle side with uh, Denny Benzaras as captain uh, and Kurt Gidley ever fit. Did you see Robbie O'Davis? I mean, is he the world's fittest man, Robbie O'Davis, Andrew? There's a player to fear. Yes, I think uh, he might need to do a little test, I think, or something uh, th before the day's over. But he's he's looking uh, like a miniature Hulk, isn't he? Looking yeah. good. The coaching staff here again when we're talking about breaking salary caps. Mark Hughes there, but a bloke called Andrew Johns who, who actually owns the grandstand and it's only the Johns family allowed to sit in there today, yeah. uh, which is quite incredible. That's the power of the man. Yeah, that's right. And obviously, you know, home ground event, just got to come into play. All locals, big fan base. There'll be like 30, 40,000 people probably no. here watching this local side. If they make the grand final, the gates will have to be certainly closed down for the, the flock of people to arrive later. Yep. And Bill Peden, two tries in the 0-1 grand final. Won't that be a story if he matches that here at Legends of League? Scores two tries, and, maybe in the final, and, and, at 49 years of age. Yeah, yeah. But you seem to think age is a problem, Bossy. I don't, no, know, I don't. I don't know if age is a problem. Look at Tim Manor walked Tim by, Manor. recently retired. Oh. Joel Reddy, oh. Michael Witt selling real estate here, pushing it on his teammates, quite amazing. What Let's about the Mark Hughes Foundation, obviously the major sponsor, yep. too, of the Newcastle Knights, which is a part of the reason why we're here doing the Legends of League tournament. Support of the players and the crowd over the last couple of years has been fantastic, and the corporate sponsors. We move on to the Canterbury team, the defending champions. They have stuck together this solid unit. Uh, you know, any team with a big willy is obviously going to have an impact, and uh, Andrew Ryan there, Bobcat, Shifty Sherwin, yeah. Daniel Holdsworth, they're just... It just rolls off the tongue. This is these are the defending champions, Andrew. Well, this is this is probably a, the strongest team on paper. This yeah. is a should-win situation, isn't it? Yes. But I know that a couple of the teams have come up with a couple of uh, plays that might uh, pull them apart here today. Well, I know the Brisbane apart. side have got a couple of things that pull they're going to we're going to whack into Willie and that sort of thing. So um, we'll, we'll see how how they go. Their, the expectation here is high. So. Brisbane have been training because a lot of people do the old oh no I didn't train I didn't do any preparation we'll just get together and throw it around. Mate up in Queensland we're very good at communication. Bush Telegraph excellent yeah. thing. All right okay now we get down to the last two sides in fact who will feature in the first game Barbarians I can tell you have won the toss will kick off yeah. uh, Brisbane will run towards the big screen so let's talk about the Barbarian side first of all um, this is your team, Brett. Yes, so my team. You've, you've learned yeah. it off by heart. Yeah, Todd, Todd Carney was one of the best players in last year's tournament and still, still played a bit of football this year. They, they did lose Matt Bowen. Mm. Matt Bowen was in this team last year, late yeah. withdrawal, yeah. but obviously, you know, they've, they've fixed that. But a Cliff um, Lyons try to Beaver Menzies, can that happen today? Yes. Can Cliffy put Beaver through one last hole? Of course he will. Well, Chris that... Ironton, I think, made the tackle of the tournament last yes. year. A cover tackle, uh, like grand final from Sattler in the 80, in, uh. in, down the sideline. Chris Hindley did that, so Hino backs up again today. Bryce Gibbs, Bryce another Gibbs. try scoring specialist. Yes. Famous Amos, Amos Roberts, Matt Singh. What a yes. squad, Brett. If you don't win, Brett, you'll be sacked. Okay, thanks. That, that, that is a very good squad okay. there. I, I need to go and talk to my paper. team and just tell them to win. Okay, and now the Barbarians' first opponent is Brisbane. Andrew Simons, you know, appreciate your time. You're only 12 minutes away from kicking off, <laughs> and here you are on the microphone. This Brisbane squad. I think Scotty Prince, where Matt Bowen was the star of the tournament, Scott Prince, he could be the star. He's your key man for mine, apart from yourself. Yeah, I mean, he's just been idling away. I've been watching him over the last couple of hours, and he's looking the business. Um, still incredibly fit. Um, and, and speaking to the boys moments ago, he's, he's um, a man that they, we need around the group, and he's been instrumental in what's probably going to happen today. All right. And, and Andrew, one last word on your, your The position you're actually playing, is it, is it a utility role? Is it a roving commission? Are you just out on the wing? Where are you playing? Yeah, I've just contracted to the club at the moment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Simons, ladies and gentlemen, available for parties and for your team. If you want to call us, he will uh, participate. Yeah, yeah. And hello, mate. No, you want to come in? No, we'll get your tip as well, mate. Just one last tip. Who do you think will win today, mate? Who's going to win? No, don't win. Sorry? Barbarians. No, you said barbarians. Barbarians, barbarians to win. Yeah, Ladies yeah, and yeah, gentlemen, yeah. this is the Legends of League. It's a little loose on ground. It's a little different. You are in for a great day with the likes of Andrew Simons. So many superstars in action. Brett Kamali in the coaching ranks. 
What a day, and we're all supporting the Mark Hughes Foundation, so a big thank you in advance. Have a great day, everyone. And a very good afternoon and welcome along to McDonald Jones Stadium for the third annual Legends of League. It should be a really entertaining afternoon of Rugby League here. Of course, the teams, they're getting ready. You saw the preview there with Andrew Simons, Brett Kamali and Andrew Voss. And uh, the opening game of today, it is, of course, the uh, Barbarians taking on the Brisbane Broncos. These two sides met in the second game of the 2017 tournament. And it should be a, an interesting way to see how this game goes. 24 to 13 was the score, the Barbarians over Brisbane. A couple of new faces in some of the teams. And of course, as Vossie mentioned at the start of the preview, Canterbury Bankstown, they're going for their third consecutive Legends of League title. They were winners against Newcastle 10-6 in the inaugural competition in 2017. And then they won against the Barbarians last year after just creeping into the final with that 11 points to 10 victory over the Newcastle Knights. So it's Canterbury and the Barbarians in the grand final last year. Will that be the case in 2019? Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're well on this Saturday afternoon, wherever you may be finding us, whether it's the NRL live streams, the Legends of League website, the Facebook sites, or of course, KO Sports. Great to have your company. My name is John O'Farr. I'll be your lead commentator for this afternoon's proceedings. And of course, we'll have a, a myriad of rugby league talent in the broadcast box. Luke Lewis from the Penrith Panthers. He'll be joining us. He won two comps with the Panthers and the Sharks. Brett Kamali, he'll be back into the broadcast box. Of course, he's played for a number of clubs. Knights, Mariners, Storm, Northern Eagles, Sharks and Dogs. And then a little bit later in the day, we'll have some uh, special guests joining us in the broadcast box. So it should be a really fun afternoon of rugby league and we're just getting set for this opening game, as I mentioned, between the Barbarians and Brisbane. We'll go through the, uh, the rundown of the day. Of course, the opening game, we've talked about that, the Barbarians and Brisbane. Then, of course, it's the Battle of the Westerners in Game 2, Parramatta taking on Penrith. In Game 3, it's Canterbury and the Barbarians. And Game 4 will be Penrith taking on Newcastle. And you'll be able to see how the tournament really shifts and changes. A lot of these older players with some of their injuries coming into play. We'll see how that takes place. Game five, that starts at around three o'clock. That'll be Canterbury and Brisbane. And then, of course, game six, the last of the pool matches. It'll be Newcastle, Parramatta. So six teams involved in the 2019 edition. We've taken Manly out. We've added a few Manly players into the Barbarian side. And, of course, we've brought the men from the mountain the Penrith Panthers and then of course semi-final one will be 4.15 semi-final two 4.45 and then of course the grand final at 5.30 will it be the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs in the grand final again they only just got there in 2018 when the event was at Central Coast Stadium can they make it a third appearance or will uh, a couple of the teams upset the apple cart and make an appearance so we're getting set here at McDonald Jones Stadium it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon here rather warm we hope that uh, you're safe from the fires wherever you may be watching and uh, of course if you're battling the blazers uh, our prayers and thoughts are with you and we hope that uh, they are safe from your house or business or anywhere that's important to you so we'll take a break here on the coverage and on the other side we'll come back with all the action of the 2019 legends of league event live here from mcdonald jones stadium in newcastle
Please stand for the national anthem to be performed by Newcastle local, the very talented Jamie Russon. close to kick off to our first game of the 2019 Legends of League and it will be the mighty Brisbane side against the Barbarians. So we're all getting set for the 2019 edition of the Legends of League tournament here at McDonald Jones Stadium. Of course the opening clash will, between, will be between the Brisbane Broncos and the Barbarians, a team made up of players that have played for a number of teams and of course some manly players. Uh, that have joined the side for 2019. A man that's played for two clubs, including the Sharks and the Panthers, winning a comp for both of them, one in 2003, one in 2016, is Luke Lewis. He joins me in the broadcast box. Luke, beautiful day here in Newcastle. This should be a fun day of footy. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. I'm so pumped to be here. I didn't get the opportunity to be here last year, but I tell you what, it's good to see some uh, familiar faces. A lot of guys that are here, there's someone that I absolutely idolise as a kid. So absolutely amazing. The scenes are amazing. The fans have turned up in numbers and... Yeah, I can't wait to watch his first game. So, yeah, everything's sort of shaping up to be a perfect day of football. Now, you're jumping into the coaching box for the Mighty Panthers. Uh, you've played in Premiership Grand Finals. Now you're in the coaching box. How have you made the adjustment? Oh, yeah, it's pretty pretty easy for me at the moment. Uh, all the boys, uh, they know what they need to do. They get out there, have a bit of fun. But it's bringing back a lot of memories, you know, getting back into these change rooms here at, uh, up at Newcastle and uh, seeing all the old faces. It's been a, a really good uh, start to the day. And, uh, look, the boys are... Just want to get out there and have a bit of fun, throw the ball around and uh, fingers crossed that all the balls and all the passes stick and we can score some tries and, and beat it at the end of the day as well. And let's hope there's no injuries as well to some of the players. Yeah, so. absolutely. I'm going to have to lace them up. I'll bring me boots just in case, so <laughs> see what happens. Captain Coach, you never know. <laughs> Louis might be on there. Uh, Anthony Maroon, you are sidelined from Radio Triple M. You're uh, taking in all the action as the Broncos and Barbarians make their way onto the field. What's, the, what's it like down sideline? Yeah, good afternoon, boys. Well, it's a wonderful atmosphere down here. A little bit of wind about the place, but a beautiful 23 degrees if you're in the Newcastle area. Not too late to get down here. Crowd building, but I tell you what I'm most looking forward to seeing is the blokes we never see. A lot of blokes turn up in the media, don't they? But what about blokes like PJ Marsh and Reese Wesser and Big Mark Tukey? We get to see these guys run around today. And if you ask me for a tip, I just got a feeling about the Barbarians. Jono? Okay, well, let's see how you go with that maroon. Uh, I'm going to go with the hometown boys, Newcastle. They came very close to the grand final last year, missed out on a, a dubious refereeing call. Uh, probably should have been in that grand final against the Barbarians. Louis, who's your money on? Yeah, I can't go past the, the, the uh, Bulldogs at the moment. They've won it three yep. years in a row, and uh, they're looking sharp at the moment. Uh, they're down there warming up. They take it very seriously. They've got big Marco Millie and Willie Mason. And, yeah, you know, sure. We've got Matty Utah out there on the wing as well. He's looking absolutely a treat. So they're going to be hard to beat. But, yeah, hopefully the Panthers are there as well. Absolutely. Well, let's see who it is. Hope your team is there. And we're seconds away from the start of the 2019 Legends of League tournament. Anthony Maroon, Luke Lewis, and my name is John O'Farr, your commentary team for this opening game. Should be an absolute classic. These two sides, they played in the second game in the 2017 tournament. And it was a win to the Barbarians. Todd Carney gets us underway. And we are good to go as Crocker now takes the ball for the Barbarians. And he'll play it inside that attacking quarter. You might notice the goalposts at the dead ball line. A little bit different here as now Hyington takes it forward for the Barbarians. And there's an opportunity for first points early doors. Looking towards the western side. They come across to Carney. The intercept is on with Walker for Brisbane. Comes back for the Barbarians. 
Now a work towards the middle as the Barbarians play it. And it'll be uh, Sims that plays it just shy of the try line. Gives it away to Menzies in that uh, very familiar headgear. He'll play it about five short of the line. From dummy half, Lestrange, good ball away. And the Barbarians take it close to the line. Chance now here for points. Can they be the first one? Carney, oh, oh. big hit. A massive hit from the, uh, the Broncos there. PJ Marsh put a shot on. Yeah, beautiful from the Broncos. And now uh, a three-man tackle puts the man to ground for the Barbarians. Along to Carney. Now they come back through the middle. Chance here for points for the Barbarians. Now they uh, take it towards the try line and the Brisbane Broncos pick it up firstly. Louis, what'd you make of the first set of six from the Barbarians? Yeah, it was a bit of a miss kick there off the kickoff from the Barbarians. They got the ball back, they shift the ball left to right, but weren't really making too many inroads. Really good defensive set there by the Broncos defending their line under the pump. They come up with a beautiful shot there on PJ Marsh. It was a beautiful start to the half. So the Broncos bring it back. And now it's Eastwood, the former Bulldog and Bronco. Takes it to almost the halfway line. Now they'll go from acting half to Prince. Looks for some options. The Broncos just trying to get out through some defensive lines. Now Sim Sims on to Walker. Walker pushing forward. A little low tackle there from Steve Menzies. As the Broncos play it a couple of metres short of the halfway line. From dummy half, they shift it wide to the eastern side, and it's Prince. Gives the ball across. Chance, foul points. It's Sailor down the touchline. Comes back in field. Good defensive effort. Hard to... Put the man down, Dell. He'll play it just shy of the quarter line. Back along the back line to Prince. Good short ball. Oh, great ball into oh, Walker. Yeah. Walker puts the kick through. Maroon, you loved every bit of that. What's it like sideline? Absolutely wonderful atmosphere down here. Some of these players look like they've lost none of the skill. And Big Dell Sailor, who's already being replaced there, Minto goes on. But see if we can't grab a word with Big Dell. Wendell, you've got time for a quick word. We'll get him over here. Mate, what about that? Your first run and you made 30 metres. I love you. Oh, mate. Don't have the pace anymore, mate. Bit tiring already. Hey, there you go. A little bit of humility there too from the big fella. Back to you, Jono. Thank you. Thank you, Maroon, as the Barbarians take it forward. Dell's fired up for a big day as Hyington tries to go the one-on-one -on -one strip. But Sim says, no, not on my watch. And the Broncos take it forward through Eastwood. Good ball goes to ground, chipped away. Chance for points go begging for the Broncos and they lose a bit of real estate. And now Roberts will play it inside the attacking half, but it'll come back. So, Louis, I mean, some great skills on offer here. And some of the boys, I think it's shades of the old days. Oh, absolutely. The skill shown there by the Broncos, the ball movement from one edge to the other edge. And there's the passing from the Scotty Prince to find Ben Hannon on that left edge. Comes with a beautiful little right-hand flick pass to find Walker down a sideline. And he goes out. And luckily there for the Barbarians, they got the ball stripped off from through Chris Hynington. But they get the ball back from a knock-on from the Broncos. Cliffy Lyons in the 16. He plays it from acting half. Away it goes the back line. Campisi tries to bring it back in field. Good ball away, and the Barbarians play it nicely through Minto, who's just come onto the field. He's in opposition territory now. Along the back line, Campisi away to Hyington. The big don't argue. Back to uh, now to Lions. Out wide they go. Chance for the Barbarians. They take it down the touchline. It's beautiful work from Roberts, who goes towards back inside. And there's a foot on the touchline, I'd say, Louis. Yeah, it's just been called back. It was a I think it's been called back for a forward pass. It was a really nice break there. And nice ball movement again from the Barbarians, but just couldn't get that last pass right for them to get across the line. And Broncos survive another set. So they play it through Sims. Now it comes back and the Broncos just... Good shot. Play it forward just shy of Bryce the quarter Gibbs. line. Good sized crowd in here at McDonald Jones Stadium as Hannett takes it forward. Plays it just outside the quarter. You might notice the field just a fraction smaller than your regular NRL field. As now the Broncos play it from acting half. Good defence there from the Barbarians. About six short of the halfway line. Now to Julian O'Neill. On to Tony Carroll. Oh, what about the show and go? On to Sims. He fires it over the top. O'Neill tries to stumble on it. It's picked up by the Broncos at the back through Scotty Prince. And now Prince pushes one away. Gives the ball across field. Now the Broncos, they take it forward. Scotty Minto. Geez, he played some good footy back in 2003 on the win for the Broncos. He's looking sharp out there at the moment as well. He's got some superb footwork, Minto. Sims now plays it. 
Now they go from acting half. Takes it forward. Broncos just shy of the halfway line. Barbarians are piling up on the sideline, ready to have a crack and come on the field as the Broncos spill the ball. And the Barbarians will have it. Of course, uh, some of the uh, refereeing royalty here, of course, course, today. Sean Hampstead, Stephen Clark. Great to have them involved in the game today. Now in its third year, and Canterbury looking to win their third successive title as the Barbarians take it forward. Now they'll play it from dummy half. Short ball and a good one. Back inside the Barbarians, some quick hands. Along the back line it goes to uh, Matty Singh. Matty Singh pushes one away. Comes in field. He'll play it a couple of metres short they, of the try line. They've got to send it. Oh, ball comes loose. Good pressure there by Benny Hennett. They were under all sorts of pressure there. The Broncos had about six or seven Barbarians outside that left post. They had to get the ball there. Benny Hennett's only two in on his defensive line and comes up with a big play. The Broncos get the ball back, coming out of their own end. So as Walker now takes it forward. And they go from acting half. Now away to Hannett. He plays it hard for the Broncos. Plays it about eight short of the halfway line. Now the Broncos go to Sims. Good one-on-one -on -one tackle there. And now Tilts with a good uh, defensive performance as Prince now has the ball. A chip chase. Walker might have been held back there in the initial play. Hannett taps it back. Beaver Menzies has got the football. Now Menzies. Look at the pivot and spin. He gets it away. The Barbarians have lost it. Well, a bit of flashiness there from uh, Beaver. Uh, yeah. Louis, but uh, couldn't get any more points, unfortunately. Yeah, that was a beautiful bit of play there by uh, Steve Menzies. Comes up with a beautiful little spin, flick pass. I think it was uh, Cam Pesia there, couldn't pick up the ball, but yeah, really fancy play there by Steve Menzies. So let's go sideline with Maroon. He's yeah. with Michael Crocker. Good on you, John. Uh, Crocs, well, mate, how, what's the pace like out there? Yeah, it is pretty fast. Uh, obviously the first run for a lot of us for a while, and a little bit of, a, you know, like, like sparring, just a few little jabs, and Eventually someone's going to put some someone on the ground and I think it'll get a little bit serious. So uh, I think it's just uh, a, a test in our phase at the moment. Mate, you'll get better as the Arvo goes on. My lungs might not, but... <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Mick Crocker. On the sideline, we might be just about to see our first try. Back to you, Jono. Yeah, absolutely, Maroon. And it looks like uh, Benny Hannett's gone over in the sideline. So there's your first try for the Legends of League. Lottie Dakiri with the last pass. The replay will be a pretty thing to watch. Courtesy of the Bar TV Pictures and Louis, the Broncos, the first to score in this Legends of League tournament. Yeah, beautiful little play there down that right edge, all yeah. set up by Scotty Prince. Comes up with a nice little block play, fine big Dell out the back, and then he just tips it on. I think it was Benny Hennett who was sitting on the sideline. Here it is here, Ashton Sims comes with a nice little quick play of the ball. And Scotty Prince loves to get on the front foot. He's dictating terms all this first half, setting up plays, and here he is here. Sets up a beautiful little play down a short edge. And he sees Big Dell screaming for it out the back. And then Big Dell just knows he has to get the ball to Benny Hannett. Scores in the corner. And the Broncos off to a good start, 4-0. Yeah, he didn't hold on to it too long, Lottie. So that looks like half time here in the opening game. And we'll go sideline with Maroon. He's down there with a the try scorer, Benny Hannett. Yeah, here he is, the polar bear. These days he's a uh, breakfast radio king on the Gold Coast, mate. You've made history. First try in the Legends of League today. Mate, you're uh, working up a bit of a lather there. You've got a good sweat going. The pace is pretty severe. Good on you, Benny. Get in there, get some, uh, get some refreshments in here for half time. And good luck to the Broncos in the Legends of League, the Savo. Thank you, Maroon. So he's there sideline. He'll be there all day and uh, chatting to the players, getting their perspective. So half time here in this Legends of League clash between the Broncos and the Barbarians. And uh, your scoreline is four points to nil in favour of the Broncos. As I mentioned earlier, they played each other in the second game of the 2017 tournament. It was a 24-13 victory to the Barbarians. 
Um, Louis, from what you've seen in that first half, what do the Barbarians need to do to get themselves back in this contest? Oh, they've just got to hold the ball. We, we talk about it all the time, but in this format, the nines, you don't, don't get too many uh, opportunities with the ball to attack the line. They've had their opportunities. Uh, for the Broncos, their defence has been spot on on their line, and they've come up with some really nice defensive reads. But the Barbarians have asked them a lot of questions, but it's just that last pass they can't get right. There was one that went forward. Uh, Matty Singh was going close to going over for a try. You know, a really nice break there made by Steve Menzies. Comes up with a flick pass, but uh, Campisi just couldn't pick it up. They're just blowing the cobwebs out. It's their first game for a long time, and uh, they'll get better as the day goes on. I think they would have learned a lot from that first nine minutes. And the Broncos, they look pretty uh, pretty slick. There's uh, a lot of movement from guys like Takiri. Friend's been really good from dummy half. Scotty Prince has been playing his role. Is it just about doing what they've done in that first half and, and wash, rinse, repeat? Well, I think what I like about the Broncos is that they hold shape and they just let Scotty Prince around the middle just dictate terms. And he's sitting around the middle. He's calling plays out wide and he's just shifting the ball and let the ball do all the work. There's not a whole lot of speed out there at the moment just because they're trying to find their feet. So... Yeah, I think it's a massive bonus having Scotty Prince on your side. He's still very fit, still playing for Australia in the touch football competition, and he's really showing his dominance here so far in this Nines tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I noticed uh, Heath Lestrange, the hooker, uh, he's still been playing for Hills Bulls uh, right in the Ron Massey Cup and the lower levels. So, you know, a lot of these players are, are still involved at various different levels, as you mentioned. So we're underway here in the second half. As now Campisi takes it forward for the Barbarians and plays it to the quarter line. Now the Barbarians just looking a little more dangerous and a little more determined in this second half as uh, Crocker takes it forward. Away it goes to Carney, a long floater. Oh. Wide to Roberts. Good little footwork from him, but Scotty Minto puts him to ground. And they're tackled on the eastern side right on the halfway. Menzies, quick little pass back inside and the Barbarians take it forward. Play it a couple of metres into opposition territory. Now to Carney. It'll be torpedo-style kick. Down it goes to Big Dell, who's got some work to do. Crocker goes over the top. Ball comes loose. Oh, it's a try to Campisi. Oh, easy Campisi. Maroon sideline. You saw all of that. Thoughts? Yeah, it happened right in front of me there, mate. Big Dell Sailor. He thought he had that ball. He thought he had it grounded. It just popped out the back and... Uh Campisi was on the spot there, but Big Dell, I tell you what, he did a couple of minutes early in that first half, and he was really blowing up a storm. Some of these blokes are just going to get, I guess, run into a bit of condition as the day goes on. But what about tons of Carroll? I, think, I don't think he's had a break yet. He's been out in there in the middle, and he's been busy. Well, that was a superb try from the Barbarians, a beautiful kick that really tricked Dell. Look at the way Crocker's coming at the ball, Louis. Yeah, he was flying. Crocker's a beautiful kick there by uh, Todd Carney. He just puts it up. Makes Big Tell turn around. He can't see Crocker coming. He puts all sorts of pressure on. And really good chase there as well by Campisi, who kicks the goal from the sideline to put him in front, 6-4. So now Brisbane take it forward. And Minto runs into a wall of defence, but manages to pivot and spin his way out to get some more valuable metres. A couple of metres short of the half. Friend it comes away to Eastwood. Oh, big show and go from the big fella. Goes over the halfway line. Hope you're enjoying the coverage, whether you're watching it on the Legends of League Facebook site, the NRL Facebook site, or, of course, KO Sports. As now Hannett plays it forward. Plays it on the 22. Now Big Dell tries to get his hands on the footy. Away to Prince. Ball towards the eastern side. Taken over on the far side. Beautifully by Singh. He goes to ground. Now the Barbarians will try and play it out of their quarter. As they bump and grind their way forward just outside that quarter line. Four points to nil in favour of Brisbane. Just now Tills takes it forward. Gives the ball back inside. Chance here to Sing. Sing now. Plays it uh, about six or seven short of the halfway line. Move. They go towards the eastern side and a ragdoll tackle from Brisbane. Puts him to the ground. Now they come to Carney who puts another towering bomb up. And it bounces unfavourably. Now Tony Carroll will get the ball for Brisbane. So six points to four in favour of the Barbarians after that Tony uh, after that Terry Campisi try. Since now Brisbane will play it forward. A couple of metres short of the halfway line. Nice little back and forth tussle going on here, Louis. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see the fatigue factor really starting to kick in. I was just watching the players in the Barbarian side there, just walking back to get back on side. It took them a good two or three plays, and before you know it, they were kicking. So the fatigue factor is really starting to kick in for both sides. Comes back for Brisbane onto Sims, away to Prince, onto Friend. 
And now the Brisbane side just try and work it through some heavy traffic from the Barbarians. Cliffy Lyons and Crocker putting the tackle on. The ball comes loose. The penalty will go to Brisbane. Two on one. Maroon, the wind's starting to pick up a little bit. What sort of effect is that having on the field? Absolutely, mate. Right behind the Barbarians at the moment. His big Dell goes straight through the middle. I think he's going to make amends here, Jono. And he'll get a bonus try. Maroon, the first of the day and the first of the tournament. So that's worth five points, not just the four. And that puts Brisbane back in front. Again, what about the work here by Scotty Prince? You can see the, the communication between him and Big Dell. Scotty Prince just comes off his left foot, sees a bit of a hole up the middle, finds Big Dell flying and gets a bonus try for the Brisbane side. And now kicks the... Oh, it misses a goal from in front, Scotty Prince. <laughs> and it's now 9-6 to the Broncos. Jeez, I remember Mark Levy did that in about 1984 for Penrith. You'd remember that, Maroon, against Jeez. Canterbury. I tell you what, you're showing your age there, Jono. <laughs> I remember that too back in 1984 when I was 18 years old. But, yeah, look out. People listening to us in the Illawarra. Dell will be home tonight, and he will be telling stories about that try right through till Christmas, mate. And by the time he gets home, he'll run 70 metres to score that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just going to say the, uh, the distance will grow as the years go by. So back underway, and now Cliffy Lyons. We'll play it away to Campisi, the first try scorer for the Barbarians. Works his way through some traffic. Ball to Menzies, who puts it down. And now the Brisbane side pick it up back inside. Chance out wide. There's a try there for Prince. He's calling for it, but the touchy has got his flag up. Maroon, thoughts? Is it a try? Oh, I think he might have gone out. I'm a little bit, my view's just a little bit obstructed there, but we'll have a look at that on the replay. I've got a feeling he might have just been a tad out there, Jono. So Brisbane take it forward, so no try. Interesting there, that Brisbane went out, no try, and they've got to play. Play the ball only five metres out from the Barbarians line. Well, let's see what Prince can do. Out wide it goes to Minto, he's got a load of space, in and away and over the line. And Brisbane's next try is there. They're really starting to put it together now, Louis. 13 points to six with a kick to come. Yep, again, it was a really nice ball movement there from the Broncos. Just to get the ball out where it needed to get to. They find Scott Minto with a little bit of room. Really nice footwork, beautiful left foot step. Scores for the Broncos, and they're up 13-6 with a kick to come, and there's only two, two minutes and 50 seconds to go. There's the brief replay of him scoring the try. I reckon if when he got the football, I reckon if he got any more space in front of him, the government would have given him the first homeowner's grant. <laughs> So back to the middle we come. So 13 points to six, and there is the conversion. Oh, and a beautiful little dance too there from Benny Hannett. <laughs> so they can kick it from the sideline, but they miss in, in front, front. Louie. Work that out. That's crazy, isn't it? That'll be the stresses that you've got to deal with as coach. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> as Prince gets us back underway. And the Barbarians and now the Lions. Gives it along the back line to Campisi. So Lyons and Campisi combining beautifully here. He's got a bit of space, the former Raider. And he'll play it about eight short as Carney goes from dummy half. Oh, big lifting tackle there from Brisbane. And now they play it a couple of metres short. Carney with a no-look flick pass. Campisi out to Roberts. Roberts now will play it over the halfway line. And a quick play, the ball needed. It's Campisi. Now to Carney with a little chip chase. Got bumped there by uh, Hannon as it pushes through and Brisbane come through. The penalty will go the way of the Barbarians. The referee spotted the bump, Maroon. And now uh, the Barbarians, they need some flair and they need some points, Maroon, to get this back in this contest. Yeah, well, they need a couple of tries under the post here. Carney showed a lot of skill out there today. And what about Cliffy Lyons, boys? He admits to being 58 years old and he's out there throwing some beautiful passes. He was playing for Narrowena a couple of weeks ago. Unbelievable. As Cliffy now goes from dummy half of... Normally Menzies from Lyons is a uh, dynamic duo, but not on that occasion, Louis. Yeah, just a little bit of a communication problem there. Probably wasn't the best pass, but Beaver drops it. Now he's under the... Oh! Almost the intercept. Prince is away again. Gives the ball back into Friend. Now it comes back to Eastwood. The uh, penalty will be called. So in the final minute here at McDonald Jones Stadium in this opening game between Brisbane and the Barbarians. Of course, the next game on the contest, Parramatta and Penrith. You come out of the commentary box and into the coaching box, Louis. Yep, yeah, good. I can't wait to get down there and see the boys and see what it's like down from the sideline and then straight back up here. Can't wait for it. Battle of the Westerners coming up next. Oh, that's a beautiful ball from Carney. Inside he goes. 
and he goes for the bonus try. Well, Maroon, that was a superb piece of rugby league from the Barbarians. I said they needed to get back into it, and they did in spectacular fashion. Yeah, he's gone for the quick conversion too. He's kicked it. So we've got a game on our hands if they can get the ball back because this last play, if they get a last play. But Todd Carney, mate, every time he's got his hands on the ball, he's lost nothing in terms of skill. So 15 to 13 in favour of Brisbane. As Carroll gets the ball and goes to ground. And they try and play on, but that will be full time. So Brisbane take this contest out in narrow fashion. 15 points to 13. They lost the last time these two sides got together, but they've reversed the curse, and Brisbane win the opening game. Pretty good way to start the tournament, Louis. Yeah, really good game, and the boys will be happy about that game. They'll, they'll come off and they'll re-evaluate, understand where they went wrong. And, uh, yeah, look, I, I'm pretty sure that these boys want to get back out in the field quick, smart. Maroon, your sideline, and you've got Terry Campisi next to you. Absolutely, mate. He's, um, well, he's a legend. He's, he's still running around in the uh, play for Queen Bean. Is that right, Terry? Yeah, this is the camera competition for the Queen Bean Blues. Couple of shows there. Loving it. Plays a great, a great day out. Raised a lot of money for the charity. Straight. Well, it is a great cause, isn't it? Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry about that, guys. It helps if you turn the microphone on. I'll start again. Take two. Uh, Terry, congratulations on a game that you didn't get the win there, but you've been still running around with Queen Bean. Yeah, just in a camera competition, the Queen Bean Blues, captain coach, love and footy. I uh, love days like this. You get out and support a local charity, which is great, and uh, all the fans come out and enjoy today too. It is a uh, great charity too, isn't it? The Mark Hughes Foundation. 100%, mate. So, with so many people uh, battle this uh, sickening disease each and every year, and it's just great to give our little contribution. It's amazing, blokes like you and Todd Carney, to see you run around out there. You might not have the petrol in the tank, but you've certainly still got the skill. Yeah, definitely no petrol in this tank. Yeah, it's good to meet up with old teammates. Big Tilsi so got the late call up yesterday, so yeah, it's good to see um, you know, guys that you've played you know, 10 years of your career with. And where do the Barbarians go from here? Oh, we have to win the next next game against the, the mighty hot Bulldogs. Yeah, they've been in training since last year. They've won you know, both Legends of the League, so they're a tough opponent. Mate, the coach is going to give it to you, blokes. Thanks, Tez. Too easy. Thanks for having us. Great day here at the Legends of the League. Let's go back to the commentary box. Jono. Well done to uh, Brisbane. And thank you to all those patrons who have already donated to the Mark Hughes Foundation. Thank you, Maroon. And, and we will cross to you. Thank you, Maroon. And we will cross to you at different points of the day as Terry Campisi celebrates after getting the, a try there in that earlier contest against the Brisbane side. So Brisbane pick up the win in the opening game. What a great start for the Legends of League. Louis is making his way down to the coaching box because the next game is Parramatta and Penrith. Brett Kamali will come up into the commentary box and he will join me for all the action of that one. We'll take a break. Stay with us. You're watching all the action of the 2019 Legends of League tournament here live from Newcastle. And welcome back to McDonald Jones Stadium here in Newcastle for the 2019 edition of the Legends of League tournament. The first game has been run and won, and it was between Brisbane and the Barbarians, and it was a narrow win, 15 to 13, to the Brisbane side. Of course, the next game here, as you can see on screen, Parramatta and Penrith, the Battle of the Westerners, a man that played 307 games. He played for a few clubs, but didn't play for either side, is Brett Kamali. He joins me in the broadcast box. Afternoon, Noddy. How do you see the day so far? Oh, very good, obviously, watching game one. Uh, defence looks like it's more important this year. Obviously, there's, <laughs> there's a lot more structure to that first game we just saw from Brisbane versus the Barbarians, and a bit of shape in attack, um, a general more hit-ups, less razzle-dazzle, throw the ball over your head. There's the no care factor seems to have gone. So normal structure and attack, they look like completion rate's important. And defense from both those sides was very, very good. So I think they'll warm into this occasion. Obviously, the, the crowd is starting to build up here. It's a, it a bit of a buzz now that we've got one game underway. Parramatta versus Penrith next. And obviously, yep. they sit in pool B, which is obviously Newcastle. When Newcastle get the run on soon, oh, well, obviously, yeah. we know how fanatical this fan base can be for them. I think home ground advantage will be huge, but uh, Parramatta, what can Parramatta do? Nathan Highmarsh hasn't won a premiership. I won't say he's been one of the best for Parramatta over the last two seasons of Legends of League, but I think Heidi needs to improve a little bit today. Does he owe you money or something? No, it's a bit of fun. A bit of fun. That's what this is, a little bit of fun, but yeah. Now, obviously, some great plays in both these sides. Um, you know, Craig Gower back there for Penrith, uh, where it all began. Joe Nullivar, Frankie Pritchard, some, some players from the Premiership side. Luke Lewis, as you said, has gone down to coach him. Yep. Dummy half, Clive Churchill medalist from Penrith's win. Luke Lewis, uh, Luke, Luke Prittis is also down there helping out. And there you go. Well, you're a fellow Clive Churchill medalist 20 years ago. Does it feel 20 years? 
Am I, I haven't got that much older, have I? <laughs> I haven't got, I haven't aged oh, a bit. Oh, you're telling the story. <laughs> uh, we, can, we can see the players in the tunnel. Think about, I just think about what Greg Gower, if you just, I think you just saw Ben Hannett talk about being serious today because he said that we, Brisbane have only won one game over the, the last two tournaments of Legends of League. Yep. They're serious now. Everyone's to come today. Serious. Pride. Need to win. Absolutely. I mean, they lost to Parramatta last year, 17-14. They went down to Canterbury, 28-10. Uh, so they were their losses last year. So, yeah, they're absolutely looking for a, a victory here. As you can see, plenty of fans just enjoying the sunshine here in Newcastle for this Legends of League tournament. John O'Far, Brett Kamali and Anthony Maroon. He's sidelined. He's pumped up, ready for the second clash. How do you see this one between the Battle of the Westerners, Parramatta and Penrith, Maroon? Yeah, it's the good old local derby, isn't it? Only it's about 170 k's from home. But we talked earlier, John, about the players we don't see anymore. Blokes like Joe Nullivau, who will... He still looks fantastic, Big Joe. Played for five clubs. Got a premiership right at the start of his career and one right, one right at the back end, too, with uh, Manly. So looking forward to seeing him run out today for Penrith. And Joel ready for Parramatta, who's been playing for... The mighty Dapto Canaries. It's going to be a good game this afternoon. <laughs> oh, Maroon's ready to go. And there they are. Nathan Hindmarsh and Craig Gower leading their respective sides out. So there'll be no love lost between these two teams. Great rivals, of course, the Panthers coming in in 1967. The Eels 20 years earlier in 1947. Penrith, their first game, it was against Canterbury at Belmore Sports Ground in 1967. And for Parramatta, they played Newtown way back in 1947. So plenty of history with these two clubs. As the Penrith side warm up. There's Matty Ryan in the 17, just uh, stretching the calves. Noddy, who wins this and by how much? Well, I think Penrith will win it. I, I, I'm just looking at Frank Pritchard. He looks like he can still play now, has been playing. I'm not running anywhere near him. If I was playing rugby league today, I'm seeing Frank Pritchard in front of me and I'm passing the ball or I'm going the other side of the field. <laughs> he looks in superb condition. I'm going to keep an eye on Luke Lewis, obviously coaching there for this game. So he's just jumping out of the commentary box, gone down there. I'll keep an eye on well, how he coaches. I want to see the emotion of Louis on the sideline. Well, we're underway here in this clash and Rodney takes it up. Of course, played with uh, Penrith and Manly and coaches St Mary's in the lower grades. So now they take it forward, the Panthers, and play it about five short of the halfway line. So a great little battle of the Westerners contest here. And now the Panthers will take it forward through carriage. And he will play it a couple of metres into opposition territory. Now it comes to Gower. Back through the middle, they take it. And away now go the uh, Penrith side. Play it a couple of metres into opposition territory now from dummy half. They put the nice little kick through. Chance for Butner, And he'll just watch that go into touch. So nice little uh, warming up of, for Penrith there. Noddy to get that first set of six underway. Yeah, I, I think you've got to play it like genuine rugby league. Obviously go forward, create some momentum, get the defensive line going backwards. I think the players obviously, it's a little bit hot at the moment. I don't know how much preparation they've done in the way of fitness. So they're probably a little bit keen not to do a lot of tackling today because obviously that's the harder part of the game go forward get some momentum create an offload Luke Burt sneaking up the short side oh. oh nice little juggling act here for the Panthers they take it forward and they play it into an attacking zone at the moment great little opportunity for them to score the first points as Kevin Kingston gives the ball away now it comes to Gower short ball and a good one there to Lattimore and he'll play it a couple of metres short of the halfway line, of the uh, try line, I should say. Now they go from acting half, the Panthers. Nice little kick into the in goal area, beautifully picked up by the back there by the Eels. And Mark Tukey, he cleaned it up. Nice little slips catch there, Maroon, as Michael Butner moves forward for Parramatta. Yeah, well, you mentioned Mark Tukey there, mate. The last couple of years he's been running for election on the council in Logan City. Maybe his slogan was, Vote for me, or I'll bash ya. And he's still a big unit, isn't he? Big Mark Tukey. Good to see him again. That'd make me vote for him as Reddy takes it forward. Now Burt to Hindmarsh. He charges forward. Good little effort there from the, the Panthers, number 10 in Lattimore defensively. Along the back line it goes for Parramatta. 
And they punch it downfield. And now Penrith will have a chance here. So they will bring it off their try line area. And they try and just bring it through the middle now to almost the quarter line. As now the ball comes loose. And now the Eels. Away now to Tuki. Takes it forward. Parramatta playing it nicely inside that quarter line. Comes back. Parramatta take it forward through Witters. He'll play it about five short of the line. Is their first points on the board here for Parramatta? The blue and gold's on the charge. Butner looking determined. Charging forward. Plays it a couple of metres short of the try line. Now Luke Burt from dummy half. Away to Hindmarsh. The show and go from Hindmarsh was beautiful. And he'll play it a couple of metres short of the try line. Now Burt looking for options. Goes towards the eastern side. Kick in the in goal area. Timmy Van has dived on it. And the Eels. They have scored the first try. Noddy, a good start from Parramatta. Yeah, a very good start from Parramatta. Nice sort of kick it was from Robson. A little halfback going down the short side. Grubbers the ball behind the defensive line. There it is there. Nice little grubber. Obviously, probably not going to play a fullback in the nines. Nine aside at the moment. You're on the try line. You've got to all defend. First try scorer for Parramatta. Timmy Manor. Wouldn't have probably thought that, would you? No, I haven't seen him move that quick as the kick is unsuccessful from Burt. So it's four points to nil in favour of Parramatta. He was playing for, was it Wentworth, Phil? Wentworth, Phil, yes, that's right. He had some good success in the Canterbury Cup. He finished off playing the season. So now Parramatta come back to the middle. So now the old toe poker from Burt. Goes down towards Rodney, who does exceptionally well with limited space on the eastern side. And he'll play it just inside the uh, quarter line, just short of the half. And now Penrith with some pretty flashy footwork there. Nice work from Paul Fatawira. Played in the Tigers' side of 05 that won the comp as Gower. Flick ball back inside is a good one. He gives it to Joe Nullivau. As Maroon mentioned, he won some comps with Manly and Penrith. Now it comes back through Lattimore. And now they take it forward, the Panthers, over the halfway line. Chance here for points. Gower from acting half. Nice little kick from the 5'8". And now it goes down into the in-goal area. And Bird will watch it go dead. So back to the quarter line for the tap go, Noddy. And... Uh, Penrith, they're just finding their way, but not really putting any pressure on the defence at the moment. No, no, not real attacking pressure, but that's a couple of kicks that have gone sort of dead in goal for them as well. So I said it's important that we see an intercept taken by Pritchard. They'll get the ball back in great position. Penrith, there's a chance they could go down the short side here. Fatawira could get the ball and will get the ball, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, there we go. So he takes it forward. Fatawira now will play it inside the attacking quarter. Chance on the eastern side. Rodney from acting half. They go along the back line. Gower, short ball and a beautiful one there. Away to Swain. He'll play it inside the attacking zone right in front of the sticks, the Panthers. Away it goes to Gower. Nice ball. Chance here for points for Penrith. Couple of metres short of the try line over on the eastern side. Goes away to Pritchard. On to Gower. A juggling act there from Clinton. And he is tackled on the last and that'll be a handover so Parramatta to get the ball Maroon your sideline what do the Panthers need to do apart from score points here well I think it's still early days mate two and a half minutes till half time one little weapon they do have here we talked earlier about blokes still running around in local comps be it the Dapto Canaries or the Coromel Cougars in the case of Luke Walsh he's been playing for the Rosellas up here in West and you can still see the pace he plays at and the skill level he has he's only knocked off a couple of weeks ago and he's going well today so as Timmy Manor plays it from the halfway line, you certainly keep up with all those leagues, don't you, Maroon? The Coromel Cougars. I've got a lot of time on my hands, Jono, <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> How'd they go this year? I don't think they went too well. Noddy Kamali could probably tell you more about that. I think maybe Wests might have won the local comp down there, or was it Collies? No, I think Collies got them. Uh, West, they did play West in the Illawarra competition. Very good competition. It's like West Newcastle up here. You know, I was, I was at a lunch yesterday that Peter Volandis was at, and he was talking about country rugby league is a big, big area of improvement for, for the commission, which is going to be great to see because those areas, we'll see McButner, oh. chance to go to the bonus point. Oh, can he take it round? It doesn't risk it. 
Well, John Williams decided to stop any progression points there, but a good try there from uh, Michael Butin and Noddy. And geez, I'm, I've been really impressed with Peter Volandis and the work that he's done with the NRL Commission so far. Yeah, that's right. And it was, a, you know, it was a, a, a nice lunch about obviously talking a fair bit about racing as well. But obviously, it was good to see that Country Rugby League is high on the agenda because we've got so many kids not not playing the game anymore. The grassroots aren't there. We talk about Newcastle. I grew up here in Newcastle. And the local competition was thriving. Well, you go back to the old days of Rugby League Week. There were several pages of yeah. the country in yeah. all the different groups. So that was interesting to hear where they want to go. And obviously TV rights and value in getting more money for the game and developing is high on the agenda. As we see, a little knock on maybe. Yep. Unfortunately. Oh, oh no. It hasn't, been, oh. Uh, hasn't been played there, Noddy. So... Uh, Danny Galea just obviously bounced off his knees as they take it forward. Now Lattimore just pushes his way through. Gives the ball across. Now a chance for the Panthers. And they try and work it towards that halfway line. So looking for points in this contest. Eight points to nil in favour of the Eels in this battle of the Western clubs. As they go to the halfway line. And now Penrith take it forward. Good take there from Lattimore on that second receive. He goes inside the opposition half. Chance here now for points. They spread it from acting half through Kingston. Puts the kick away. Now the Eels have got it through Hindmarsh. Away to Butner. Butner on the siren. Puts the kick through. Gower looks as though he'll clean it up. He will. He'll go to ground. So that does us for the first half of this Penrith Parramatta clash. And what a contest it's been. Eight points to nil is your scoreline between... Penrith and Parramatta. Parramatta leading by the two tries. Michael Butner, that was a solid effort from him, Noddy, a couple of moments ago. Yeah, Michael Butner is obviously still running around, playing a bit of tag. Looks super fit at the moment. Got some pace. Parramatta just looked like they got a little bit more pace than what the Penrith side have got. And speaking of Michael Butner, he is sidelined now with Maroon. Just when you thought you'd scored your last ever try for Parramatta, what about that one? Mate, I've got plenty left. Plenty left. Hope we get through uh, a few more games. I must say, mate, of all the players we spoke to, some, you know, you, you're doing less sweating, less panning and puffing. You've obviously trained well for, uh, trained hard for this afternoon. Oh, of course, mate. You want to go out here and put on a show for the fans. They're here to see what we're all about. So, uh, how are you doing our best? Great to see Mark Turkey and uh, Nathan Highmarsh and Dean Witters. I'll tell you what, you've got a couple of bookends there. Yeah, they're sweating a bit harder than most other blokes, but uh, it's okay, mate. It's good fun. No flies on here. Michael Butner and the Parramatta Eels lead 8-0 in this game. Back to you, John O'Farr. Thank you, Anthony Maroon. A great contest so far between these two Western Sydney clubs. The bookends. My goodness, that takes me back. Terry Leadbeater and Jeff Bugden for Parramatta back in the 80s. You're showing your age, Maroon, but I love it. Anyway, we'll take a break here on the Legends of League coverage on the other side of this. All the action of the second half between Penrith and Parramatta. And welcome back to McDonald Jones Stadium for all the action of the 2019 Legends of League tournament. I hope you're enjoying the action, whether you're watching on the Legends of League website, the Facebook site, or of course KO Sports. Great to have your company, whichever device or platform you're watching on as Gower gets us back underway. And terrific catch there from the Parramatta Eels to play it just inside the quarter. John O'Farr, Brett Kamali and Anthony Maroon, your commentators for this clash. The second here on the Legends of League tournament. Brisbane, if you missed it, they were just too good for the Barbarians, 15 to 13. All comes back for the Eels, and now they try and work it through the middle, a couple of metres short of the halfway line. Chance now for points here to build on their eight points to nil lead as Manor takes it forward. Pretty good start here, Noddy, so far for Parramatta. Yeah, they've had a good start. They've got lots of structure out here for Parramatta, but I think just they've got that bit more pace as well as we see a little play little grubber through the middle. 
picked up by Penrith. Uh, Penrith put a couple of kicks dead in the first half, which probably relieves a bit of pressure and makes you do a bit more tackling. So certainly we talk about how hot some of the players are compared to the others. And again, high completion rate. Craig Gower sneaking down the short side. Oh, good ball from uh, Gower to Lattimore. And Lattimore takes it a couple of metres short of the half. Now the Penrith side, they take it forward nicely through the 17 there. And Swain, and they'll play it in opposition territory. Good little kick through for the Penrith side and Parramatta take it at the back. What's the vibe sideline with the players, Maroon? They are chatting about the old days, working out tactics. It depends, John. If they've been out there, they're normally pretty gassed by the time they get to the sideline. I tell you what, they're puffing and panting, but yeah, they're, it's a real carnival atmosphere down here. We've got lots and lots of kids about the place. People are still streaming into the ground. It's a beautiful 23 degrees and a nice breeze blowing. So if you're in the Hunter area, it's not too late. Still plenty of football. Great crowd already, all things considered, but lots and lots of things for the kids to do here as well. Jumping castles. This event is really going to grow over the next couple of years. As Tukey now gets a ball from Butner, gives the ball back into Moran. Moran gives the ball wide to Reddy. Reddy now goes forward. Oh, oh beautiful pass. Magnificent rugby league from Parramatta. And they finish it beautifully through Jeff Robson. Noddy, thoughts on the try? You loved every bit of it. Oh, the try of the tournament so far. That'll put Parramatta as the entertainers. Mark Tukey started the play off. The ball playing. Front row, as we see here, that's the offload down to Reddy. Nice little switch and turn, and Robson was good enough to keep himself active and run around. Yeah, you know, run around play. We talk about talk about the bookends from the 80s. Now we're talking <laughs> about the run around play. We've got the flick pass over the shoulder. Robson has a shot at the conversion. It's unsuccessful. Parramatta now leading 12 points to nil. Message should go out. High completion rate. Close the game down. So 12 points to nil in favour of Parramatta over Penrith. So they come back to the middle. Crowd building here. You can see various different jumpers. Maroon, you love your old school retro rugby league jumpers. What's the uh, what's the best one you've seen today? Well, I like this one the Parramatta Reels are wearing right now. It's very similar to the one that they won the uh, 86 grand final in. And uh, Dean Witters is modelling it absolutely sensational in there and jumping number 14. Coaching the Rabbitohs women's side at the moment, Big Dino, and it looks like he might have been spending a few hours in the George Hotel at Waterloo. But he's running himself into a bit of condition, boys, which is good to see. Well, he was sensational in that last try to Robson as now Burt brings it from Hindmarsh back into Hindy. He tries to get the ball away and get away from the Penrith defence. So he plays it inside the attacking quarter. Now Parramatta charge forward. Ball into open space, picked up by Burt. Rodney was wide there to pick him to put him to ground. And they'll play it inside the attacking 10. Back through the middle. Nice work for the Parramatta side. Paul Carriage plays it a couple of metres short of the line. Burt with a long swinging pass to Robson. Wide, Witters. Beautiful ball to Butner through a hole. And they play it a couple of metres short. That is the last tackle for Parramatta. Kick they, it left, Jono. They Can want they to shift it or kick it left? Well, that's what they've done. They've gone kick left and Gowers juggled it. Picked up by Carriage. It's play on. And that'll be a try. So Paul Carriage, he scores the try for Parramatta. And the points continue for the Eels, Noddy. Yeah, there was a lot of space out of that left edge. They had to get the ball there with either a kick or a pass. They come up with a kick option. Unfortunately, Craig Gower had the ball, but we won't say it was tackled in the air, but it come loose in some regards. Paul Carriage has scored, and now the conversion has been nailed. 18 points to nil in favour of Parramatta. We heard Michael Butner say at halftime, he's, he's all serious. He wants to play some more games. Here to be competitive, put a show on. As he, as he said, the... It was a good fan base turning up and watching sitting in the shade on this side at the moment. Well, biggest blowout of the tournament since Canterbury played Parramatta in game four last year where Canterbury were too good for the Eels, 21-0. Can you talk to Luke Lewis when he comes back up in the commentary box? Yeah, he'll be, he'll be steaming. We might need some extra room up here. Anyway, it's his first go. He'll be better for the run next time, I reckon. As Penrith take it forward. Oh, that's a good run now. 
Beautiful ball out wide. Some classy stuff here from Penrith as they take it over the halfway line and into the attacking quarter. They've got about three minutes to score some points here and try and get a miracle going. It's the Panthers. The show and go continues. Lattimore takes it forward. He plays it on the last inside the attacking quarter. Ball comes back. Nicely worked. Chance here for, for Penrith. They move it beautifully through Nullivau. They played over on that far side and there'll be the handover. They ran it on the last. So Luke Lewis, he won't be too happy with this start. But look, it's early days of the tournament as Hindmarsh works his way through. Moran from dummy half now. Comes back for Parramatta. Now they put some nice show and go on. It'll be played by Michael Witt. He's a couple of metres short of the half. Moran now has Witt as, as a possible first receiver. Goes that way. The Eels throw it on the eastern side. Oh. And Butin has spilled his lollies, Maroon. Yeah, it's a rare mistake from uh, Michael Butner. He's probably been my man of the match so far in this game. But as you say, mate, it's a record win here. Parramatta 18, Penrith nil. Boys, how good is it to see Paul Carriage out there for Parramatta in the jump at number three? We probably, he probably hasn't surfaced in rugby league since that awful afternoon. Those of us are old enough to remember what happened in the semi in 1998. He's out there. He's aged a little bit. He looks like Wayne Bennett's older brother. But I tell you what, he's already scored a try. Well, I reckon he would have aged a few weeks or months after that game in 98 against the Bulldogs as Gower now oh this is beautiful stuff from Penrith look at them gallop through the middle and that's a beautiful try the Panthers through Paul Fatawira they get a try in spectacular fashion and get themselves on the board here and it's a bonus one as well Noddy yeah and the conversion's gone very quick and been successful from the try score of Paul Fatawira I'd have to say he would probably be the fastest player that Penrith have in their side, Fatawira, and we just saw his pace on that occasion just explode and go through the middle. No one from Parramatta was able to catch him. Unfortunately, Gow is going for the short kickoff and saved. Well done by Reddy. Now Parramatta shifting to the far side. Chance out wide through Butner. On to, oh, Dean Witters, beautiful hands from him. Not only staying in the field of play on the eastern side, but catching that ball from Michael Butner. As he gives it away to Moran. And he tries to just get himself forward and plays it inside the attacking zone, just short of that quarter line. Manor from dummy half. Now to Butner. He's got some toe about him. Nice little kick through. Oh, beautiful show and go for the Eels. And that is a great try. Maroon sideline. Your thoughts on that effort from Parramatta? Yeah, true spirit there from the Eels. They struck straight back. I mean, the game was won anyway. There's only 23 seconds to go. But we have seen some tremendous skill from these blokes today. As you mentioned, Witters, obviously, uh, 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 the great Michael Butner as well. And great to see Tim Manor. We thought his career was over with the Weddy Magpies. They nearly won the Premiership in Canterbury Cup, but they didn't get there in the end. But for Parramatta, a wonderful result here. What have they won it now? 24-7. to 7. Yeah, so the conversion is successful. So there is the siren in the background. So the second clash comes to an end here at the Legends of League for 2019. And it's Parramatta too good for Penrith. 24 points to 7. That's off the back of Brisbane just beating the Barbarians in the opening game. The third game on the contest. It should be a really great battle uh, at the Legends of League. And that will be between Canterbury and the Barbarians. So that is a final replay of last year. 27 to 14 in which Canterbury... Uh, picked up the win. Noddy, uh, Canterbury, they've won the last two Legends of League. They've got their first game uh, next up against the Barbarians, a replay of last year's grand final. How do you think they'll go? Yeah, and obviously the Barbarians who have lost the first game to Brisbane, 15 points to 13. They'll be keen to get a victory, the Barbarians, and, and, and to get onto the, the winning note. I think Canterbury are the side to beat again. They've got pace. They've got the forwards that are skillful. They're defensively great. You see big Willie Mason loves his place. This is where he... You're talking about Maroon, talking about locals. Toronto Scorpion, Willie Mason was his home club, grew up in this area. <laughs> back home now. He loves it. And welcome back to McDonald Jones Stadium. Well, this is going to be one of the great treats as Cliffy Lyons walks out onto the field. It's Canterbury and the Barbarians. A replay of last year's grand final was 27-14. to 14. The Bulldogs picking up their second Legends of League title. 
Uh, this should be a really good contest and a, a good test for the Bulldogs to see if they can continue their winning ways. They're the only undefeated side in the Legends of League tournament. Luke Lewis joins me back in the broadcast box. Uh, how did you find coaching? Not the best start to your career. Yeah, no, it was a tough gig down there on the sideline to get any control. But, uh, yeah, look, it was good to be down there with the boys. They were just having a bit of fun. They couldn't complete their sets. And, you know, they were just dropping, a, dropping the ball. But Parramatta, they were outstanding. They were, yeah. com- they were you know, flick pass and offload. Some beautiful. They come up with a pearl of a try there. Uh, Jeff Robson scores in that corner. It was excellent to watch, but, uh, you know, full credit to Paramount. Unbelievable. But just watching this Canterbury side walk out, I was looking at big Willie Mason, Marco Mealy, Andrew Ryan. They are massive. I yeah. can't believe how big they are. And they're looking super fit, so they're going to be hard to beat again here in Sabo. Well, this Canterbury team, as we get underway in this clash, they have barbecues, they have team meetings, they do everything. They are fired up and ready to go. As Cliffy Lyons will take it from the in-goal area. Gives the ball away, and oh, Marco Mealy, the steal! Oh, thank you very much. What a start for the Bulldogs. The game's as old as a puppy, and already the dogs are over, Louis. Geez, Marco Mealy just flies down there, straight up the middle, comes up with a beautiful one-on-one steal, and I think it was tilts, and he had an opportunity to score in the uh, the bonus area, but he puts it on the outside just to keep him in the game. But Wow, Marco Mealy, what a start. There's only 10 seconds into the game and he's already over. Oh, what a start for the Bulldogs. Brett Kamali, sideline. Uh, what did you make of the start for Canterbury Bankstown? Well, gentlemen, I just missed the start, unfortunately. I'm just trying to get their headphones on, talk to my barbarian team, just give them some instructions, and we're 6 0 down. <laughs> I'd stop talking to them, Noddy. <laughs> <laughs> As the ball goes into touch from the restart. So, this is the first clash for Canterbury. Uh, they are looking to make it three in a row in the Legends of League tournament as O'Mealy, the first try scorer, takes it forward, plays it inside the attacking zone. So now Canterbury look for some options, wearing a similar strip to their 1935 strip. The shifty Sherwin gives the ball away, and now Canterbury take it forward. They play it nicely through John O'Wright, and he'll play it a couple of metres short of the try line. Along the back line to shifty Sherwin. Oh, good ball there to Matua. Away to Sherwin. Now back it comes, O'Mealy. Out to Utah. He looks dangerous when he's got the ball close to the line. And that is why Matty Utai scores a try for Canterbury. And it's a bonus one as well. The Bulldogs, Louis, they're humming. Oh, they're humming. They've had two kickoffs, two repeat sets. Beautiful ball movement. Brett Sherwin keeps the ball alive. And big Mark O'Mealy again has his hand in this try. He knows he has to get the ball to Matty Utai. And he was one of the best in his prime. He was that hard to tackle. And he doesn't look any different. He looks fit. He looks strong. He looks fast. And he gets to try in the bonus zone for the doggies. Back to back. It's an unbelievable start for the dogs. So, Noddy, they're well on their way for this uh, three-peat here, Canterbury. Yeah, that's right. They turned up, obviously, uh, as the favourites, I think, for the tournament. They've done plenty of training in the off-season. Recruited some new players. Shifty Sherwin, mate. Well, tell us what's happening. Tell us. Tell, we we want to know how much preparation have the dogs done. Uh, there's uh, three or four of Waffies in there, and that's about it. Mark O'Mealy. Is he the halfback or you are? At the moment, he is. Oh, <laughs> that's why you're leading 13-0. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so back to live action. There's Carney. Gives the ball away, and now the Barbarians under enormous pressure. 13-0 so far. Two tries to, to Canterbury. They've got them starting beautifully. As Carney now to Hyington. Hyington works his way through some traffic. They set up a good try last year with Matty Bowen, Hyington, and Carney. As now Carney goes inside attacking zone with a little chip kick down towards the general, Luke Patton. And now Canterbury, they bring it off the quarter line. They play it about 15 short of the half. So now the Bulldogs just work their way through some tough defence as Hyington and Menzies put the man to ground. Now along the back line they go. Now to big Willie Mason. Willie Mason looking dangerous when he gets the football. The flick pass away. Now the Dogs throw it away to the eastern side. And Jamie Feeney now in the headgear will bring it back. And the lost ball. So... Louis, a a little bit disjointed there in the set of six for Canterbury, but this is where, really, the Barbarians have got a strike. Yeah, absolutely. They can't give the Bulldogs too many opportunities. uh, They're looking good out there. They come up with one little arrow, but they're looking sharp at the start of that set. Got to give uh, mention to Willie Tonga's looking super fit out there. His footwork looks spot on as well, but the Barbarians, they need to complete a set here or try and get some points on the board, otherwise this game could blow away from them. So along to Carney. 
And now the flick pass back in to Hyington. Back to Carney. Oh, that's, uh, that's probably the first Falcon of the tournament. And the Barbarians play on. Now if they've got a bit of space. Nice little flick pass back inside. The Barbarians just try and play it away from that uh, Western touchline. Now they take it forward. And that's Scott Hill, former Storm player, taking it forward. Along the back line, Hyington with good hands. Bit of a messy play the ball area there. Crocker goes to ground, tries to regather the football, but Canterbury will play it uh, a couple of metres out from the try line. Noddy, what's the atmosphere like there down sideline? Yeah, obviously a little bit of nervousness here for the Barbarians. The fans will need to lift. They've got six to go here, so we'll see if they're able to come up with a try. Nathan Blacklock's come up with the ball. So Tinger now will play the ball inside the attacking zone. He's now... They have a chance here, the Barbarians, through Hill. Goes back to Black Line, Blacklock, onto Crocker now. And uh, Rennie Matua has picked up the ball. So now uh, it'll come back to the Barbarians. Now to Hill. Oh, it looks like he... Geez, I reckon Louis twinged there a little. I reckon he might have done a little injury there. Thoughts? Yeah, I was just watching him get up. And he's... Uh, no, he looks fine at the moment. I think he's just a little bit of uh, fatigue kicking in. I've got to give the Bulldogs a massive wrap. Their goal line defence is just perfect. It doesn't look like they've been playing or well, they've been training five days a week the way that they're going at the moment. Yeah, a lot of fans I saw on the Facebook posts as Hill takes it forward, loses possession. And now Canterbury just gallop away. Well, this is superb rugby league for them. Really darting away. And Willie Tonga is tackled a couple of metres short of the try line. A beautiful defensive effort from the Barbarians. Noddy, he's been looking in your playbook defensively. Oh, it was a great tackle, that one. That's probably the tackle of the tournament so far. Canterbury unable to come up with a try. Barbarians now get a chance. Bryce Gibbs, I don't know if Bryce Gibbs will run 60 metres and score. <laughs> <laughs> well, this man, Matty Singh, can run that far as they take it forward. The Barbarians, and they'll play it just shy of the quarter line. So looking dangerous here at the moment, but need some points on the board. Along the back line they go. The Barbarians try and work it. Comes off the foot. Picked up beautifully here. And the Barbarians take it forward. Benny Cray, the former Dragon. He'll play it just shy of the halfway line. On to Hyington. Good work to Tills. Takes it forward into opposition territory. Now they come back through the middle. Good work from the Barbarians. That pass looked a little forward. And it is. So, Louis... Canterbury, they just can't do anything wrong in this game at the moment. No, well, they're just doing the simple things. They're moving the ball, and Barbarian's defence is a little bit off at the moment, whereas the Bulldogs' defence is just spot on, and you can tell what they've been training compared to a lot of the other sides here so far. But Daniel Fitzhenry, that chase early on, Willie Tonga was spot on. Along the back line they go. They look a little bunched up at the moment, the Bulldogs, but now they're starting to get things together as O'Mealy plays it forward. Bobcat Ryan will play it from dummy half. Looking to go towards the eastern side. Nice little shift of play. Oh, that's beautiful work from the pattern. And the general scores the try. And it's a bonus one as well. Beautiful little chip kick for Canterbury. Nice work from Daniel Holdsworth. And the finish from Luke Patton was brilliant. Take us through the replay, Luke Lewis. Yeah, well, this is just beautiful play by Daniel Holdsworth and the communication to find Luke Patton. That was a pearl over kick, gets a perfect bounce and gets a try on the bonus zone. But that doesn't just happen. That comes with a little bit of practice and getting together you know, every week, even just playing a little bit of touch footy and you know, getting that, com that camaraderie and that uh, combination. But, geez, that was a beautiful try to watch. So 20 points to nil here, the Bulldogs. Uh, Noddy Kamali sideline. The Bulldogs haven't lost a game, and they are flying at the moment. Yeah, they certainly are. They look like they're the team to beat. You're right about that little kick play from... Holdsworth to Luke Patton, certainly some great combination out. Just a couple of tries we've seen scored today off those little grubbers. If anyone's able to come up with a good kicking game, they're certainly going to get some points. So Brett Kamali sideline as now the Barbarians try and work out of some strong defence. And they'll play it inside the attacking zone. So they need to get some more real estate. Hyington away to Lions. Now along the back line they go. Smart little chip kick. Hyington now somehow gets the ball away back to Tills. He's in open space. Gives the ball beautifully. Roberts now tries to get the ball. Crocker dives on it. Canterbury dive on it too. And it goes to ground. 
And that is half time here in this contest between the Bulldogs and the Barbarians. 20 points to nil, your scoreline. And we will go down sideline with Brett Kamali. He is down there with Marco Mealy. 20 points to nil at half time. The Dogs have won back to back premierships. You're looking good. Oh, no, we're just getting our ribbon back together. Um, it's pretty easy when the nucleus of the squad has been together since 02. <laughs> was that the premiership time in 02 for the Dogs? Oh, it was when we built a team to win a comp, but you know what it's like. How much fun is it out there again? Obviously, you know, it looks like the defence is more important this year, a bit more serious, a bit more strike to it, but some big hits and a little bit of giggling. Oh, look, we're, oh, I won't lie, we're a little bit serious. We talk, <laughs> we communicate and uh, try and work together. Oh, we've got a, got a good bunch of uh, boys and we've stuck together and we, we always keep in communication. Uh, we're not like a team that just gets, you know, we're not like players that used to come in and out of teams. We've always been close. What about the little set play there from uh, Daniel Hollisworth? Nice sort of kick across the back to, to the general. Yeah, it was supposed to be for me, but I decided to <laughs> clock off. But no, nah, a bit of fun. It was good. Where were you? I spoke to Shifty before you leave. You one run and I'm off. Yeah, one run off or one tackle off. Easy. One run ogre. See you later, big guy. Well, you've noticed we've improved since we got moved you on to game one. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, no, nah, it's all fun out there. These boys will get a chance. I'll get some footy and we're going to defend it up. Good luck. Cheers. Thanks, Lord. So there he is, Brett Kamali, sideline with Marco Mealy. He scored the first try in this game between the Bulldogs and the Barbarians. 20 points to nil, your scoreline at halftime. We'll take a short break on the other side. All the action of the second half. Stay with us. You're watching all the live action of the Legends of League tournament for 2019. Thanks for joining us. Back in a moment. And welcome back to McDonald Jones Stadium. Good sized crowd getting into the place. Enjoy, enjoying all the action. If you're in the Hunter area, Newcastle area, come and join us. A couple of seats left. And the crowd here really enjoying the day, seeing the old boys run around. Luke Lewis in the coaching box. He joins me in the commentary box. Louis, how have you, how have you enjoyed the day so far? Oh, I've loved it. It's, it's great to be able to catch up with everyone that you've played against, played with, and, and absolutely idolised as a kid. So it's, it's been amazing. Some really good football. But to watch this Canterbury Bulldogs side run around and the way that their skill level is, is absolutely outstanding at the moment. So the Bulldogs take it forward. They lead 20 points to nil. Some great tries so far. And some combination tries from the Bulldogs. So they play it from dummy half. Nice work from Sherwin. Oh, beautiful kick. This is clever stuff for Canterbury. They can't quite get it to Rod Silver out wide. And now, look at the Barbarians galloping away. And that is terrific stuff from them. As uh, Heath Lestrange, who was playing for the Hills Bulls this year in Ron Massey Cup, gallops down the sideline away to Menzies. And now a great defensive effort there from Utai over the top. Scored a terrific try, Louis, in the first half, and he's brilliant in defence. Yeah, absolutely. He looks strong with the ball in hand. He's come up with a beautiful read there. The Bulldogs used to play back in the day and up and in defence, and they've got that as soon as they're under the pump. Matty Utai straight in, shuts it down. Beautiful defence there. Brett Kamali sideline. There's plenty of traffic uh, on that touchline. Uh, what's the what was what was the atmosphere like down there? Yeah, certainly plenty of atmosphere on the on the sideline. A lot of bit of a little bit of banter as well. There's a little bit of sledging going on. A bit of bit of a uh, bit of competition out here. I think they were saying the Barbarians might have had maybe a few too many players on to start this half, but maybe that's how they think they can get back legal. Okay, well let's see if they can score some points in this second half. They trail 20 points to nil. Of course, the Barbarians went down to the Brisbane Broncos 15-13 in the opening game as big Willie Mason takes on the line and goes over the halfway line. And now they'll try and play it. As, uh, Willie Tonga gives the ball along the back line to Sherwin. Now to Patton. Patton darts away. Tonga tried to get the football. Referee says play on. And now Tonga with the ball. Pushes his way through. Good ball away to Bobcat Ryan. 
Andrew Ryan will gallop away and score a bonus try. Oh, Louie, way too easy here for Canterbury at the moment. Yeah, well, it was a knockdown there by the, the Barbarians, and then Willie Tonga is trying to signal to the referee six to go. He gets that, and he picks it up, puts on some beautiful little bit of footwork, a nice little around the corner pass. He finds Bobcat Ryan, who's one of the fittest human beings I've met or had anything to do with. He's trained super hard, and it was a beautiful try there by the Bulldogs, and who knows where this scoreline could go because they don't look like stopping anytime soon. I reckon he's got some sort of cryogenic cell at home. He hasn't aged a bit. He hasn't, has he? Oh, he's it's a just... treat. You're looking a treat. When you're looking at the players and you're going, oh, yeah, that's that player. No, 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 you're work, working it all out. You pick him straight away. Oh, absolutely. He's a very good man. He's um, done a lot of good work with the, uh, the NRL, but it's about keeping all these retired players together, and he's uh, done a great job. So 25 points to nil in favour of Canterbury. Now the Barbarians bring it out of their in-goal area. You might notice that the goalposts are sort of on the dead ball line, which is a little unorthodox for rugby league, but that's how we do it here at the Legends. It's now Menzies takes the ball forward, gives the ball across field. Now to Lions, and now Hyington gives the ball away, and along the back line it comes away. And the Barbarians play it through Sullivan. He'll take it forward, a couple of metres short of the halfway line. Now they play it nicely. And the Barbarians through Bryce Gibbs, former Tiger. And now it comes away along the back line to Hyington. A bump and shove from Chris Hyington. He's got space left and right. He might not need it, Chris Hyington. Oh, the pass away to Menzies. And no, oh. Menzies denied. Oh, he was denied a bonus try, but he's got it. Oh, it's shades of 2008, Louis, when he scored in the big one. Geez, it was a good try there by the Barbarians. He got very lucky there, uh, Beaver Menzies. But what about the work from Chris Hynington? Little show and go. Has to keep his balance. And he knows he wants to try and get that bonus try. Throws the pass over the head. Oh, I don't know if he got that down. But uh, luckily for the Barbarians, they're on the scoreboard. He's only just got that in. Well. What about the chase? The Bulldogs, it's, it's 25 points to six. And they're still chasing, not giving up on the play. Big play. Well, it just shows you how good the quality is in this tournament. And it's really lifted in the last 12 months. These players really putting it all out on the field at the moment. The Bulldogs in control, but when you see class like that from the Barbarians, you realise it could be anyone's contest. As now Patton has the ball away for Canterbury. Nice work around their defensive line. Pass goes astray. Looking for something here. There's Grimaldi. Gives the ball away to Big Willie Mason. He goes straight forward. And now the Bulldogs charge forward through right. They will play it just short of the quarter. Luke Patton now pushing the ball away. Good ball away to Utai. Utai puts the kick through, held back. Ball's gone into touch. Louis, thoughts on it? Yeah, well, they've got the penalty there, the Bulldogs. Matty Utai, he sees an opportunity to kick it downfield to try and get another try. As Chris Hynington just comes up for play to hold him back. But here they are again on the attack, the dogs. And the referee. Is that good to watch? Oh, it's it's just spectacular rugby league so far. This this side, it's like they've been training every couple of days for the last 12 months. As they take it forward now. And Tongart loses the football. Tills comes up with the ball for the Barbarians. On to Singh. And that's a beautiful defensive effort from Canterbury out wide through right. Along the back line they go. And the Barbarians take it to almost the quarter. Brett Kamali, your sideline, um, your thoughts on the contest so far. Canterbury, they've been pretty to watch. Oh, they've been great to watch, yeah. The Barbarians obviously had to back up reasonably quick after playing the game one and now uh, now in the, in the game three. But Canterbury, good shape, good structure. And as you guys mentioned about, you know, they're all players are so athletic and well drilled. And as you said, Andrew Ryan's had them training for a number of weeks. They're going for the three in a row. Gosh, that hasn't happened ever in the NRL for a long, long time. Roosters go back to back, but the dogs are a chance to go three in a row. Yeah, the last side to do it was probably Parramatta, 81, two and three. So now it goes away to Tonga. Oh, Singh just upsets the party there by the intercept. And Louis, you're absolutely right. This Barbarian side, they trail on the scoreboard 25 to six, but they're playing like it's a lot closer. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, for me, the Barbarians, they've got their opportunities, but they just can't complete their sets. But the Bulldogs' defence has just been superb. And here they are. They're away. Crocker down the sideline. Oh, beautiful stuff from the former Melbourne Storm player as he goes down the Western touchline. Back inside the quarter looking for support. 
Good one-on-one -on -one tackle over the top there from Rocket Silva. Just as I say to the defence, they make a break. <laughs> Commentators or curse or uh, coaches curse. It should be on today's occasion. Wide to sing and he's dropped the lollies. So, unfortunately, the chance goes begging there for the Barbarians in Canterbury. They get the ball back. About a minute to go. As now they play it through Feeney. And he'll play it a couple of metres short of the halfway line. Along their back line they go, Utah, good ball away. And now Canterbury play it just short of the halfway line. Away to Asatasi, Asatasi tries to get the ball away, can't. Menzies will pick it up. And now Menzies gets past Ryan, flick pass back inside, juggling act, it's play on. And the Barbarians will get a late try and it will be a bonus one as well. So it won't matter in the scheme of this game but it could matter later on down the track. Yeah, that was a nice try there by the Barbarians. Daniel Fitzhenry again, he's had, a, he's had a pretty good game for the Barbarians. It was a nice pass there by Menzies. He was going out. He just, a hope, flick pass straight back inside. Fitzhenry doesn't give up on the play, gets the ball. Scores a beautiful try, but the Bulldogs are just chancing their arm a little bit, obviously knowing they're way out in front, but they keep trying to get through the line, do a round the corner pass, and just hasn't worked from the last few times. So 25 points to 13, the score. And the final moments of the game will be filled with a try. And it'll belong to Canterbury. Daniel Holdsworth gallops away. And a bonus try goes the way of Canterbury. So they finish it in spectacular fashion. They're the only undefeated team in the Legends of League tournament. And they've won here with that conversion. And it was taken by Chris Hyington for the Barbarians. Oh, I don't know what's going on there. He just wanted to kick. He said he's going to kick a couple <laughs> of goals today and doesn't know he's going to get his chance in the next one. So, good on him. As Holdsworth goes over to score and, oh, geez, he's only just got the paint there for the bonus point. So the players celebrate this game. Cliff Lyons there, the veteran for Manly for so many years. Played in many of their success was the uh, Clive Churchill medal in 1987. He picked up the victory when they uh, beat Canberra and Brett Kamali is sidelined with him now. The two games? Uh, as you can see, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we should have started this conversation before game one. I was on the coaching staff apparently for you blokes. I haven't done a very good job either then. So I think it's your fault because she was supposed to be our coach and we were too busy looking for you to see what the plan was and as you can see, didn't go according to that. Obviously, playing you played Brisbane and now playing Canterbury. They've won the last two. They, they come pretty, pretty drilled, don't they? Yeah, they're, they're a big side too. Aren't they? Willie Mason and that, Jesus, they're, and they're pretty quick. The boys outside there with Remy and that, so they're pretty quick. I think you know what the fans really missed out on. Disappointed that we don't get to see Steve Menzies running off cliff lines, a little short ball, a change of angle for another try. Yeah, we, we try to get it together, but it's just nine just just can't do it. I suppose it's not much. We need more room. But it's, it's a great day out and uh, it's great, grateful to be here. Thanks for coming, Cliffy. Well, maybe next year we'll get a victory. <laughs> maybe one, eh? Maybe one, yeah. Thanks, buddy. So there he is, Brett Kamali, with the legend that is Cliff Lyons. Of course, he had all that success with Manly in the 80s and the 90s premierships. Uh, and who could forget that uh, 1987 performance against Canberra at the Sydney Cricket Ground. So there's Canterbury. They have started their account in spectacular fashion with a victory over the Barbarians in spectacular fashion. The next game, it is the Penrith Panthers taking on the Newcastle Knights, which means Louis will come out of the commentator's box, head back to the coach's box, and Louis, let's hope that it's one and one after this game against Newcastle. Yeah, fingers crossed. We've, uh, we've lost a little bit of speed over the, uh, over the last couple of days, which is disappointing. So hopefully the boys uh, get out there and come up with a bit of a game plan while I've been up here in the box, see what they're going to toss up this one. So there's your schedule for the remainder of the day. It's a really entertaining day. Hope you can join us on all the platforms, whether it's KO, the Legends of League website, the Legends of League Facebook site, or, of course, nrl.com. And we're getting set for the next contest, which is Penrith and Newcastle, just on the right of your screen. We'll take a break. You're watching all the action of the 2019 Legends of League tournament here from McDonald's Jones Stadium. And a big thank you to our proud tournament partners.
And welcome back to McDonald Jones Stadium. Will the hometown boys make their way out onto the field for their first uh, contest in this Legends of League tournament for 2019? And they take on the Luke Lewis coached Penrith Panthers. Brett Kamali's come up from the sideline back into the broadcast box. And Noddy, you started your career with the Newcastle Knights. Uh, a man by the name of A. Johns filled in for you and then sort of went on to some good things. No, yeah, I was a couple of years younger than Andrew, so obviously he was lucky enough to, to be a local junior come through the ranks. So I remember sitting on the hill over there. There's an Andrew John's grandstand now, but that was the hill. Yep. When Sam Stewart led the Knights out, <laughs> 1988. I was a young 12-year-old kid sitting on the hill, eating the ice cream, and just thought, wow, ha we've got our own team in our own town. Didn't have to go for a Sydney-based club. It was amazing, and obviously, yeah, lucky enough to play a couple of games for the club. Um, Newcastle, though, what do they produce today? Canterbury just showed their first hit out, and they were wonderful. Newcastle, I think, are possibly the second favourite team to win this this tournament this year. Well, in 1988, on that particular day, they played Parramatta and went down to 28 points to four, and it was 11 points to 10 that they went down in the semi-final last year in the Legends of Lee to the eventual premiers, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. As now the Knights on the charge. And Gadir, Badiris now gives the ball away to the fullback there in Robbie O'Davis. And now the Knights, they will play it. From dummy half, Badiris looks for Gidley now. Beautiful combination of Kurt Gidley and Danny Badiris. As now the Knights play it along their back line. And they will take it forward. Good work there from Craig Smith. He'll play it a couple of metres short of the try line as Rodney just holds him up for the Penrith side. Badiris from acting half. Good ball and a short one there to the centre in Clint Newton. He's held in a tackle just short of the try line. And now Badiris from dummy half. On to Gidley, puts the kick into the in goal area. Fatawira to pick it up, try and get out of the in goal area. Tried to look for the pass, now gets the ball away. Craig Gowers put the ball down and the ball's gone into touch. Oh my goodness gracious me, what a start, Kamali. Yeah, yeah, Paul Fatawira trying to link some passes there and obviously throwing the ball touch in goal. So a line drop will start the play here for, for Penrith. Newcastle looks sharp. Got some pace, got some go forward men, got some skill. There's Gidley now, gives the ball away and the Knights take it forward. And they'll play it on that uh, eastern side through Daniel Abraham. Along the back line they go. And they play it forward. Newton now to be held up in a tackle. A couple of metres short of the quarter line. From dummy half, it's Badiris. Back through the middle they go. Now to Newton. Ball along the back line. Chance out wide for O'Davis. Who gets held up in a beautiful tackle. And uh, now Badiris from dummy half. Back to Gidley. And now the chance for the Newcastle Knights. Takes it forward through the winger in Daniel Abraham. Along the back line, they go towards the eastern side. There we oh, go. A yawning gap. An easy one. And Adam Woolnose over for the first try for the Knights. Noddy, what a start. 4-0 with a kick to come. Yeah, Newcastle's first game for the tournament so far. We've had to wait for a few games before we saw the home team come out and play. And they've started well. Started well. Starting to see the, the red and blue flags are starting to wave. The home crowd, I think, will come into... Support a bit later if they're able to get through to that the most important game to a kickoff about 5:30 p.m. Anthony Maroon, your sideline. Uh, you would have been here when the Knights played the Eels back in 1988. Oh, it was a memorable day, John O'Farr. Everybody got a free henny penny chicken drumstick <laughs> and a side of coleslaw. But what about this uh, Newcastle Knights bench, boys? It's a million-dollar bench. You've got Billy Peden there. You've got Matty Parsons and big Owen Craigie. Joey Johns, the eighth immortal, once said of Owen Craigie, he's one of the most naturally gifted players I ever played football with. Of course, he started his career here in Newcastle from Inverell at the age of about 16, and he's just ran on out there. I think he's in jumper number five, so good luck, Owen. Yeah, Maroon, I played at Australian schoolboys with Owen. He was the first kid to get picked year 10, year 11, year 12. They're just a super talent. So as Penrith take it forward now, and their chance with the ball now goes forward. And there's a nice little passage of football takes it forward. So he'll play it through the half in Luke Walsh. And now the Knights have got the football back, but they've lost it as soon as they've got it. And uh, Brad Ty puts the ball to ground. So the Panthers will have another opportunity inside their attacking zone. 
On the back line they go. Walsh now out to Gower. He's got a bit of space to room. Inside the quarter line they go. Takes it back to Walsh. Now looking for something. Gets the ball across the back line. Fatawir watches the ball. Now it comes to O'Davis. And Robbie O gallops away. Gives the ball back inside. In fact, it's O'Davis that's got the ball. And he will score a try for Newcastle. And we get the belly flop. We get the backflip. A beautiful ball. A beautiful try. And Newcastle. They are humming at the moment. Noddy 10-0 with a kick to come. Yeah, it was Brad Ty that was originally picked up the, the loose ball and he, he was able to link with Robbie O'Davis. I don't know if anyone told Robbie O'Davis the rules because he's about one metre from the bonus point, oh. puts the ball down outside the bonus point, <laughs> does the cartwheel and then does the, the belly slide onto the bonus point. Oh. Do we give him a point for belly sliding on the bonus point? I reckon they go to the same hairdresser, Brad Ty and Robbie O'Davis Maroon, because their haircuts are exactly the same. Yeah, absolutely, Jono. Well, we're going to get Robbie O'Davis over here now and ask him if he does know about uh, the bonus rule. Robbie, we're right over here, mate. Have you got word? Time for a quick word. Mate, you scored the try. Beautiful somersault, belly flop and whatever that was at the end. I know, mate. It's trying to relive my youth. It's not working, is it? Mate, you do know that if you put it on the white bit, that's a bonus. You know about that now? We're going to win by that much. It doesn't matter. I think. <laughs> I know now. I know. Now. <laughs> Good on you, Robbie. There he is, Robbie O. He knows now. But he's going over there to the Newcastle camp. Joey Johns will have a word with him. And back to you, boys. Oh, thank you, Maroon, as uh, the Panthers dive out wide. And they have scored a try. So they've got themselves back in this contest. It's nowhere near the bonus zone, but it's a try. And it's 10 points to four with a kick to come. Noddy, the Panthers, they needed that. Luke Lewis, oh, I reckon he'll be... Uh, doing cartwheels at the moment, he'd be that happy. Yeah, yeah, they needed a score next. Obviously, Newcastle, I think Robbie Doe was thinking that they were going to run away with it, but New Penrith were able to score. What a great ability there to put the ball down. Craig Gower will have a shot from the sideline. A little bit of wind starting to blow around this stadium, so not too sure how successful the kicks will come from the sideline as the afternoon unfolds. So Luke Swain, the scorer of that last try for Penrith. And now it makes it 10 points to four in favour of Newcastle. And Robbie O, <laughs> as you heard in that little chat with Maroon, he'll reckon they win by that much. Let's see if he can find the bonus point next time. As Penrith get us back underway. Nicely taken by the Knights. And now Newton will charge forward for the men from the Hunter. Of course, made the semi-final last year, going down to the Bulldogs. 11 points to 10. Badiris now gives the ball across field. And Newcastle take it through Matt Parsons. And now Newcastle play it right in the middle on the Legends of League logo. Badiris from dummy half. Looks for some options. Finds Gidley. Gidley with the short kick. Bounces back. Bounces up. Got it. And he scores. And he will find the bonus zone. So Newcastle do know where it is, Noddy. Great well, try there to uh, Newcastle. And they build on their lead. Yeah, build on their lead. Certainly Kirk Gidley. They've got some pace. So Kirk Gidley was one of the fittest players I remember playing football with or against. And he still looks like he's in peak shape that's the, the one good thing from I suppose from what we saw from Canterbury was a couple of the kicks and regathers for, for Luke Patton and others and if you look at the skill for, for Newcastle they've got quite a number of players that have got that ability to kick and have the pace to go through the defensive line and score so the kicks are going to be a, a bit of a trick when it comes to the, the closer games the competition games the semi-final games Maroon your sideline you might have seen some of the Canterbury game but they were very impressive in their last game and their victory over the Barbarians this Canterbury Newcastle, it's looking likely to be a grand final. It, it could be a classic, mate. Well, I tell you what, you talk about the doggies. While they were playing, I was in a corporate area there with the great Joey Johns, and he was just he just marvelled at how well they were playing, how the passes stuck, how conditioned they were. They obviously put a lot into it behind the scenes, that Bulldog side. They'd have to be favourites for a three-peat uh, as the Panthers get through his Fatawira. Oh, beautiful work down the western touchline, but he's passed it to the wrong player. And Newcastle now, they will have possession inside that attacking quarter. Nice little gallop there from him. As Newcastle take it forward through Craig Smith. They play it just out of the quarter. Now Badiris gives it to Newton. And Clint Newton now will play it about six or seven short of the halfway line. Smaller field here for the Legends tournament. Away it goes. Ball back inside. Chance here for the Knights. Can't quite hold onto the football. And the ball has gone to ground. Penrith have got 10 seconds left before the half time will come up. So they want to try and get a quick try if they can. But also, I suppose you don't want to... Here's Frankie Pritchard's a chance. Oh, 
Hutchins a fingertip away oh. from it. Ball along the back line. Still alive here for the Panthers. They go inside the attacking zone. And it's picked up there by the Newcastle Knights eventually by the 12 and Chris Houston. So that's half time here in this clash between Newcastle and Penrith. And let's go sideline. Maroon is down there with Kurt Gidley, the scorer of the last try for the Newcastle Knights. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jono. What an afternoon it's been so far. And finally, we get the home side out there on the field, the great Newcastle Knights, one of their greatest. Kurt Gidley, hello, mate. Hello, mate. Yeah, what a great afternoon for everyone. What about you out there, mate? You look like you haven't you haven't lost any pace at all. I, I noticed yesterday you, you're still looking as fit as ever. Yeah, you keep, keep things ticking along, mate. But, no, it's great to be back with some ex-teammates and, and catching up with so many guys who you play against and respect it. So it's a good day for the former players. It's great for the fans and, and it's great for charity too. And Absolutely, mate. And, of course, uh, Mark Hughes, a bloke you know well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what Hughes has done with his foundation is amazing. I suppose the support the community has, has shown Mark and his foundation. So, you know, it's a win for everyone today. And even got Joey Johns back to Newcastle. I believe he might have had a beer with everybody in Newcastle last night. Can you add any, anything to that? Yeah, I think it was a late finish, but that, that, that's pretty standard for Joey. We're, we're still trying to convince him to strap the boots on for game two, so maybe a bit of crowd support will get him there. OK, I don't want to put the hex on you, mate, but you blokes and the doggies look like the two teams. Yeah, look, there's been a fair rivalry over the past couple of years, and, and I know they've been training over the last 12 months to bring their team closer together, so we'll see what happens. Good on your kids. Cheers, mate. There he is, local boy done good. Let's go now to Steve Allen with the crowd here at the Legends of League. Yeah, thank you, Maroon. Thank, thank you, Kirk Gidley. Uh, lots of red and blue here. How are you all going in the crowd here? I found a, I found Callie. Now, Callie's come all the way from Townsville, and she's a season ticket holder. That deserves a round of applause from Townsville and a night season ticket holder. Uh, you were actually at the 97 GF. Tell us more. No, I wasn't at the GF. I was at the Victory Hotel in Brisbane, and I remember when Darren Elvis put his trial. I literally had a jug of beer that I dropped all over my head, but I didn't care because I was so freaking excited. Yeah, short side play by Joey, Darren Albert, the hero, and you, you've come down for the V8s as well. Great to see you. Let's go to Monique uh, beside Hamish here. Monique, you're at 2001, oh, Megan, 2001 grand final. Newcastle led 24 points to nil at halftime. Oh, it was great. It was a fantastic atmosphere down there. Went on to win 30-24, and this guy, we're not even going to talk to him, but we just want to put him on the screen. What a good-looking night nice supporter. What a great job. So thank you, Steve Allen, and thank you, Anthony Maroon, as we're back underway in this clash between the Panthers and the Newcastle Knights. Steve Allen was talking about the 97 grand final between Manly and Newcastle, a famous game. If you haven't seen it, go on to YouTube, find the DVD of it. I'll tell you something funny, Noddy. Half-time, I'm a Manly supporter. Manly are leading 16-8. I've absolutely given it to about four Newcastle supporters that couldn't have worn more red and blue in their lives. I've said, boys, hop on the Sid Fogg bus, go home. Premiership's Manly's. Newcastle went on to win it. They went and bought beers and poured it on me at full time. And so you deserve that. <laughs> I have no sympathy for that. I didn't expect sympathy. Oh, no. I was, <laughs> that was, I remember that, obviously, Darren Albert scoring that try off. Obviously, Andrew Johns going down the short side there and sneaking up to, to get the, the overlap for the speedy scone thoroughbred he was. Darren Albert come down from there and become the first or become the legend of the town I suppose by winning the first premiership for the Knights absolutely and he, he did it again a couple of years later in a, a match against St George Illawarra at the Sydney Football Stadium when they beat uh, them in a, a round 24 clash in 1999 so Darren Albert one of the great wingers for uh, Newcastle is now Shane Rodney takes it forward for Penrith and they'll play it into opposition territory so looking for some points in this clash after a superb start for the Knights. 17-4 in favour of Newcastle. And Gower's kicked it out on the full. So Maroon, your sideline. Uh, what's the atmosphere down there between these two sides? Yeah, absolutely great atmosphere. The, the crowd really getting into it. We talk so much about the Newcastle supporters that are here, but every team that is playing is represented quite well in the crowd, including uh, the Penrith Panthers. But I've got to tell you, boys, this wind... It's really favouring Newcastle at the moment, but it's wished around a bit. It really is hard to predict what it's doing, but right now, it's right behind the Newcastle Knights. Maroon, you're a very proud South Sydney supporter. Have you seen the random Souths guy yet? Mate, don't worry about that. Not one, not two, but three random Souths guys. we just got to get the Rabbitohs to play in the tournament next year. Oh, well, let's see. It was Manly last year. It's Penrith this year. Let's see if they can push out and put it on another team. As Newcastle go inside the attacking zone. 
They look for some possession, but the ball has been taken by Penrith and knocked on. It was Joel Clinton that put the ball down for them. So they'll play it again, Newcastle, and have another throw at the dice. And now they will take it through Matt Parsons, who plays it right on the quarter line. Chance here now as they go through Gidley. The show and go from him. Gets the ball away, and now Newcastle. They're just moving nicely here through Craig Smith. He'll play it inside that attacking zone, about eight metres short of the try line. Along the back line they go, nicely to Gidley. Wide and a chance here for Newcastle. Diving effort, couldn't quite get there, the winger. And now they will bring it back towards the western side, the Knights. Goes back through the middle. Chance here for Newcastle. They'll play it through Todd Lowry. Wearing jumper number 55. And he will play it about uh, 10 metres short of the line. He's dropped the football there, but... I think you'll get the ball back, Noddy, as the Knights play on. Yeah, they've, got, they've ruled a penalty, so they've got to take a tap, wait for a Todd Larry to get back on side. Daniel Abraham will take the tap. So Parsons now takes it forward and plays it uh, just shy of the try line along the back line. Gidley now across. Oh, beautiful ball from Ty. It's picked up by the Penrith side. And they'll go to ground. Yeah, another set of six here for the new, or set of five. Oh. First knock on from Newcastle, or bad pass. Penrith able to hold on there. You can hear the wind even on, just whirling through the stadium. Yeah, it's absolutely howling. Maroon, uh, what sort of effect is it having in the game so far, the wind? Well, like I say, mate, right now it's behind Newcastle, but as Noddy pointed out, it, it really is just, for the most part, it's swirling around. So when we first got out here and the tournament started, definitely like going from right to left and right behind Newcastle now, but... It's just very unpredictable at the moment. I'll tell you what, boys, I'm just having a look at the program. We have got a cracking game next. Don't go away. It's the Dogs, tournament favourites up against the Broncos. Yeah, the Brisbane Broncos, they started well in that win over the Barbarians, 15-13. to 13, As now Badiris takes it forward for Newcastle. And Shane Rodney, the St Mary's coach, puts him to ground. Now they go from Abrahams, who takes it forward. Nice little work from him. He'll play it a couple of metres short of the try line. Chance here now for Badiris at acting half. Comes into Newton. Ball back inside. Good work there for the Knights to try and play it around. Daniel Abraham now has the football. He'll go to ground. As now Betsy goes from dummy half. Good ball to Gidley out to Newton. And Newton passes to nobody. A ghost. It goes into the eastern touchline and into touch so chance goes begging there Noddy but a couple of minutes left Newcastle will hold on here but an improved performance from Penrith yeah improved performance from Penrith but obviously uh, it'll have to keep improving uh, with the for and against and coming to some bigger games but Newcastle uh, Clinton Newton come up with a wonderful pass but I think his winger just forgot to run let him down <laughs> but, it would, but it was Adam Walner it was on the wing so it's not normally his position uh, yeah, I'm not sure where they were, but anyway, as Penrith now take it forward. Way to Walsh, and now they bring it back along their very talented back line, the Panthers. A basketball pass back inside to Jeremy Lattimore. Play for the Dragons as well as the Panthers as they now take it forward. Penrith, a no-look pass to Walsh. Goes inside the attacking zone. Little chip kick and a good one. Ty picks it up. Trouble. Tries to get away. Trouble. Brad Ty now has some, some space. Goes towards the halfway line, now still there, tried to get the pass away, Ty working well nicely. And he will play it on the quarter line. My goodness, he's dangerous and very entertaining to watch, Brad Ty. As they go from dummy half, and they, the Knights play it forward, and they will uh, play it just outside the attacking zone. As they play from one to Lowry. And they're about five short of the try line. Badiris from dummy half. Ty again with the football. And he goes a couple of metres short. That is the last for the Knights. Now Bedsy from dummy half. He'll go along the back line to Gidley. And it's a one-on-one -on -one strip for the Panthers. And they will now play it. And we're in the final stages. Two minutes before the full-time siren in this one. And uh, both sides really looking... Pretty strong at the moment. Penrith, some area to improve. Newcastle, Noddy, they are humming at the moment. Yeah, they certainly are humming. This is, as you said, the first performance from Newcastle. They'll, they'll back up again in, in, in a game's time when they play Parramatta. 
Canterbury versus Brisbane is the next game, which is going to be a cracking game. Oh, sensational. But then we've got Newcastle play Parramatta, which will be very, very high-quality game as well. The interesting thing between the Bulldogs and uh, Brisbane, uh, one of those sides is going to have their first loss of the tournament. Mm. Well, will it be Canterbury? They haven't had a loss in two years. And Brisbane beat the Barbarians as Betsy gives it to Gidley. And now they bring it back across the Knights. And they play it through Houston, who puts the chip kick through. And it's come loose. It's picked up by the Panthers. They'll try and work it out. And Maroon is sidelined. Your thoughts on the contest so far between the uh, Knights and Panthers? Well, good luck to the Panthers. Good on them too. They haven't gone away. They're down 17-4, but they haven't given up the ghost out here today. Just on that breeze again, it has completely changed direction twice since we last spoke. So it was behind Penrith for a while, and now I don't know what it's doing. It's kind of just swirling around. Boys, you keep saying the name Brad Ty. So much skill, and um, he's just been putting in all afternoon here. Very fit player. Why? Well, he's also been running around in the local comp up here with the mighty Rosellas. So Brad Ty, who played for both of these sides, still playing in the local comp and doing well out there for Newcastle today. So you can really hear that wind galloping around uh, McDonald Jones Stadium as the Panthers put the ball to ground in these final few seconds, about 15 to go. And now Newcastle will have one last throw at the dice. They can score points in the final moments of a game as... Gidley puts it forward, and Houston, a beautiful pick up from him. And Chris Houston scores for the Knights. Well, Noddy, the Newcastle team, they just have this habit of scoring in the final stages of any game. Well, they were disallowed in the, in the final <laughs> game of the last year's tournament, so they've, they've got to try and come up with a better outcome, which has happened in this game. 21 points to four at the moment. Possibility to go 23 with a conversion. Great first up performance from Newcastle. As I said, they'll come back in two games' time to play against Parramatta, which will be a really good a really good clash. Well, I think we're at the moment, John, we've probably got Canterbury as favourites. Yep. Newcastle slightly second. Yep. Brisbane third. Absolutely. I, Parramatta I would, say. would be the fourth team. Yes. Which makes them which makes the next few clashes very, very good. Impressed with Brisbane, very impressed with Parramatta. And uh, that's our stun and dusted for this game. 21 points to four in favour of the Newcastle Knights. Let's go sideline with Maroon with the post-match comments. What was your thoughts on that game as it uh, looks like Craig Gower making his way over towards you? I haven't seen the boys for a bit and uh, obviously to catch up and, and, and play a bit of footy and uh, it's, it's always enjoyable. And of course, mate, you had a bit of a cameo here at Newcastle too. Yeah, yeah five or six games, so it was good fun. People are great, you know, supporters got out and, and, and uh, obviously supported the way they do up here at Newcastle and uh, yeah, it was fantastic. Everybody talks about it, uh, the fact that, you know, it's the first thing all the old players say, catching up with the old mates. Yeah, and that's what it's about, uh, it's about you know, obviously... There's a lot of uh, men's, men's health out there these days, especially with uh, players retiring and so forth. So it's good for these for the old players to get together and have a chat and uh, obviously um, see how everyone's doing and so forth, which is which is great. Righto, Gowie, good to catch up. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Craig Gower joining us here at Legends of League. If you want to support the Mark Hughes Foundation, just go online wherever you're watching in Australia. Maybe you're watching New Zealand, wherever you are around the world. Legends of League is on the rise and the Mark Hughes Foundation is as well. And if you want to help out, just look it up on uh, the internet, Mark Hughes Foundation, and you can help out as well. Thank you, Maroon. Uh, your sideline right across the day doing a superb job. And Craig Gower, one of the members of the 2003 side that picked up the premiership. A victory over Ricky Stewart's Roosters. And uh, my goodness, what a, a wet night at, at uh, ANZ Stadium, but a, a memorable victory for the Penrith Panthers. They've gone down here 21 to 4 against Newcastle. The hometown boys, they pick up their first win. We're getting set now for the next game, and that is Canterbury and Brisbane. Should be an absolute bell ringer, a barn burner, whatever you prefer. You can, of course, catch us on KO, the Legends of League website, the Legends of League Facebook site, or nrl.com. We'll take a break here at the Legends of League on the other side of the break. All the action of the Bulldogs and Brisbane, and it should be a really good contest. One of these teams is going to get their first loss here today, and will the Bulldogs get their first loss in two years' worth of tournaments? Find out on the other side of this. 
all the action of the Legends of League still to come. We've got a great clash between the Bulldogs and the Broncos. That should be a terrific game. One of these teams will have their first loss of not only the tournament, but the Bulldogs could have their first loss in the first two years of this tournament. They went undefeated in 2017 and 2018, and of course they won the tournament. There is your schedule. You can see the Canterbury side taking on Brisbane. Then it's Newcastle and Parramatta. Then we get into the semis and the grand final. It should be a really entertaining day. Stay with us for all the action and the Broncos and the Bulldogs up next on the other side of this break. And here we go, all set for action between Canterbury and Brisbane. Canterbury have remained undefeated for two tournaments. Brisbane, they picked up a win earlier in the day over the Barbarians, 15 points to 13. So who's going to pick up this one? John O'Farr, Brett Kamali and Anthony Maroon, your commentary team for this one. Noddy, who do you see winning here today? Will it be the flair of Canterbury? Or will it be the class or maturity of the Brisbane side? Well, I think the dogs come prepared for this as well. We've got obviously Canterbury have got black armbands on the on their sleeve because obviously former club doctor Hugh Hazard passed away from cancer uh, a, a number of weeks ago now. So obviously the dogs are paying respect for him. So we'll just take a minute silence here to remember Hugh Hazard. And our thoughts and prayers are with the Hazard family at this very difficult time. A wonderful ambassador in rugby league and a great name. May he rest in peace. Yeah, obviously he was a, the club doctor there at Canterbury for a long, long time. Was the Australian doctor on a number of occasions. Certainly a big input into the HIA of the game now. You know, we're obviously where the player safety has become so important to the NRL. Hugh Hazard was the, the NRL doctor there for a while and driving force behind all that. It's a wonderful legacy to leave the game because hasn't that been a positive step in the game, that HIA technique and standard through the game? Oh, it's been so important for player welfare and well-being. And so we're getting set for this start. Maroon, your sideline. Who do you like, the Bulldogs or Brisbane? Okay, we'll just come back to you in just a moment as now Sims takes it forward for Brisbane. He plays to that quarter line. I think I'm, th I'm leading the way of Canterbury at the moment. I, th I think they're defensively great. There's not many line breaks or errors in them. They've got some pace. They've got some physicality. They've got some, a great kicking game in Sherwin and Holdsworth. Come up with some good kicks. We saw Luke Patton score of a, a crossfield one. You know what? I reckon Brisbane might go an upset here. I was impressed with their performance against the Barbarians. And Scotty Prince, who's just given it to Scotty Minto. And they take it over the halfway line. I think they might just get the Bulldogs on this occasion. Friend from dummy half onto Prince. Puts a good kick downfield. Picked up beautifully by the general. Luke Patton gives the ball away to Matty Utai. Sloppy hands there from the Bulldogs. And a chance goes begging for them. But an opportunity is created for Brisbane Maroon, your sideline. Yeah, I, I've got a feeling you might be right there. I'm going to tip a little bit of an upset here too as they go on the attack right near the line. Uh, but let's, I'll go back to you here because now we've got to stop at your play. Boys, we talked earlier about the mighty Coromel Cougars. Well, we've got one out there in the number one for the Bulldogs, the great General Patton, Luke Patton. I remember my time in Wollongong, him running up and down Railway Street, Coromel. You, I can pick those skinny little legs out anywhere. Calling for the mighty I-98 as Rennie Matua takes it forward for Canterbury. And uh, now Shifty Sherwin from dummy half onto Mason. Now to Feeney. Feeney tried to get the pop pass away, but he has, and he's got it to Ben Hannett for Brisbane. So an interesting start here in this contest between Canterbury and Brisbane. Friend away to Sims, pushing his way through, back onto Dell. 
And now the Broncos move it through Minto, who's lost the ball. A lot of errors early in this contest. Maybe some nerves coming into it, Noddy? Yeah, well, I would have thought Canterbury would have started a bit more controlled. Obviously, they've played two games ago. Brisbane, Brisbane played the first game, and then they've had one, two, three, three sort of games in rest. So they, they probably got to get back into the groove of things as well. The yep. wind's picked up. We, we can hear the wind swirling around. And Maroon said it's got just coming from everywhere. So maybe the longer passes are an issue, but... Bit of respect for both these sides. A bit of a bit of nervousness happening out here. And Andrew Simons, of course, the former cricketer, played 26 tests and 198 one day as for Australia. He's the coach or part of the coaching staff for uh, Brisbane. And it's great to see Roy here for this day. As now the ball goes away to Mason, who charges forward. Can't quite get the pass away. Roy Asatasi comes up with it, but a little bit too late. So a mistake-ridden passage of football. About six to go before half time as now Hannett takes it forward for Brisbane. Plays it a couple of metres short of the halfway line. This has been an interesting start. Maroon, your sideline, I thought there might have been some points by now. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing, mate. Three minutes gone in this sort of contest. a long time without a try, nil all. But uh, a couple of freshmen pretty, pretty get, getting ready to go on for the dogs, including Rod Silver, Rennie Matua. And have a look at the hairdo on Rennie Matua. He looks fantastic. He wins the hairdo of the tournament. Uh, another great player to make his way out there for the dogs is Holdsworth. So they've certainly got a very, very strong bench. Scored a great try, Daniel Holdsworth. And you're right about Rennie Matua's haircut as Prince gives it away. Lottie Dakiri back into Prince. And now the Broncos shift it wide towards the eastern touchline. And they're inside the attacking zone, but on the last as Friend goes from dummy half. On to Prince, who's been damaging today. Nice chip kick over the head. It's taken beautifully by uh, Canterbury. And uh, Tonga has the football in his hand. And now they go from Sherwin onto Asatasi. Of course, had some time at South Sydney as well as the Bulldogs. And now Canterbury take it forward. Works it beautifully through John O'Wright. He plays it about six or seven short of the halfway line. You'll notice the smaller field size here. As they go nicely through Morin. And they'll play it a couple of metres short of the halfway line. Good kick from Canterbury downfield. That'll go from Holdsworth. Down towards, oh, it's a pick up and a miss. And I think it's a try. Yes, it is a try. And Dean Hallitow gets the first four-pointer, Noddy. Dean Hallitow, what about the hands? I was going to say that was one of the outside backs that picked up that <laughs> ball, but not to be the, the back rower lock in Dean Hallitow. has chased a downfield punt from Daniel Holdsworth. Brisbane have got it covered. It's a horrendous bounce for PJ Marsh. It goes backwards, goes backwards. And Hallitow with the right hand. Oh, just scoops it up and the first try has come with four minutes to go to Canterbury from nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah well a mistake so PJ Marsh has made a meal of it, it Maroon it reminded me of the try that Hazamil Mazari scored in the 04 grand final it took him a hundred reasons to get there <laughs> <laughs> absolutely boys keep an eye on two a boy by the name of Roy Asatasi he's as fit as a Mali bull why wouldn't he be he owns the F45 Jim in North Parramatta, and you can fair dinkum crack walnuts on his bum cheeks. Oh, there you go. You heard it here first as uh, Brisbane take it forward through Friend, playing a couple of metres short of the half. It was a big signing, Maroon, when obviously South Sydney bought him. He was probably the best prop in the game, and they weren't very good at that time, Maroon, when they bought Roy Azatasi. No, well, they paid overs, but he certainly opened the gateway for a lot of other great players to come to the club. So, yeah, he was a real turning point back when they signed him in late 2006. And that certainly created the uh, dynasty that created the 43-year drought breaker when they beat Canterbury in the grand final in 2014. That uh, many, many fans will talk about for the rest of their days as Prince now takes it forward, pushes his way through. This is good work from Scotty Prince. Good ball away to Sims. Now he's looking for something. And now, oh, ball to Hannett, who's put it down. Canterbury will come up with it. It's gone into touch. Noddy, Canterbury get the ball here? Yeah, Canterbury will get the ball. Ben Hannett knocked on. They're just great defensively, Canterbury. They, they, they're happy to slide. They use their, their middlemen in the middle, obviously, to do the physical work. And they put pace on the edge. And they, they work so hard from the inside. You saw Holdsworth coming across from the inside, was able just to hold him out. And, oh, a little bit of skill. Randy Matua. Throws the ball over the sideline. Brisbane will get great field position. Scotty Prince is the man I want to see get some runners off him for Brisbane. 
Well, they're starting to move nicely here. It was 28 points to 10 last year when Canterbury played Brisbane in favour of the Bulldogs. And now it's four points to nil in favour of the defending Premiers. It's now Brisbane go inside the attacking zone. And they play it about 10 metres short of the line. Friend from acting half. He'll look for some options on the eastern side. Tried to go to Sims. Now he does now. Sims pushes one away. Oh, I don't know what he did there, Noddy, but he's made an absolute meal well, of we'll it. Well, have a look at him. He knows he's just blown it. He's like, oh, what did I do? I was just, I'm in space. All i got to do is get the ball over the line. He tries to grub it for himself, but there was no one in front of him. Chance goes begging. Yeah, Brisbane there. As we watch here, the replay will show us. It's in his hands. He's going to score. He's going to score. Oh, was it the defender for Canterbury that played a part there? Maroon, your sideline, I reckon you could have scored that try. Unbelievable how he just let that one go. The line was wide open. Boys, while I've got you there, uh, Jamie Feeney, one of the rugby league's nice guys out there, his lovely wife's just given birth to twins. He's taken the time off to come and play in the Legends of League. What do you think of that? Oh, that's dedication. Footy over family. Is, oh, lovely oh. play from Canterbury. And Bobcat will score a, uh, a try right in the bonus zone. So Canterbury, keep going. And now it is nine points to nil with a conversion to come, Noddy. Yeah, yeah, on the bonus point, obviously Andrew Ryan was get the try score there. Brisbane had the opportunity to score and Sims knocks on over the line. And then Millie Mason, obviously you're going to come out of the line to stop that big human. Creates the overlap by Holdsworth running around. That's Bobcat's second bonus try, Noddy. So a good effort for him. And uh, we mentioned earlier, he hasn't aged a bit. So 11 points to nil after the conversion. And Canterbury get us back underway. And now they'll try and bring it off their own try line. Brisbane. It's now Sims works his through some defence, some good solid defence. She's not a, they really look like combinations are a big thing for Canterbury in defence and attack. Yeah, that's right. Well, certainly uh, when I played there a couple of years ago, the first year of the tournament, we certainly did some training, had some shape, had some structure, had a plan, all worked really hard to go. The other thing is they're all super athletic still, so they they can work hard. And as you see, Maroon spoke about how fit Roy Azatasi looks. Mm. Like they all look like they could still play the game. Yeah, Luke Patton is flying around at the moment. Andrew Ryan, he hasn't aged a bit. So that's half time Dean, here in this game between Canterbury and Brisbane. Dean Hallitow still got bumps all over his abs, Maroon. Catches it pretty quickly. Um, it's one thing to be fit, it's another thing to have to make tackles and then get tackled. So uh, it's good fun, but always good fun. You say it's good fun, but you blokes, I reckon, it seem to be taking it more, just a tad more serious than everyone else. Oh, I think it's in the blood, right? I think everyone just wants to get out there and compete. And uh, we're a bit of a target on our backs after the last couple of years, so we have to turn up ready to play. All right, mate, what happens in the second half? Uh, much of the same. Hopefully, we finish on top. Dino, you've got a very successful career now on ABC Radio with a pretty face like that. When are they going to put you on the telly? Uh, I belong on the radio, mate. That's where I'll stay. Just like me. Yeah, that's right. There he is, a good fella, Dean Hallitow. Half time, and it sees the uh, doggies. Well, they look like they might get another win, Jono. No, oh, absolutely. It might continue the winning success. Uh, Maroon, and I can add to that list. I've certainly got a great head for radio, as well as we all do. Anyway, we'll take a break here at the Legends of League tournament. A great half of rugby league so far. The Bulldogs, they lead. They're putting on a great performance. Can Brisbane come back in the second half? Find out on the other side of the break. You're watching the Legends of League tournament live from Newcastle. And back underway in this second half between Canterbury and Brisbane in this Legends of League tournament. And Canterbury, they are humming at the moment. Utah trying to keep their undefeated streak going in this tournament. 11 points to nil. They lead it in this contest. 
And now uh, Eastwood has the ball for Brisbane as Sims now plays it to Tony Carroll and the Tundra works towards the try line. John O'Farr, Brett Kamali and Anthony Maroon, your commentary team for this one. It's now Walker, gives the ball back inside. Brisbane try to play it towards the line. David Stagg caught short of the line. Good set of six here from Brisbane. They need some points here though. Walker, wide pass, Minto. Minto back through the middle. He's going the longest possible way to Eastwood. Now to Prince, back inside to Walker. And Walker's you know, a wall of defence. The reception committee is quite gracious from Canterbury and they'll play it 10 short of the line. Friend from dummy half. Now P uh, Prince gives the ball away, picked up by Walker. And he's tackled a couple of metres short of the line. Desperation defence from Canterbury here, Noddy. Oh, how good do they defend Canterbury? They just scramble, got off the line, save tries. So much intensity there that they didn't want to concede a try. They're leading 11-0. It's not only their creativity and attack and their control, it's, it's how well they defend is the reason why they're probably favourites. So Marco Mealy now gets it away to Feeney. Maroon, your sideline, you're loving this so far between Canterbury and Brisbane. Yeah, interesting to hear what the uh, their little uh, huddles had to say at halftime. Doggies were saying just keep the intensity up, keep the intensity up. And here he goes, Jono, Big Willie Mason. Oh, over the halfway line, but he walls, walks into a wall of defence and now gets the ball away. Utah now in some, in fact, it's... Um, Tonga takes it forward. Jeez, that step reminded me of Matty Utai, the way he used to move around. And now Canterbury along the back line, through Ryan, onto Sherwin. Now the ball back inside to Patton. Patton works away, Prince goes away, Minto. Now the ball to Sherwin. Sherwin has a chance. Wright's coming at the ball. Tapped away by the Broncos and kicked into touch. Oh, geez, they just got out of jail there, the Brisbane side, Noddy. Yeah, they just shift the ball so well. The, the Canterbury side was a lovely little short pass that put Mason away. The big man didn't really want to stride out and go 60 metres down park. Got tackled, and then they just go shift and shift. And talking about shifty Sherwin there, the creative halfback, comes up with a lovely little grubber, nearly score. And it was a tap away by Eastwood at the final stages of that one that uh, gets Brisbane to the in-goal area and now Canterbury have another crack and another wind up they go this time through Brad Morin will play it a couple of metres short of the line from dummy half they go gets the ball away oh that's a Tarsi Maroon was praising him earlier in the day moving beautifully there chance here now for the Dogs Patton towards the line should score does score Maroon great try to the Bulldogs and they build on their lead 15 points to nil yeah, I reckon they're red-hot favourites again here, the Doggies, 15 to nil over the Broncos. And as I was saying earlier, that huddle, half-time huddle at the Doggies, they were just saying to each other, keep the intensity up, keep the intensity up. It's not one yet. And on the other side of the, the coin there, the Broncos were saying, where we can, let's try and get a couple of bonus tries. So certainly in this game, there's a lot of feeling and a lot of intensity. And here he comes, the great general, the Coromel Cougar, Lukey Patton, getting a good try. So the conversion is successful. And now it's 17 points to nil. Noddy, it looks as though it'll be number three for the Bulldogs. Yeah, possibly at the moment with five minutes to go, leading 17 points to nil. Now, what about the... We talk about the little grubber from Brent Sherwin that got the repeat set. And then he's, he's just nailed the conversion from the sideline with the wind howling. And now Canterbury's kicking game. They've kicked off, which we do a line drop kickoff. They've put the ball over the sideline, so they get the ball back again. And they've got an amount of talented players that can kick the ball and put it on the spot. Geez, I, I reckon uh, maybe the Canterbury coach in Dean Pay needs to look at some of these players for a comeback. Thoughts? Yeah, well, obviously, <laughs> you know, they've, they've done a lot of getting ex-players around the club. Steve Price has gone back as the general manager of football or, or some role there. He was a former club great. So now Canterbury will play it. From dummy half, they go through Grimaldi along the back line. Now Sherwin looked dangerous, but Takiri and Julian O'Neill course uh, with the Broncos in the 90s and their premiership success when they beat the Dragons as Lottie Dekiri now takes it forward along the back line he goes and now Friend takes it forward for Brisbane good work from him so far Noddy spotted something yeah we'll go down to Maroon Maroon's trying to wave to us as if he's going to come up with a big play or something <laughs> <laughs> well I'm with the great Jamie Feeney uh, he's one of the nice guys of rugby league played over 100 games for the doggies mate you've just had twins I have, mate. Yeah, it's uh, five and a bit, five and a half weeks ago, so it's a bit different. Um, but uh, busy times and a lack of sleep. But I'm enjoying 
getting away today and playing with these boys. Good on you, mate. We'll leave you go there. Jono, another try. Yeah, PJ Marsh is the man along the western touchline. Maroon, oh, look oh. at that. Yes. The backflips from PJ Noddy. Yeah. A beautiful try to Brisbane. Yeah. Acrobatic. We obviously used to see the man do that. Blacklock did Blacklock it. Blacklock did it. They had a little competition out at the, at the St. George Aura <laughs> Dragons there when they were doing post-try celebrations. We see here, this is the, the try by PJ Marsh. This is going to look great. You know what I wish? I wish I could do this. <laughs> what? Run down the sideline no, or the back no, The backflip. <laughs> Let's see where we go. Let's go. Just a little flip. Cut. Oh. Yeah. Easy. Wow. I mean, I just, oh. If the Australian gymnastics team are watching, get him in the team for the Tokyo Olympics next year. How good was that? So plenty of flair here. Brisbane on the board finally. 17 points to four now. Yeah, but Ben Hannett's just tried to do the kick that's gone over the sideline to get the ball back, but unfortunately it's gone over on the full. So the dogs will get the ball back on the halfway. And with only two minutes 30 to go, you probably think that Canberra will definitely win this game. And it's just going to be by how many points... So if you're thinking of maybe joining us here at McDonald Jones Stadium, come down, enjoy the festive, festive atmosphere here at the ground. A lot of fun with all these old boys having a crack again. You know what happens now as it gets more and more important. We're getting close to semi-final <laughs> time. Hey, we know that they're serious already, but they're a little bit of competitiveness oh, yeah. and, and, and desperation goes to another level soon. Well, you seem still filthy about Matt Cross's try denied last year. I'm filthy that Marco <laughs> Milley, when I interviewed him, he said, we've gone so much better since we kicked you out of the team two years ago. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for Amelia to make a mistake. I'll just give it to him. Maroon sideline, um, is this a preview of things to come later in the day between these two sides? I think so, mate. Look, I, I don't know at the moment. I think the Doggies, I thought more of the Broncos going into this game, but the Doggies just played. And, and guys, the more the game goes on, the more the afternoon goes on, oh, here we go, is this another try? No, I think it's gone dead. Has oh, it? maybe it is. <laughs> oh, it is a try. <laughs> oh, Eastwood looks like he's dived on it. Oh, the football gods. It hasn't bounced. It didn't bounce in favour of Brisbane at the start of the game when Halitau scored. And no way it did that bounce in favour of Canterbury at the end of this game. So it's Ben Hannett that scored the try, not a Greg Eastwood. And there's the little kick from Friend into the in goal area. How does the ball do this? Well, Rod Silver might have been pushed out of the way. <laughs> we thought the ball turned position. It was maybe the fact that the player got pushed out of the way. And the conversion oh. is successful for Brisbane. So oh. <laughs> they need a oh, Ben Hannett kicked the goal, which means it's there's seven points behind. Seven points behind. We go to the bonus zone, which is five, and two-point conversion. They could end up with a draw here. Ooh. Brisbane could end up if they get the ball back, which they don't have a ball. And there's 40 seconds left on the yeah. clock. They need the ball back. Hope you're enjoying the coverage, whether it's on KO, the Legends of League website, or the Facebook site. And that's picked up by Canterbury, or of course, NRL.com. John O'Farr, Brett Kamali, and Anthony Maroon, your commentary team for this one. Of course, we've had Penrith coach Luke Lewis in the broadcast box. And now Feeney will play it for the Canterbury over on the eastern side. Along the back line, they move it. Beautiful work. Back inside they go through Grimaldi. And it looks like Canterbury will snuff out any chance of a Brisbane victory here, Noddy. As Rennie Matua, that passes forward. And the siren goes in the background. So Canterbury keep their winning streak alive in this tournament. But, geez, I reckon Maroon, your sideline, they might have got a little bit of a threat here from the Brisbane side. Such a great cause, and it's great to see all these all these old ex players come out, and they still got it, man. They're still they're still hungry, they're still firing, and that's what rugby league and sport in general brings. It, it brings a hunger and desire out of you, and I'm um, just glad to share the pitch with these guys today. What about this doggy side, mate? How close are they going to go to winning it? They are all over the park. They know how to play this brand of rugby league. Yeah, they're red hot. They keep the ball going. Second phase plays great, and their defence is strong. So. You know what, we're going to have to go away and have a look at uh, how we can get better and how you can dissect this Bulldogs team. They've been a great club for so long and, uh, you know, that's for some of their best ever players to come out here and grace the field today is such a great thing for the Mark Hughes Foundation.
Yeah, it's a wonderful cause, and for you, mate, I mean, obviously you're a rugby league great yourself, but here you are today playing alongside Big Dell and uh, Lottie Takiri and a lot of blokes that made this club famous. A lot of blokes that made this club famous. Not just that, just put NRL strength, put the stronghold of NRL on the on the map in Australia, and you know you got guys out here like Robbie O'Davis, you know Kirk Gidley, Willie Mason. Uh, I could, I could, I could, the names could go on and on. Steve Menzies, who's probably one of the greatest forwards of all time, and they're taking their time out to. To, to put their to put their time and effort in a in such a great cause like the Mark Hughes Foundation, I hope everyone um, digs deep in their pockets and gives what they can because you know they're just trying to trying to find a cure for such a terrible disease. Yeah, good on you, mate. Get along and enjoy it with with your mates. It's nice to see you up here again, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Legends of League. It's a beautiful afternoon in Newcastle. The breeze has pretty much stopped. 23 degrees. All the teams are well supported here. If you obviously probably not going to get here. Now, if you're listening from home, but you're going to have to try and get here next year because it really is really making its mark in rugby league. It's the Legends of League. The defence is coming for Newcastle. It's Newton, but he's going to watch Luke Burt score the try. And there's the first one for Parramatta. They break the deadlock. Four points to nil with a kick to come. Maroon, thoughts on Luke Burt scoring the try and running about 60 metres. Yeah, the great thing was too, Jono, he had a smile on his face soon as he took the uh, picked the ball up from 60 metres out, ran all the way, and as Clint Newton got closer, they both had a smile on their face as they met at the try line. So good to see the spirit of the Legends of League uh, is alive and well in this game. And here he is, shaking hands with Owen Craigie, the opposition. So great try to a great rugby league ambassador in Luke Burt. Noddy, thoughts on the first try? Yeah, obviously he was able to stop Kirk Gidley's kick going through with the with the feet and pick the ball up and go length of the field. Obviously Luke Burt grew up in this area, was another guy that had to go elsewhere to have a career and travelled down to Parramatta and had a great career in, those, in that regard. It's a bit, of a bit of a shock that one, against the run of play. Newcastle now behind. Here's a question for you Noddy, you played for a number of clubs and did you what lessons did you learn from each club and did you take that into your next club? Uh, yeah, I think I think they're all different. I think every club has different cultures, different different coaching styles. Uh, certainly, you know, obviously playing here at Newcastle, I got to watch Andrew and Matthew Johns at training. Yeah, and that yeah. was a great lesson for a young halfback to, yeah. to come and watch him play at training and then turn that into a Sunday afternoon performance. Go to Melbourne and play a flat and fast style of football. Yeah. Um, different, different coaches. Uh, I think you try and learn. I think it's like in life, I suppose. You try and take lessons from everywhere you've been and trying to grow and improve sometimes you get it wrong <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, well, hey, that's why they make erasers on pencils anyway so Parramatta take it forward and they give it away Moran now floats the ball beautiful to carriage wide to Butner Butner down the eastern touchline he will score bonus point Parramatta bonus point time they are humming oh yes 11 points to nil with a kick to come. What a start here for the Eels, Noddy. Yeah, it's been a great start, hasn't it? They've come out of the blocks, they're flying. We saw them play early against Penrith and win 24 points to seven. Michael Butner knows about the bonus zone because he was running down the sideline. Newcastle thought they were going to keep him out. They stopped running, so he went, you know what? I'll turn four into five. <laughs> and he's done it in spectacular fashion. Maroon. You'd be very impressed with the former North Sydney Bear and Parramatta Real Maroon with uh, the form of Michael Butner. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And he only took turn 46 a couple of weeks ago, did Butner. Uh, another well-liked guy in the game of rugby league. And, you know, a lot of them look as fit as they ever did. Few of them look fitter. I think Michael Butner actually looks fitter than he did when he was playing. And we've been wrapping him all tournament. And he gets a well-deserved try. He just looks very determined when he gets the ball, Maroon. It's, it's wonderful to see. So Matt Parsons will play it for Newcastle, a couple of metres short of the half. Badiris along the back line they go. Gidley now across the don't argue from Newton. He goes over the halfway line. Newcastle playing here, needs some points on the board. Badiris away to Gidley. Gidley, this Parramatta side defensively have lifted. Coach Ray Price has certainly uh, taught them some lessons here. As it comes down the back there for Parramatta. And they will play it nicely through Ben Smith. And he'll play it a couple of metres out of the uh, in-goal area. Moran from acting half. Along the back line it goes. And they play it through the middle. Nicely through Witt. He'll play it a couple of metres short of the quarter. Moran. And now Parramatta take it forward and bring it to that quarter line. So looking good at the moment. The Eels, 13 points to nil over Newcastle. Away to uh, Witters. 
he will play it a couple of metres short of the half. From acting half, it's Moran who will put a, a kick downfield. Chance, there's a chance this could bounce in favour of Parramatta. And it's oh. picked up but then lost by the 16 in Smith. And uh, they've made a meal of it. So 13 points to nil, about 90 seconds to go before the break. Yeah, it, that was just that wind, the, the havoc of the wind. The kick looked like it was going to go way down to the try line and it just stops. And Kibley was out of position. If they were able to pick up their Parramatta, they might have got another try, which would be a big lead at half time. Already 13 nil up. Now, Maroon, your sideline, Newcastle, they're the comeback kings. Can they do it in the second half? Well, I don't know, mate. 13 nil Parramatta. They've really come out and just put on the old blitzkrieg here, the Eels. Uh, they would have known they've gone into this game not as favourites, but when they've got down the right end of the field, they've made you know they've uh, they've made points out of it. So, and, and there's another missed opportunity there for Newcastle. I think I'm changing, mate. I think Parramatta's going to win this one. Yeah, they certainly looked the goods in the first half. About 40 seconds to go before the break. I'm going to go to war with Maroon because when we're in the trenches, it's just going to jump on me. Oh, I've known and he's the, going to go for the opposition. I've known the bloke 20 years. I don't need to even think oh. about that decision. <laughs> <laughs> so now Parramatta. They are on the defensive as Newcastle take it infield. Badiris away to Newton. Newton will play it inside the quarter. Oh, Two more tackles maybe. They've got to score Newcastle. Which way do they go, Noddy? Gidley. Not the sideline way. They go towards the western side. Now it's Badiris. They go towards the eastern side. The kick into the in goal area. Chris Space. Houston. Oh, oh, just out of the reach of Houston. And it goes into touch. So the clean sheet remains for Parramatta. And a really entertaining half of rugby league. 13 points to nil in favour of Parramatta over Newcastle. An upset on the cards here, ladies and gentlemen. Big game in the scheme of things as we take a look at the replay of that last little passage of play. Houston, oh, geez, one bounce too many I think and it's knocked into touch so we'll go down sideline with Maroon and he's down there now Newcastle Knights there we've got Luke Burt with us mate great first half from you yeah got lucky with that uh, charge out from Gids and because uh, he, he would have scored going the other way so I got lucky on that one and no one, I'm just glad no one was chasing me yeah but I was just saying like you ran 60 metres you had the smile on your face as soon as you picked the ball up yeah it's only because there was no quick bikes chasing me <laughs> mate you're a local boy you grew up in Newcastle how'd you end up in Sydney I just as a junior got recruited down there by Noel Coyle down at the Eels and um, you know, going down there and being a Parramatta Eel for, for my whole career. So yeah, just un unfortunate to leave Newcastle. I always uh, call Newcastle home, but Parramatta's my side. Righto, mate. And what about your coaching career now? Yeah, it's plugging away. It's had a little bit of a stall at the moment, but we'll get back into it. Righto, mate. Good luck in the second half. There he is, Luke Burt, enjoying Legends of League. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Maroon. 13 points to nil. There is your scoreline at halftime between Parramatta and Newcastle. Will the Eels continue this dominance and get the upset victory against the hometown boys in Newcastle? Or can the comeback Kings do their thing in the second half? We'll take a break. You're watching all the action of the Legends of League tournament for 2019. A break and back with more. And welcome back to all the action of the Legends of League tournament here at McDonald Jones Stadium. And uh, a little bit of a loss of possession there. So 13 points to nil if you've just joined us in favour of Parramatta. Bit of an upset so far, Noddy, in this contest. Yeah, an upset at the moment on the scoreboard. We we did certainly think Newcastle at the start of the game. I think if Parramatta are able to score here, I'm going to be like Maroon. I'm going to change my tip as well. <laughs> <laughs> Maroon, you are sideline. Can Parramatta keep going? Well, you know me, you're bagging me up there because I changed my tip. I'm in radio, mate. I, I change my story, I backstab, <laughs> I white ant, I do all that stuff. But, boys, maybe Parramatta are going to go over here and maybe put this one to bed. They lead 13 0. Oh, it might have been just out of reach on that occasion. 
And Stephen Clark says no try. So Newcastle will come back to the quarter line for the quick tap and go. And Ty gives the ball across field nicely to Todd Lowry. And now the Knights play it in the middle of McDonald Jones Stadium. And now Newcastle play it forward. Good wrap-up effort there from John Williams for the Eels. Nice work from Dean Witters as well in defence. Ty along the back line. Gives the ball across field to uh, the eight there in Craig Smith. Plays it a couple of metres short of the quarter line. Brad Ty from dummy half along the back line. Work to do for the Knights. Good work and good ball to O'Davis there. And they uh, try and move it nicely here, the Knights, inside that attacking quarter zone. Along the back line it goes. Away to Smith. Smith will take it forward for Newcastle. Looking for first points in this one. Seven to go before full time. Ty from dummy half. Goes himself, pushes his way through. Carriage is strong with defence close to the line. And it will be a turnover there, Noddy, close to the line, but a better effort there from Newcastle. Yeah, better set of six from Newcastle. A couple of times Brad Ty got, gets the ball. He looks extremely dangerous, but great defence from Parramatta. You know, desperation there to hang on and, and not concede a try. Ray Price is their coach. We saw him on the sideline. He's obviously instilled some of that toughness in him this year. Yeah. Oh, any tougher and he'd rust, Ray Price. My goodness, a very solid player for Australia, New South Wales, and of course Parramatta for all those years and the premierships they had in the 80s. As Witters takes it forward, away to Butner. Timmy Manor. Manor Timmy is Manor's got striding out down the middle. He is flying quicker than Usain Bolt. And uh, Houston put it, put it into touch. Maroon sideline. Have you seen Timmy Manor gallop faster than that? I tell you what, mate, he was the Lebanese Express there, wasn't he? <laughs> the only thing that could get there before him was Chrissy Houston. I tell you what, of all the players out there today, the one that the crowd are saying, who is that? It's the number six for Parramatta, Dennis Moran. Only played about 35 games for the Eels, but went on to play over 200 in the English Super League. And great to see him back having a run with the Legends of League. Number six for Parramatta. Keep an eye on him, a bloke by the name of Dennis Moran. So, Reddy plays it. And he will go into the attacking zone as Hindmarsh now from acting half. He gets a beautiful ball to Witters. And now Parramatta along their back line. They give it to Ben Smith. And Smith now goes towards the try line. Hindmarsh from dummy half catches the napping. And he plays it a couple of metres short of the try line on the western side. Smith along the back line to Reddy. Reddy holds up the pass, tries to get it away now. Witters can't take it. Good tackle over the top there from the Knights. Inside the attacking zone now. Witters from acting half. Gives the ball away. Smith, ball to Hindmarsh. And Parramatta score not only a try, but a bonus try. And they are absolutely buzzing at the moment. Yeah, we heard Maroon mention about it. Everyone in the comment in the sideline chats is all about bonus point, bonus zone. They've figured it out now. Nathan Highmarsh said he needed to lift his performance. Said the last two years he's been poor. He's lifted his performance. This is a big play here. This is a big play to run around. Chance of going over the dead ball line there. Score. Now they're 20 points to nil up. I'm with you, Maroon. I'm on Parramatta too. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, it's going to be good to see Heidi maybe win something major in a blue and gold jersey. We're going to love that. <laughs> what? But, what? I, don't, I don't understand that. Why does everybody give it to Nathan Hindmarsh about it? Because he didn't win a comp. I know. They're very hard <laughs> to win. I'd have no clue. I, I struggle to call the game, let alone play it. But I, I find it hilarious. Anyway, now Parramatta along the back line. Robson gets the ball away to Reddy. It's play on. And Reddy, of course, out of that very famous family. Rocket Reddy. He knocked himself out in the 77 grand final, didn't he, Maroon? Well, I hate to correct you on air, but I think you'll find that was Teddy Goodwin. Oh, yes. It was Lord Ted. <laughs> Maybe that was the replay. Anyway. I, I think we're going to start giving you an HIA before you commentate, old mate. <laughs> That's a fair call. Tough but fair. Now Robson plays it inside the attacking zone. Along it goes to Butner. Wide it goes. Beautifully picked by Reddy. Reddy now. Close to the sideline. Back through the middle. Nice little kick. Chip chase. Couldn't quite get it. Newcastle bring it off their line through Badiris. Wide it goes. And now they play it along their back line and it goes to Craig Smith and he's tackled a couple of metres outside the in-goal area. Badiris now to Ty. Ty 
He plays it short of the quarter line. 20 points to nil. Noddy, would you have predicted a scoreline like this? Yeah, Maroon and I did. Maroon and I at the start of the game. If he, he, you probably can't rewind live streaming, so we'll be all right. But we definitely predicted that Parramatta would have a big win. Okay. Agree, well, Maroon? 100%, mate. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love the loyalty here. Now it goes across the field. Oh, mate, my brother on the sideline's got my back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not over yet, Noddy. It's not over yet. Well, Newcastle, they're doing their best to just get some points here. The chip chase away. Goes to Smith. Charges up the middle. And gets some valuable metres inside the opposition territory. Two and a half to go before full time. Badiris from dummy half. Wide it goes to uh, the centre there in Newton. And now it comes back and, and they run out of the tackles there. So it'll be another set of six for Parramatta. 20 points to nil. Maroon, the last time Parramatta led 20 nil in any game, I think was the 86 major preliminary against Canterbury at the <laughs> SCG. Oh, mate, now you're going to start jumping into them, are you? I had to get it in there because I stuffed up Teddy Goodwin. <laughs> yeah, Lord Ted's definitely the man that got knocked out in the 77 grand final. <laughs> so they play it to the quarter line. And now Robson will go from acting half. He gives the ball away to Winners, determined to pass. Oh, this is beautiful from Parramatta. Smith down the touchline. He will absolutely gallop away. This is brilliant from Williams. And he gets a bonus try as well. Oh, that's beautiful rugby league from the Eels. Noddy, 25 points to nil with a kick to come. Yeah, they've certainly put on a masterclass. They've played the second game of the match where they beat Penrith 24 points to seven. They've had to wait till game six for us to see him again. Game six, they come out. Remember we said the first set of six, like they're flying. Yeah. They've come out and just found their niche. Now they've got a couple of bonus, bonus zone tries, a couple of conversions. Kept Newcastle to zero and lead 25 points to nil. The biggest margin. It is now. It was 21-0. Yeah. That was last year, Canterbury and Parramatta. And Parramatta were on the losing side. So they now set the record for the biggest winning margin. And there was one earlier in the day, I think it was the Parramatta game against Penrith, where they uh, really put on some points. Yeah, they won by 17 points on that occasion earlier in the game. This time they're going to win by 25 at the moment. How do, Newca how do Newcastle now bounce back from this big loss going into a semi-final? Jeez, Maroon, your sideline. Uh, Parramatta, they've had two wins over their cousins Penrith, and now... They'll get the victory over Newcastle. They could be playing Canterbury in the final a little later today. I tell you what, mate, they have looked impressive too. And that chap we were talking about, Dennis Moran on the right side, then he got a beautiful ball away to the winger. So a couple of great ball players in this uh, Parramatta side. Mate, they could go all the way, but I still think the dogs have got their measure. Well, that's good hands oh, from your Good man. play. And oh, Parramatta <laughs> has stopped. Smash. <laughs> He brought the entire Hunter to their feet in 97 when he scored Maroon. I think he's done the same with that bit of defence. Yeah, unbelievable. Desperation in defence there, and there was really nothing on the line there, boys. And Parramatta, 25 points to nil over Newcastle. We'll grab one of these players. So come back to me shortly. I'll go and fish one of them out. Look at this for a shot. This is great play. We, we, Dennis Moran does a little flick pass up the short side. Oh, that's beautiful. Like Michael Witt is wrapping around. And Robbie O, don't worry about the shoulder charge being outlawed. Boom. <laughs> oh, no, oh. We'll, we'll call that a fair tackle. No, that's a legal well, that's a, hit. That's a legal shot. The smallest, one of the smallest players here at the stadium, laughing. <laughs> he stands, he was standing over him as like it was a big front row and just smash someone. Robbie O, tackle of the tournament. Tip Street will say, don't run at his left shoulder. It'll smash you. Well, there you go. So that is a massive upset in this tournament. Parramatta putting on the points. Mr. Perpetual Motion, Ray Price, the coach, he has done wonders for the blue and gold in 2019. And the next semi-final will be Canterbury and Newcastle. And then it's Parramatta and Brisbane. Noddy, oh, is the mouth watering? No, how good. I get so excited this time because they, they get desperation. We're starting to see in this game, desperation, big shots, tries, teams working each other out. Now you get the semi-final, like, oh, no, hey boys, we've gone this far, let's win it now. We're not losing now. No. We're not losing now. No. So we will join Maroon sideline in just a moment. He's just trying to work out which player to uh, chat to. But what a performance from Parramatta. 25 points to nil 
in favour of them. And we'll go sideline now. And Maroon is down there with the great Owen Craigie. Owen play. I was on the working on the radio at 2NZ in Varel. He was playing in the local comp and everyone said, this kid is going to play first grade one day. Oh, your career started here at Newcastle. Yeah, look, it started in the uh, you know, early 90s and um, I was very lucky to play with boys like Joey and Matty and Chief and all those guys, so I'm uh, very fortunate. Joey and Matty rack you big time. Of all the players they've played with, they talk about your skill set. Yeah, look, um, it's, it's a big rap, you know, especially coming from them boys, you know, like they're... Uh, uh, Joey's ace of mortal, and you know, he's, he was that good. He changed the way teams defended and attacked, you know, and um, yeah, it's a big rap. So, you started out here at Newcastle as a kid. You went on to the West Tigers. You finished your, your NRL career at the Rabbitohs, mate. But you had a wonderful career, and you still give back. I see you around Redfin a lot, doing a lot of different things. Yeah, look, I, um, I debuted here as a 16, 7 year old kid, you know, but I retired at 26. So, Cody Walker, he debuted at 26, you know, and I played Origin, so, um, a lot of my success comes from my juniors as a schoolboy and playing with all these uh, the big guys and that. But yeah, I went to England for a little while, but uh, back in Newcastle now, I'm loving it. I hope life's good for you, mate. Yeah, look, life's good, brother. I've got my kids here with me today and some friends and family, so I'm blessed. Good on you, mate. It's great to see you running around in the night's gear again. Yeah, thanks. And a good crowd too, so it's awesome. There he is. I love that guy. Owen Craigie here joining us for Legends of League, catching up with a few of his old mates. I tell you what, we've all got first world problems today here at the Legends of League. Hope you're having fun. Yeah, absolutely, Maroon. It is a superb day, and now we are down to the pointy end of the pencil. Semi-final time, semi-final one. It'll be Canterbury taking on Newcastle, and then semi-final two, Parramatta taking on Brisbane. Noddy, who wins both semis? Who's in your grand final? Well, I think Canterbury is still the team to beat. We, they've gone back-to-back -back premiers. They, they defend extremely well. Desperation will come into now in the semi-finals. They've got a great kicking game which I think will play importance in the next two games. Uh, the kicking game and the ability to score tries with pace. Uh, so I think they will beat Newcastle. And then I'm not sure about the second game. Parramatta just totally surprised me right then. They were so, so good. And I, I now I'm going to lean in favour of Parramatta in, in, in the semi-final too. So that'll put me into a Canterbury versus Parramatta grand final. Ooh. I played against them in 09 semi-final, grand yeah. final qualifier. The, the, home, plane was coming, the yep. home plane was flying at the end of the game. They won nine in a row to get to the grand final. The best atmosphere I've ever been a part of. Half blue and white, half blue and yellow. 70,000 people at ANZ Stadium. Yeah. And we could have that for grand final here. Well, Canterbury could, versus Parramatta. Yeah, I, I'd be with you on that one. Canterbury taking on Parramatta. We've never had that final in this tournament. It was Canterbury Barbarians last year. Canterbury Newcastle the year before. Will it be Canterbury Parramatta? Will it be another combination? We will take a break. On the other side, all the action of semi-final one. It's the Bulldogs and the Knights here at the Legends of League. Back with more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Why World of Legends panel, and alongside me, uh, let's give it up nice and loud. The eighth immortal is in the house, Joey Johns. You know what? I reckon we can go louder. Let's give it up for Joey. Yeah, that's that's more like it. And what about this guy, the polar bear out of Palm Beach Grumman High School on the Gold Coast, two-time Premiership winner, 06 with the Broncos, 2015, one of the greatest grand finals of all time. Cowboys, their first Premiership, Danny Hannon. Let's welcome him, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I reckon that's lukewarm. Let's give it up to Ben Hannon. Yeah, more like it, more like it. All right, Joey, let's get cracking. First semi coming up very soon, and it's a replay of last year. Newcastle up against the Bulldogs. How do you see it? Uh, look pretty good, the, the Bulldogs. Uh, look pretty good, Willie Mason's teeth too. But uh, they're going to be hard to beat. Um, they were really good in the last game, Parramatta. They really defended well, but pretty much all the boys are saying, if you hold on to the ball, then pretty much you win. So that's a big challenge for Newcastle. But they look pretty hard to beat, the Bulldogs. Yeah, last year they had Terry Lamb as head coach, and Hazem El Nasri, second highest point scorer of all times, come in. And it looks like he's flicked a switch in 2019. Well, Hazem's coaching, is he? Yeah. Oh, good on him. But, uh, Actually, he tells me that that northeastern corner is El Nasri corner. Yeah. <laughs> Break our hearts that day, but Hazem. And uh, what about yourself, mate, the Knights? So a little bit of a hiccup. Do you see this 
maybe as revenge. You saw Canterbury last year in the semis. You played them in year one in the final. Maybe a chance to get some sweet revenge against the Dogs. Yeah, I think so. I think they, they hold on to the ball. They look pretty dangerous, our boys. Late in that game, they started offloading the ball. I think that's the key. If you can offload the ball around that middle of the field and then move the ball wide, it's pretty hard to stop. So maybe a few more offloads by the Newcastle boys will soon happen. The Polar Bear, second semi yourselves up against Parramatta. Now, Parramatta looking better than they have since 1986, and they're under Ray Price. What are your thoughts about the opposition? No, they're going really well, and we've never been in this situation. Broncos for the last two years have been knocked out before the semi, so we're in uncharted waters right now, but we're excited. Dell's had a big chat to us already. We're all pumped, and we know we've got to keep our width, move the ball around, and main thing, make sure we don't drop the ball. Vossi, Vossi mentioned earlier in commentary that Wayne Bennett's doing this via satellite from Papua New Guinea this afternoon. What has the great man, the seven-time Premiership winning coach, had to say? 92, 93, 97, 98, 2000, 2006, and 2010. Yeah, Longnecks had a few things down the way, got to us, and the main thing is same old, four roll kick, four roll kick, the old way they won back in 2000s and 06 and 97, 98. Yeah. Joey, you've got the, uh, I love the merch, the Mark Hughes Foundation hat on. Uh, Good, doesn't it? On, on a serious note, mate, uh, to this Newcastle crowd and every rugby league fan, uh, just incredible. So far, Legends of the League has raised over 40k for the foundation. Yeah, it's incredible. It's great. Not only people in Newcastle, but everyone in rugby league getting behind the Mark Hughes Foundation. Everyone knows what a, a champion Mark Hughes was and the challenges He's been through and uh, with the foundation he's raised an awareness and ultimately wants to get a cure for brain cancer. So we'll love everyone involved and in donating money and uh, Legends of the League, 40k or so. So uh, as she marks at the races at the moment, his horse is running in the million dollar race. So we might put that 40k on Mark's horse. Who should might turn on? into 400. Who do we get on? Well, we get on Mark's horse. So we can sort it out. 40 k is 10 to 1. What's that, 400 grand? What's the horse called? Tactical Advantage, is it? Tactical advantage, all right. And Mark will be back for the official presentation. We don't want to ask Joey this. Who do you think is going to win semi-final number one? 415, the mighty Bulldogs. Premiers in 38, 42, 80, 84, 85, 88, 1995 and 2004. Can they do a three-peak this afternoon? Well, if you speak to them, they're saying yes. They're full of confidence, they're cocky. I'd like to say no, but I, I just think they're too strong at the moment. They're, they're, they're big, they're strong, and they've got too many young blokes. Joey, second semi, Parra versus Brisbane. How do you see it? Oh, I was really impressed with Parramatta in that game. They, they defended really strong. Actually, Nathan White much creased a couple of guys. He was ripping in, so... Sorry, I'll probably have to go for Parramatta there. Mick yeah. Butner, too. Mick Butner was flying down the sideline. Yeah, fantastic, so, uh, fantastic bloke, Mickey Butner. Almost 270 NRL games. Played once for New South Wales, once for Australia as well. And also does a great job with a charity called Pass It On Clothing. If you get the chance, check that out. Time to wrap this up. I uh, just want to finish just by saying a huge thank you on behalf of everyone here today for the firefighters in New South Wales. They have been absolutely brilliant. That mid-north coast area has just been wiped out. So round of applause, everyone, for the firefighters, the job they've done in New South Wales. Thanks to Joey, the eighth immortal. Thanks to the polar bear, Benny Hannon. We're back with the semis very shortly. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve Allen. And we are getting ready for the semi-finals, as you heard in that pre-game preview. It's Canterbury taking on Newcastle in the opening semi-final. Then it's Parramatta and Brisbane. Will it be Canterbury and Parramatta, the old rivals from the 80s, going at it in the grand final? Or will we get a new combination? Or Canterbury, can they make it three in a row? We'll take a break here on the Legends of League. Stay with us. All the action of the semi-finals and grand final on the other side of this break. Ladies and gentlemen, Please make her welcome, her first track, doing Michael Jackson's The Way You Make Me Feel. Jamie Rasson. Hey, pretty baby, with your high heels on, you give me fever like I've never, ever known. You're just a product of lovely. Oh, I like the groove on you, walk your talk, your dress. I feel your fever from miles around. I pick you up in my car and we'll paint the town. Just kiss me, baby, and tell me twice that you're the one for me, the way you make me feel. You really turn me on. You knock me off of my feet. Too far. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Jamie Rasson. 
and her acoustic guitarist Matt Cross with some Stevie Wonder at the Legends of Lee 2019. First semi coming up very soon. The Canterbury Banks Town Bulldogs up against the Newcastle Knights. And here we go, we are getting set for the first semi-final of the Legends of League. There are the two teams on your screen. Canterbury, the two-time Premiers, going up against the hometown heroes, Newcastle Knights. This should be a superb clash. Luke Lewis joins me in the broadcast box. Louis, not a great day for you as a coach, but gee, hasn't it been a wonderful day for Rugby League? Yeah, definitely not a good start to the coaching career, but uh, <laughs> like it has been. it's been a wonderful day. Great to be here at Newcastle. The, the stadium is absolutely packed on this side of the field. Uh, the, the fans are loving it. It's been great to see all these uh, past players out there having a crack, and the games are really starting to ramp up as we get closer to the grand final. But this this match here should be a cracker. The Bulldogs, who obviously are the team to beat, and Newcastle in front of their home crowd, everyone's you know trying to get them home so if they can put in a good performance here. Who knows what could happen? Yeah, absolutely. Going down to the Parramatta Eels, 25 points to nil in the uh, recent clash, and of course Canterbury can do no wrong at the moment picking up their first win over the Barbarians and then, of course, just being too good for Brisbane. So the winner here into the grand final. Can the Dogs get into their third? Or will Newcastle upset the apple cart? This is a huge game of football. The Bulldogs hoping to continue their winning streak. Newcastle looking to upset the party. We're underway. And the kickoff is a good one. Down to Brad Ty. He'll bring it out of his in-goal area. And geez, a solid hit there for the Bulldogs. And a nice one there from Roy Asatasi who puts him to ground. And now Newcastle play it through Gidley. They'll play it a couple of metres out from the line. Of course, Parramatta and Brisbane, the next semi-final. Houston takes it forward for Newcastle. Louis, the, the sound, the noise, it's just grown exponentially in this stadium. Yeah, absolutely, especially when Newcastle are out in the field. The fans are really trying to get them home and get them right into this match because they know they're up against it. But the, the Bulldogs have come out and set the tone early. But here they are, Newcastle. Yeah, down the sideline they go, the Knights, through Todd Lowry. They play it across towards the halfway. Gidley puts the kick downfield. Goes down towards Patton, who takes it beautifully. Nice little recovery away to Tonga. Willie Tonga, four on four. Brad Ty on Willie Tonga. And now Canterbury go from dummy half. And they play it through Tony Grimaldi. Rennie Matua away to Tonga. Holds up the pass, tries to get it away. Badiris just came over the top there. Nice defensive effort from him. So too Chris Houston. Bobcat Ryan, he goes from dummy half. Mark O'Mealy, who picked up a try earlier today. He plays it about uh, 20 metres out from the line. Ryan away to Sherwin. Chance. Oh, Sherwin looks like he's in a bit of trouble there. Brad Ty, he picks up the pass. And Louis, the intensity, it's really lifted in this contest. Yeah, absolutely. And Newcastle have really got the upper hand here. They're on the front foot, had a really good set getting out of their own end, defended really well. But what I've noticed with the Newcastle Knights, it's the first time I've seen a team play with a fullback. And that's Kirk Gidley at fullback at the moment. They're looking dangerous. So they're a couple of metres out from the line. Now they go from Badiris. Puts the, oh, no, look, kick into the in-goal area. Tapped away by John O'Reilly. Jeez, Canterbury, they're under enormous pressure at the moment, aren't they? This is the most I've seen them under the pump this early in the game too. Yeah. So it's a good start for Newcastle. So they were rattled a little bit in their uh, contest against Brisbane. They picked up the win by seven points. But it was really bonus tries that got them there. And uh, let's hope Sherwin was okay because he looked a little injured in that initial contest. He's just making his way off the field now. Let's hope everything's all right with that ankle. As now he comes back, Newcastle, Gidley, and plays it just outside the halfway tie from dummy half away and along the back line onto newton newcastle now move it beautifully through craig smith they'll play it a couple of meters short of the quarter line from dummy half it's badiris good short ball there to adam Woolno. Woolno's lost the football in the contest and uh, canterbury will get possession on the quarter line winner into the grand final can canterbury make it three in a row or will the uh, Knights get themselves into the grand final. It was Canterbury and Newcastle in the grand final in 2017, Louis. And Newcastle, they missed out by a point, 11 to 10, in the semi final last year. So plenty to play here for for the Knights. Oh, absolutely. And it's a, it's a massive occasion. Obviously, all money raised today goes to the Mark Hughes Foundation. It'd be great to see Newcastle get in there 
before that, but they've got a big task in front of them. But so far, they've stood up to the test. So a good kick down into open pasture, and it's picked up there by Newcastle. Oh, dangerous pass in the in goal area. Robbie O breathes a big sigh of relief. Andrew Ryan, he was all over it. And the ball's gone into touch. Neither side has scored here, Louis, but my goodness, it's just a case of nerves for both teams. Yeah, oh, I think so. They're absolutely, they know what's on the line here. There's a grand final berth here. So, yeah, look, the Bulldogs didn't have the best start. The Newcastle Knights defence there, well, they need to hold up strong here because they're very good, the Dogs, when it get this close in this sort of field position. So Feeney now has the ball, and O'Mealy just goes into O Davis and goes bang. Now they take it forward through Big Willie. He pops the pass. Basketball to Tonga. Now they come away. Willie Tonga away from one. And he goes towards the touch line, and he's gone into touch. He's gone into touch on the western side. So Newcastle now will regain possession. Four and a half to go before half time. Still a team yet to score. I think. Uh, it was a couple of games ago, Louis, that a team hadn't scored yet, but this seems to be a, a bit of a pattern as we get closer and closer to that grand final, Louis. Just teams not scoring for a little while into the game. Yeah, well, for starters, these these two teams here, they've been probably the best you know sides out on the park. And obviously the Broncos in the next game as well. So, look, it's going to be a lot harder to score tries. I know what's on the line, and it's all coming down to the fence. And at the moment, Newcastle's defence holding up, and the Bulldogs' defence also has been excellent. But... It's just going to take one miss you know, for someone to get on the scoreboard and they're going to be chasing their tail from there. When it comes to the coaching, how have you enjoyed the challenge? Oh, you know what? It was, it was a bit different, obviously. Uh, you know, you're just down there with the boys and they're just sort of putting their hand up willy-nilly and wanting to come off. Yep. We didn't get together too much, but uh, yeah, it was really enjoyable. And good to be out there with the, with the blokes that uh, we got to win a grand final with way back in 2003. So yeah, absolutely. Can't complain. Penrith in 03 and Cronulla in 2016. You beat a... 50-year record as Andrew Ryan just storms through the hole. He goes towards the try line. Still going, Bobcat. Pops the pass away. Yes, it's a try. Canterbury have scored. Daniel Holdsworth, the man. And the Bulldogs have broken the drought. Four points to nil with a kick to come, Louis. Yeah, well, there it was. It was just going to come down to one little error in defence. And it was a beautiful bit of work and a bit of play there by Andrew Ryan. It was just a nice, simple show and go. Good footwork. Holds the ball in two hands. Beautiful little dummy to Willie Mason. I thought he was going to go the whole way himself. At first, I thought he might have stuffed it. And there's DJ, Daniel Holdsworth, comes through, scores and plants the ball down right next to the bonus zone. Doesn't get the bonus try. But they're in it, they're back in front, the Bulldogs, and they're going to be hard to run down. Jeez, I reckon that try is almost worth five points in a way, given that it's come so late in the game. Yeah, absolutely. You're spot on. There's only two, and a, two minutes and 45 seconds to go, and it's going to be hard to score against this Bulldog side. So Newcastle, they've looked flashy in the opening stands up, and they've got some work to do to get themselves back in it. As it goes away along their back line. And it's Craig Smith that takes it. So six points to nil in favour of Canterbury, the defending Premiers. Looking good to get into a third grand final. Gidley with a kick downfield. He's kicked early in the tackle count. The Knights players are chasing. Tonga's got the football for them. Tries to work around one, but brilliant defence from Kurt Gidley. That's great from him. He kicked the ball just short of the quarter. He's galloped downfield and made the first tackle. Yep, smart play there too by Gidley. He knows he has to get the ball down the other end. Hope that the Bulldogs make a mistake. That was a big chase as well. Comes up with the tackle on Willie Tonga. But Newcastle, they've got to do... They've got to get through this defensive set and not give too many metres away. So Canterbury play it a couple of metres short of the line, halfway. It's Grimaldi, Sherwin, good ball to Rennie Matua. Matua almost had Utah and Feeney on the left-hand side. Now they come back towards the middle of the field and it's Sherwin that puts a torpedo kick. O'Davis takes it as happy as you like. Now he gets it away to Gidley. A good tackle over the top from Grimaldi puts him to ground. Newcastle under some pressure here. So now they charge it through O'Davis. And now along the back line, they play at Newcastle. And they will play it through the 16 in Matt Hilda. Along the background, they go. Now it comes away to Smith. And he will play it in field. And now towards the touch line, and he'll play it a couple of metres short of the halfway line. So it's Badiris from dummy half. On to Houston. Wide it goes. Now to Gidley. Over the top, good tackle from Roy Asatasi. Did not miss with that one. Now Newcastle through the middle. They move it beautifully through Daniel Abraham. And they'll play it right on the halfway line. They take it forward now. And it'll be Todd Lowry that goes into opposition territory. Penalty to Newcastle. 
Louis, this is a crucial time in the game. Newcastle, they look like they've got Canterbury on the rack. Yeah, absolutely. They need to try and keep the ball alive here. They need to get across the line. Canterbury are breathing in and sucking in the big ones at the moment. Here it is. Oh, oh Padiris. Almost there. He holds his feet. He's over there. He'll play it quickly. Wide to Gidley. Out nicely. Oh, Davis. He brought the Hunter to their feet 22 years ago, and he's done it in 2019. And that gets us back 6-4 with a kick to come. They needed that, Louis, and they needed it big time. Yeah, they really did need that. And that was a beautiful bit of work there by Danny Badiris coming out of dummy half. Gets up, gets a nice play of the ball. They get the ball to Kirk Gidley, who's the man to get the ball there in that position. Spins out of a tackle, finds Robbie o. Davis. Pearl over try. They're right back in this game, Newcastle. So that is half time in this contest. What a semi final we've got on our hands between the Bulldogs and the Knights. Six points to four. The winner goes through to the grand final. Who will it be? Will it be the Bulldogs for the third time or will it be the Knights for the first time in two years? We'll find out on the other side of this break. Well, welcome back to McDonald Jones Stadium and what a semi-final we've got on our hands here. Six points to four in front of the defending premiers. Will they make their third grand final or can the Newcastle Knights jump into their first grand final since 2017? Well, they went down to Canterbury 10-6. John O'Farr and Luke Lewis, your commentary team for this one. Louis, can the Bulldogs do it again for the third time? Or will Newcastle come back and get into the grand final? Yeah, well, so far Newcastle have really got back into this game. A crucial try there by Robbie O'Davis just before half time. But they're going to be hard to beat the Bulldogs, but they've got every chance to really upset this Bulldog side. So Canterbury take it forward and they play it nicely through Dean Hallatow, who scored a great try earlier in the day. Sherwin, now O'Mealy. Shrek takes it forward and plays it a couple of metres short of the halfway line. So now the Bulldogs looking a little dangerous as it goes away to Sherwin. Got a nice pass there from center and Dean Hallatow over the halfway they go on Hallatow now away to Holdsworth kick down field Grimaldi puts it beautiful hands with Gidley moves away from one passes to Robbie O and O Davis is well read in defense there by the 14 in Brad Moran so they'll play it a couple of meters out from their try line now from dummy half the Knights take it forward they play it through Daniel Abraham. A couple of metres short of the quarter line. Six points to four in favour of the Bulldogs. Now Ty with the ball. Plays the ball short. Louis, what have you spotted out there? Uh, just watching Robbie o. Davis in the background. Looks like he might have done something to his hamstring. He's coming straight off the field, so hopefully he's all right. Yeah, we saw Sherwin come off the field earlier. He's back on, so let's hope uh, Robbie O joins us in just a moment. He joins us for the grand final if the Knights can get there as Gidley puts the kick downfield. The chase is enormous. They are coming. Newton is coming. Holdsworth picks it up in the in goal area. And he will play it just out. Well, that must have been centimetres in that one. That was as Tonga huge, plays it. That was a huge play there by Daniel Holdsworth. He gets back there. He almost knocks it on. And then has the initiative just to get the ball out. 
And the Bulldogs are on a counter-attack here. Asatasi on to Ryan. Ryan now works his way, intercepted. Taken by Newcastle. Away, no, they drop the football. Oh, it could have been a miracle play from Daniel Abraham. And you heard the crowd lived here at McDonald Jones Stadium, Louis. Yeah, they were holding on to that one. That would have been a massive, that would have been the biggest you would have heard all day if Newcastle got away and scored there. And they would have been hard to run down with only six minutes to go. And they gave the ball back to the Bulldogs. They've got to have a big defensive set here. Well, it's game on in this semi-final. And we've got six and a half to go. The winner to the grand final. And they'll play either Parramatta or Brisbane. That's your next semi-final in this Legends of League tournament for 2019. Hope you're enjoying it, whether you're watching on KO, the Legends of League website, the Facebook site, or, of course, NRL.com. Great to have your company on this Saturday afternoon. Patton takes it forward for Canterbury. He plays it in opposition territory. Couple of metres short of the quarter. Ryan from dummy half. Sherwin now plays it. Tries to get the ball away. Ryan picks up the scraps. Gives it to Rennie Matua. Matua now to Mason. Mason now stepping. Beautiful back to Ryan. The Bulldogs are oh, the step and the show and go. And Andrew Ryan scores his third bonus point try of the day. Louis Canterbury. They can do no wrong. Yep, well, they've been on song all day. And this is just the way that they've been playing. A beautiful little... Uh, Pick up here from Sherwin. He knows he has to get it wide. I'm sorry, it was Andrew Ryan. Gets it straight to Rennie Matua. Sees big Willie Mason unmarked out wide. Beautiful little bit of footwork. Nice little right hand flick to, to find Andrew Ryan, who's always pushing up in support. And he just does a little in and away. He scores in the bonus zone, and they're going to be hard to run down now. Five minutes to go. 13 points to four. It's going to be a tough one. Matthew Gidley, fend and flick. Yeah, how good. Jeez. Willie Mason, hasn't he played well? He was, uh, we saw vision of him earlier in the day. He was ready, pumped up. That was before their clash against the Barbarians and they beat them 32 to 13. He was doing a lot of research during the, during the uh, last couple of weeks as well, trying to find out any new inclusions into the side. And he's turned up today. He's had a pearl of a, of a day in this uh, tournament. And having a cracker here this afternoon as well. As Brad Ty brings it back for the Knights and it's been wonderful to have them in from the mountain as a part of the tournament. First time for them. So great to have them as a part of the Legends of League tournament. Let's hope that continues for Penrith as Houston takes it forward. Good tackle there from the Bulldogs over from Brad Moran. They played a couple of metres short of the quarter. Away to Badiris. And nicely there, the Knights play it through the six. And uh, that is Sean Rudder as they play it along the back line, the Knights. Back it comes. Nicely worked there to the 19 and Adam Woolno. We'll play it a couple of metres short of the halfway line. Badiris from dummy half. Short ball and a good one to Craig Smith. And he'll play it just in a standing tackle near the halfway line. Badiris from dummy half looking for something. Had uh, the man in Todd Lowry on his left didn't go there. It's a little offside, so didn't pass it. And now Smith will take it forward. He plays it, pops the pass. Newcastle continue the play. Good ball from Houston. Houston now to Newton. Newton, basketball pass. Owen Craigie. Craigie back into Gidley. Gidley to Craigie. Magnificent hands. Goes away. Oh, this is beautiful football from Newcastle. They are playing it a couple of metres short of the line. Wide they go. Gidley, chance out wide. Can oh. they get it? Oh, is it a try? Is it a try? Held up. Adam Woolno's held up, Louis. Yep, I think oh. if, he had, if he had his time again, Woolno would have just put his head down, gone straight to the corner, tried to put a little bit of footwork on, but the scramble defence shown there by the, by the Canterbury Bulldogs was just spot on. There was four players there over in that corner to stop that try. Oh, it's been intercepted by Matty Utai. Yeah, but it's caught in the end goal, so it'll come back to the quarter line. Well, a try there, Louis. It might have made things very interesting in this contest. Yeah, they really need to get across the line there, get some points on the board if they wanted to make something of this game. You now the, the dogs have got to be smart about it. Just move the ball downfield, get to a kick and defend it well. It's going to be hard to score a full field try in this tournament at the moment. Asatasi now plays it in the middle of McDonald Jones Stadium. From dummy half, they go through Grimaldi. He goes wide. And Shepard. Shepard there. So that's a perfect opportunity for Newcastle. Still plenty of time. Jeez, this is very reminiscent to their semi-final last year where they went down 11-10. And it was judged a forward pass to Matt Cross and that would have been the game winner. Can Newcastle come from everything to something? Ball goes back. Badiris 
Wide it goes. Nice little Woolno. Woolno with a don't argue on John O'Wright. And he goes inside the quarter line. Chance out wide on the western side. As now it takes it back. Oh, knocked into touch there by Wright. It'll be Newcastle for another set of six. Lowry will get possession. They're not mucking around here. 90 seconds to go. 13-4. Can Canterbury hold on? Houston away to Gidley. Gidley with a show and go. Oh, a bit of miscommunication there from the Knights. There might be a bit of claret in this one. A nice little head clash. So, Big really Mason's hit the deck. Yeah, Mason hit the uh, the 15 for Newcastle. And that is Billy Peden, who scored the first try in the 0-1 grand final against Parramatta. And now Jamie Feeney takes it forward. So... Mason's come from the field. Can you see any claret there? No, nah, he looks all right. He looks all right. He's a tough bugger, Mason. Look at the size of him. He's a big human oh, being. Oh, I don't want to owe him money or upset him. <laughs> As now they play it forward. Grimaldi, Holdsworth, back to O'Mealy. O'Mealy plays it on the halfway line. 13 4. The Bulldogs looking to their next grand final appearance. They played Newcastle in 2017. They played the Barbarians in 2018. And they will play either Parramatta or Brisbane in 2019 as the ball comes back away and into open field. It'll come back for the general to pick it up. Luke Patton, Holdsworth calling directions. And Todd Lowry puts him to ground. What a semi-final here, Louis. It's Canterbury again in the grand final for the Legends of League. Yep, been a really good game here between Newcastle and the Canterbury Bulldogs. It's just their defence has been spot on, the Dogs, and their scramble defence to save that try in that corner on Adam Woolno. It just goes to show how much it means to them, how much they've trained for it, and they don't want to let that trophy go. They want to hold for three years in a row, and it's a really good performance there by the Bulldogs. So now it goes to Smith. Smith inside the opposition territory. Ren Rennie Matua drags him down. That is the full-time siren. A great performance from the men in the white and the blue. And they've done it again. They've made the grand final for the Legends of League. They were victorious 10-6 over Newcastle. They were victorious 27-14 over the Barbarians. And now they'll play either Parramatta or Brisbane in the grand final. Anthony Maroon, you are sideline. What have you made of this contest between the Bulldogs and the Knights? are odds on to make it a uh, three-peat but they are absolutely right across the park they look so fit Roy Asatasi, Willie Mason and uh, Matt Utai etc etc but look we say goodbye now for the afternoon to a Newcastle Knights legend I speak to the one and only Danny Badiris who's had so much with the origin success of New South Wales over the last couple of years and here he is Bedsy mate what an afternoon you've had out here just you just never you never stop giving of yourself Bedsy no it's been another great afternoon this Obviously, years in succession, the Bulldogs are back-to-back -back champs, and I think Parramatta will be doing well to stop them again, but Parramatta was really good, and uh, the quality of the footy is getting more intense as the afternoon goes on, but I um, just want to thank everyone for coming, first and foremost, and uh, there's a lot of people that make this afternoon happen, there's a lot of staff here on the ground, thank the ball boys, there's plenty of ball boys, but uh, yeah, it's, it's always a good afternoon to be a part of. All right, mate. Well, uh, it would be lovely if we'll try and make it back here. Well, we'll be doing it again next year if we're here at McDonald Jones Stadium. I know the locals would love to see the Mighty Knights win it. Yeah, well, it's, we just have too many errors. Huh? You can see it. What sort of? Once you watch a bit of this Nines footy, you understand how crucial errors are at crucial times. But um, when you're playing against a team like the Bulldogs, they're very fast, fit, mobile, and uh, it's always a tough outing. Mate, I hope you're not having too many nights out with Joey Johns. Well, I had fun last night, so he's staying again tonight, I think, unless he cries himself to bed and goes home, but um, he's been there this afternoon. Mark Hughes, our coach for the first game, he, he wasn't here for the second and third. He's over watching his horse race, so his commitment to our team was, was waning at the end there. All right, Betsy, round of applause for him, ladies and gentlemen. He's a New South Wales origin, a Newcastle Knights legend. Absolutely. Good to catch up, mate. Cheers, Maroon. Thanks, everyone. Tough. There he is. We are getting closer and closer to the final here at the Legends of League.
Yeah, thank you, Anthony Maroon. Great job sideline right across the day. Well, that's the first semi-final done between Canterbury and Newcastle. The next one is Parramatta, Brisbane. Luke Lewis, Parramatta, they're coming off a win over Newcastle, 25 points to nil. And they take on a Brisbane side that's been pretty impressive today. Yeah, they have been uh, very impressive, the Brisbane Broncos. Uh, ben Hannett's been outstanding for yeah. me. He's been amazing. So, look, it's going to be a, t a really tough match. I believe that Parramatta will get away with this one. I think they've been probably the informed side, obviously besides the Canterbury Bulldogs. But to put 25 points on the Newcastle side, who just come out and put a really good performance in uh, against the Bulldogs, uh, I think it's going to be a tough, tough match for the Broncos. But if anyone's going to upset them, it's going to be the Broncos and Scotty Prince. I think his performance so far around the middle of the field, the way that he's been playing, you know, his control and setting up plays has been spot on. Yeah, absolutely. He's certainly directed traffic brilliantly. So there it is, Parramatta and Brisbane, your second semi-final. Which one of these teams is going to play the Bulldogs in the grand final? We'll take a break here at the Legends of League. Get a drink, get comfortable, but come back, whether it's KO, the Legends of League website, the Legends of League Facebook site, or NRL.com, because we've got an absolute barn burner between the Eels and Brisbane. That's on the other side of this break. And welcome back to McDonald Jones Stadium. Well, here we go for all the action of the second semi-final. This one between Parramatta and Brisbane, two teams that have been in superb form. John O'Farr and Luke Lewis, your commentary team for this one. Louis, Parramatta, we mentioned it in the break off air. They've scored 49 points and only let seven in. So this could be a, a points-a-thon for Parramatta. But Brisbane, they've been a side that's really impressed. They've been a surprise pack. I wasn't too sure what to expect from them, but some class uh, efforts from them all around the park. I'm really loving Tuki in the middle. He's been a crowd favourite here. But, yeah, to score 49 points in three games, or two games, sorry, and only let seven points in, they're going to be very hard to beat here. Yeah, so the Brisbane Broncos, they've scored uh, 25 points. 
had a narrow victory over the Barbarians to start things. And then a little bit later in the day, they faced off with Canterbury and they went down 17 points to 10. And uh, they're getting set in this opening stanza of the game as it goes to Prince. Away now to Lottie. Uh, in fact, it's uh, Wendell Saylor. And he will play it just short of the halfway line. And now Nathan Friend will go from acting half. Along to Ben Hannett. Back into Saylor. Now away to Prince. Prince brings the ball back and Brisbane, they play it nicely through David Stagg and he takes it over the halfway line. Nathan Friend now from acting half. Brisbane, probably the underdogs in this side as a good kick away there from Casey Maguire. And now Parramatta will bring it back. And they play it a couple of metres out. Maroon will go to you, sideline. Uh, your thoughts on this contest between Parramatta and Brisbane? Well, I tell you what, I think Parramatta are going to be hard to beat in this game. Look for Dennis Moran to come on and have a, a lot of influence in this game as well. But it's interesting, boys, when you look at the uh, tunnel action or behind the scenes here, opening few games, all the teams are getting around the banter, the laughs. But then we've got the finals time. The, the teams are just sort of huddling in uh, and talking amongst themselves. They're not sharing much with the other side. So it's starting to get a little bit more serious now, the old Legends of League. Yeah, we've certainly seen the intensity grow as now Butner puts the kick downfield. And Lottie Dakiri at the back wearing the 111 jersey. Bet you didn't think you'd see that number on a jumper, Louis. Yeah, not at all. I wonder what it represents, but it's... Uh yeah, it's good to see Big Dell out there. I was talking to him earlier in the tunnel and he was saying his hemis were starting to tighten up, but it's good to see him still out there and, and having a red-hot crack. So Minto now plays the ball for Brisbane. Winner to play Canterbury in the 2019 Legends of League Grand Final. That is next as Friend gives it on. Now Ben Hannett takes it forward. Player that's impressed Louis across this tournament. It's been impressive in Brisbane colours. Friend on to Prince, another player that's impressed today. Walker now. Looking like he hasn't lost a step. Now Parramatta have it through Butner. He's in some open space and he will score the first try. A great start for Parramatta. Maroon, you were bagging uh, Parramatta. Then you jumped on the bandwagon. How are you feeling now? Mate, I'm just about to run out to the souvenir shop and buy myself a Parramatta jumper. And I'm going to get Butner's <laughs> name written on the back. He has been on fire today, Mickey Butner. And what about the pace on the old bloke? Oh, unbelievable. Louis, I've never seen a man more determined today. He just gets that focused look on his face. Yeah, absolutely. He took the words right out of my mouth. Butner has been spot on from the from the start of the day. He's been out there. He's been had his hands in everything. He's been scoring tries, making breaks, kicking. He has been absolutely spot on. So, yeah, well done to, to Butner. It was a beautiful try there for Parramatta. So Parramatta get us back underway. So the conversion was unsuccessful, and it's four points to nil in this semi-final. Now Ben Hannett takes it back in the number 10 jumper for Brisbane. Wearing colours reminiscent of their premiership days in the early 90s when they beat St George. It's now Lottie Dakiri moves forward. Plays it a couple of metres out of the quarter line area. Friend from acting half onto Prince. Prince almost went to Walker. Now Prince through a gap. Prince, oh, had Tony Carroll, but didn't see him. Walker's calling for it, but Prince is coming. Puts the kick down the Western touchline. But it will go into touch, and the ball will go into the 14th row here at McDonald Jones Stadium. And four points to nil. Are you surprised with the scoreline, Louis? Yeah, well, if it wasn't for that little bit of a you know, mishap there from the, the Broncos, it, it probably wouldn't be 4 nil. But uh, that was a really nice play there by uh, Scotty Prince coming, around, coming across, showing and going. His running game's always been a massive attribute of his and puts in the, the right option, but just not the right... Uh, execution but yeah look at all and all it's been a pretty tight game so far this uh, tournament in this day has been played at a frenetic pace it's absolutely zipped away i hope you're enjoying the action whether it's on ko the legends of league website their facebook site or of course nrl.com john o'far luke lewis and maroon your commentary team for this one brett kamali has joined us across the day as now Parramatta just go into some open pasture and they move it beautifully through matty ryan and uh well, they've lost possession, and Brisbane now will take it. Play it just short of the quarter line. Four points to nil in favour of the Eels. Can they play their rivals Canterbury in the final? Can Canterbury win three in a row? Friend onto Prince. Now to Sims. Been really impressed with Ashton Sims today, Louis. Yeah, absolutely. He's, when you're standing next to him, he's a giant. He's a big man. He's just come back from overseas uh, in the Super League, and he's had a red hot crack here today. He's loving it, and uh, he loves the concept. And he says he'll be playing here as as much as he possibly can 
So hopefully uh, we can continue this uh, great Legends Elite competition over the next however many years. As Prince goes to Walker. Walker's been calling for it for the last couple of minutes. Now just getting away from a bit of defence. He's put to ground in opposition territory. That is the last, according to Sean Hampstead, the referee. Now it goes away to Prince. Wide out it goes. Nice little kick chase. Brisbane take forward, and it's Dennis Moran that picks it up. And he gallops away, puts the show and go. <laughs> and the Broncos through PJ Marsh. They try to put him in touch. And Dennis Moran, your hero, Maroon, he's gone into touch on the far side. Yes, yeah, a very rare mistake by uh, the great Dennis Moran. But, guys, what about the skill level on some of these blokes still? Some of them could still get a run with the Gold Coast Titans, I reckon, the way they're playing today. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's hope they go well or at least a bit better than Wooden Spooners under Justin Holbrook. As now Friend goes from dummy half, gives the ball away. And now Ben Hannett works his way through some traffic. On to Ashton Sims, the tallest man in rugby league. Gets it to Tony Carroll. Deceptively quick, Wayne Bennett called him at Red Hill once. And he plays it inside the attacking zone. Friend from dummy half. On to Sims. Sims wide to Prince. Prince got the ball back inside. Hindmarsh, haven't seen him move that quick for a long time. And it'll be a bit of a mess. Sean Hampstead will clean it up. Thoughts on the pace of this game so far, Louis? Yeah, I'm just watching how you can see, I'm looking at both sides and the players at the moment. You can see the fatigue factor really kicking in. It's just playing all these games and not being used to it. But, you know, both sides' legs are very, very heavy. It's just going to take a little bit of a second wind or just a little bit of a sniff. And they'll, uh, they'll get that um, that sore leg will be will be gone when it comes grand final time, I think. Oh, well, Canterbury or Parramatta or Canterbury or Brisbane. I know you love your history, Maroon. The last time I think Parramatta and Brisbane played in a semi-final was 2001. Well, uh, didn't they just play in a semi-final this year, though, Jono? Uh, yes, they did against... Oh, yes, they did. Yeah, well, what was that? 58 nil. 58 nil. It was a massive win. Oh. But guys, while I've got you, what about... How good is it to see big tons of Carroll again? Big Tony Carroll. He played almost 300 first-grade games. Obviously, a, a stint in the UK Super League. He's put a few pounds on, but the skill set's all there. But he's apparently been really good with the organisers, really getting involved in any way he can to make this concept work. Another player that we haven't seen for a long time. Great to see him out there today, Tony Carroll. Yeah, absolutely. Tundra and now Parramatta charging up the middle of McDonald Jones Stadium. And that's through Tim Robinson. He gets the ball away. And now Walker's got it on the eastern touchline. And they'll play it on the halfway. Too smart, Walker. Four points to nil. I reckon Walker could jump into a Broncos jersey next year. He's playing enormous today. Yeah, he looks very agile. Very good footwork. Gets across the field beautifully. And you, you could see him calling that. He's too smart. So Tony Carroll now plays it. And they go inside through Minto. Minto plays it near the quarter line. Dummy half, it's friend on to Prince. Now to Hannett. Oh, intercepted by Dennis Moran. Oh, Maroon's yes. hero is oh, galloping Dennis. away. Go Dennis side. Moran in open pasture. He will score. Oh, Maroon. The praise is deserved. Your hero scores the try. And it gets Parramatta to eight points to nil in this semi-final. Yes, don't worry, boys. I had a word to him before the game. <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. He scored a great try. And Maroon, when Dennis Moran got loose, here it is on the replay. He was jumping around like a five-year-old that's just heard he's going to Disneyland, Louis. <laughs> oh, how good. <laughs> Have your favourite player running away. What a beautiful intercept that was. It was actually shaping up really well there for the Broncos. He had to come up with that play. Otherwise, it was a beautiful little two-on-one. I think the Broncos could have got on the scoreboard, but, wow, it was a beautiful uh, piece of work there from Parramatta. And they put them out to 10-0. They're going to be hard to run down in the next nine minutes. Yeah, this will be a terrific uh, half of football. Maroon, you are sidelined down there. Who's with you on your left-hand side? Yeah, thank you, Jono. Thank you, boys. One of the great rugby league players in the modern era, Tim Manor. And, of course, Timmy, we thought we'd seen the last of you in a Parramatta jersey on, mate. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> um, yeah, it's some fun today. And um, let's see how we go. We're getting close to the big dance. You are getting close to the big dance. Let's talk about you for a minute, though. What happened? You were going to the West Tigers, and in the last minute you said, no, nah, bugger that. No, I wanted to stay because I wanted to get a chance to play with these boys. So if I left, I would have missed the opportunity to play the game. And you scored a try today, mate. You're getting, as you said, you're getting close to the big dance. But, I mean, we're only half-time. You've still got to... What's, what's going to be the game plan for the next couple of minutes? Yeah, Big Dino's got some uh, words of wisdom for us. So surely that's something very wise to tell us. It's hard to write now. 
and of course Timmy's of Lebanese descent mate how come you're not a, a hooker I mean we've got Robbie Farah and we've got Benny Elias and we've got George Nadir we've got, we've got Joey Thomas we've got all these great hookers why aren't you a hooker I wish mate um, I just can't pass the ball so it's stuck in the front row and it's good to see you thank you for the memories and, and, and wonderful uh, an illustrious career with your mighty eels there he is, what a legend, Tim Manor, part of the Parramatta squad for the Legends of League, doing so well out there today and doing it in the right spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, second half gets underway shortly. The Legends of League, we're loving it. Thank you, Maroon. We will take a break here on the Legends of League. Can Parramatta continue this dominance and build on their 10-point lead? Or will Brisbane come back and jump into the grand final to face the Canterbury Bulldogs? We'll take a break. On the other side, all the action of the second half. You're watching the 2019 Legends of League tournament here live from McDonald Jones Stadium in Newcastle. So welcome back to McDonald Jones Stadium. Here we go, all the action of the second half. Louis, can Parramatta continue their dominance or will Brisbane come back and jump into the grand final against the Dogs? Yeah, well, it's going to be hard for the, for the Broncos to get back into this game, but they've got to play pretty much the perfect nine minutes here. They've really got to take their opportunities when they get them, and they've got to move the ball around a bit more. At the moment, Parramatta, they're looking tired, but they're doing enough to get away with this win at the moment. So Scotty Prince gets us underway, and the ball's gone into touch. So the perfect start for Parramatta and a horror start for Brisbane. And, uh, well, that's not what the Broncos needed when they trail 10 points to nil. Andrew Simons is the coach, former cricketer, played 26 tests and, of course, 198 one-dayers. And uh, he played a bit of rugby league as well, Louis, of course, for the winner Manly Sea Eagles. He played in a, uh, against an All-Stars team. Uh, a couple of years ago and he was training with the Broncos when he was playing at Red Hill. Uh, he's a good man Andrew Simons, I was just having a chat to him downstairs as well and he wished he could be out there but he's done a bit of a plantar fascia in the bottom of his foot, oh. one of the sorest injuries you could have but uh, yeah, he's very disappointed he's not out there playing but uh, he's, so, he's so pumped just to be here. He loves his fishing Roy oh, how he's always out in the boat how good. catching fish so how can you not enjoy your fishing? Oh absolutely so Hindmarsh takes it forward now Robson on to Manor. Wide the Eels go. Nice little chip kick. Oh, Butner's fly. Oh. Oh, Maroon, you love that bonus try. Take us through your thoughts on that one. Well, I think they are just unstoppable at the moment. Uh, Mickey Butner is just playing with such intensity and such seriousness. And big Mark Tukey's been so good up the middle. Heine's finally going to see Parramatta win a major tournament. And I say that with all sincerity. They could go all the way here, the Eels. They're 17-0. I've just been speaking to uh, Portuguese rugby league legend Isaac de Goiz. He says if Parramatta win this one today, the Portuguese chicken burgers are on him. So line up, <laughs> you blokes. That was like when Roycey Simmons said he'd buy everyone a drink in Penrith. He's still doing it. <laughs> He's going to buy everyone a Portuguese chicken burger. <laughs> oh, God, I love you, Maroon. As now they take it forward to Sims. Sims takes it. Plays it to the quarter line. So 17 to nil. They were 25 nil against the Knights, Louis. What Parramatta side are we seeing here? Yeah, well, they're a class act, and it's. No, I'm going to give Nathan Hindmarsh, Hindmarsh a massive rap. He's uh, <laughs> he's been on every game. He doesn't come off for a, uh, for a rest too much, and he's really leading this Parramatta side. And I'm with Maroon. I think if anyone's going to beat the Bulldogs, it is this Parasite. They are absolutely outstanding at the moment. I think either way it goes, we're in for a frantic finish, finish as Eastwood away to Sims. Ball comes loose, picked up beautifully by Prince. And he now goes inside the attacking zone. Minto down the western touchline. Flick pass, it's gone to the wrong man. And Parramatta now will play it through Michael Witt. And he will go along the back line to Butner. Nah, but Lottie Dakiri puts his big hand in the way. Maroon, you would be very excited. Parramatta look as though they're going to be in the grand final. How do you see them going against the Bulldogs? Well, it's going to be interesting. I mean, they've got to have... It's a quick turnaround for Parramatta. Gee, it's going to be a high-quality finish. And as Steve Allen, uh, a mate of, an old radio mate of ours, is down here on the sideline doing the announcing, he said, Ray Price coaching a Parramatta side against a Bulldog side in a grand final. 30 years or whatever it is since they played in that 86 grand final. It's just massive. The Legends of League, it just keeps getting better. Yeah, it was John Money atop the uh, members' stand in 86, 33 years ago, and now it's Mr. Perpetual Motion. 
was 4-2 on that particular day. What will it be in the grand final as Friend takes it forward from Dummy Half. He gallops through. Oh, can't get the bonus try though, Louis. He was trying hard to get there. They needed the bonus try to really get back into this game. But um, yeah, very nice play there from the Broncos. It was, uh, was that friend, I think, friend, went straight yeah. through. and He looked sharp, he looked fast. Looked like he sort of twisted his knee as he was putting the ball down, trying to get into the bonus zone. But well done to the Broncos there on the scoreboard. Who knows what they can do. But look at the way there. Oh, he, was, yeah. he couldn't get it down. That's terrific defence there from the Eels. That was Tim Robinson that prevented the bonus point. So even though it's 17 points to six, the conversion was successful. It just shows you how vital that bonus point is in this game. Oh, it's massive. And... You know, they just keep turning up Parramatta and the Bulldogs as well. They just keep turning those little one-point um, extra bonus try away, and it's it's definitely gone a, a long way to helping them get to where they are at the moment in this tournament. Four and a half to go. Can Parramatta hold on? Can their number one supporter, Maroon, continue his dominance with the Eels? You've given up the Rabbitohs. You're now on the Eels train, Maroon. Well, I don't think I ever <laughs> be giving up on the Rabbitohs, but here he goes again, Buttes. Oh, a big smashing tackle in the middle of the field. That's a good effort from Friend to put Butner to ground. He'll play it a couple of metres into opposition territory. Moran to Witters. Away it goes. Robinson. Now the Eels, they'll play it beautifully through Harrison. And they'll go into opposition territory and they've lost the football. So 17 to 6, 4 to go. It's the Eels and the Dogs in the grand final. Neither of these sides have faced off in this tournament's grand final. The Bulldogs, they beat the Barbarians last year, 27 to 14. And the Knights before that, 10-6 as Parramatta charging in. And that's a terrific try. And Tim Robinson gets more points for Parramatta and more pain for Brisbane, Louis. Yeah, well, PJ uh, Mars, he, he went for the one-on-one. -on -one. It didn't work out. He's dropped the ball. And then Parramatta, they just keep the ball alive. Find Robinson, a little bit of room. Nice little fend, gets him right on the chest. Scores another beautiful try for Parramatta. And that's it. They're through to the grand final. They can't get back into this game. The Broncos and I can't wait to see this Parramatta uh, Canterbury grand final. It's going to be spot on. It, I, you know what? None of these games have gone to golden try or extra time. I reckon it will go to extra time. Calling it already. How yeah, good. I reckon it'll go to extra time. Maroon your sideline. Will this game be decided in regular time or golden try time? Guys, you might have to come back to me. Wendell Saylor's just come by and whack me right where you don't whack a man. And oh, yes. I'm in a world of pain here. Look, I think this game, I think this is this grand final is going to take uh, this tournament to another level. You've got these two great clubs, this two great old rivalry, and both taking this tournament so seriously. Again, look for big games for Dennis Moran and Michael Butner as Lottie Takiri breaks free, but Butner's going to get there first, Jono. Yeah, he will. And Lottie Takiri put a chip kick last year, and Gordon Tallis scored. But Parramatta come up with the football, and along the back line it goes. And now Parramatta play it through Michael Witt, and they take it up the middle and play it a couple of metres short of the half. Timmy Manor, the Parramatta Eel, and wet with Phil Magpie player from dummy half. Along the back line, ready now. They'll take it forward, but it'll be a knock on and a possession to the Brisbane Broncos. 23 to 6 now in favour of Parramatta. And it's two minutes to go. So, Louis, Brisbane need more than a miracle at the moment. Yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm so, it's safe to say the game's set and match. Yeah. But, um, yeah, look, it's been a, a really good day for the Broncos. They've had some, uh, some quality games of footy. Obviously, come up against a red hot Parramatta side who continue just to impress as, the, as this series goes on. But uh, you know what, they'll be pretty happy with the way that they've played so far today. So Brisbane will play it a couple of metres short of the try line. Prince, the man in a standing tackle. Eastwood along the back line. Walker regathered, has another quick crack at it. Picked up by Scotty Minto. And Minto will score. So Brisbane get a bit of love towards the end of the game. And that'll be 23 points to 10 with a conversion to come. Just over a minute to play. And uh, Maroon, you are sidelined. Hopefully you've recovered from that little injury. Um, can you go a bit Nostradamus for us and pick a scoreline in the grand final? I'm going to pick a scoreline in the grand final of, I'm going to say, Bulldogs 23, Parramatta 16. There you go. Go and have something on that. Bulldogs 23, Parramatta 16. Campbell responsibly. Louie, have you got a scoreline for us? Yeah, I'm going to go Parramatta. 18, 
I'm going to go Bulldogs 12, Nathan Highmarsh to score the winning try. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've had a dream or something. Something's happened. Anyway, as now Friend goes from dummy half. I like Parramatta with the upset, 18-16. As now it comes away to, to Kiri. Away now to Prince. Prince now through the gap. Oh, just tripped up. Pop the pass. Oh, Tony Carroll. Yes. Tundra gets the try. And the Broncos are in. 23 points to 14. Not a bad finish from the Brisbane side, Maroon. But where was this in the first half? Isn't that great to see big Tony Carroll get a try right at the end of the game there? And he has been wonderful for this tournament. He's given his time to help promote it, market it. And it's just great to see him bow out this year with a try to the great man, Tony Carroll. Uh, Almost 300 NRL games, a great stint in the UK, and he tops it all off here with a try at the Legends of League. So 23 to 14, the final score. Parramatta make their way into the grand final for the first time in the Legends of League contest. And of course, they will play Canterbury, who are going for three in a row. It's been a, a bit of a mix. Parramatta is favoured to myself and Louis. Maroon down on the sideline, he likes the Bulldogs. Louis even predicted that Nathan Hindmarsh will pick up the winning meat pie. Have you had a dream? Did you have an epiphany before you came to the ground, Louis? What happened? No, I, to be honest, when you looked down, I thought the way that they're playing, I've seen Hindmarsh in the number 11 jersey looking straight at me. And he just gave me this big, beautiful smile and was like, <laughs> I'm coming to get it. So <laughs> I believe he's going to get a nice try in this grand final and he's going to have a, a cracking performance. Well, Maroon, your sideline, and we'll come to you in a moment with a couple of interviews. Uh, sideline, what's the atmosphere down there? Because from here in the commentary box, it sounds like the noise has just grown in the last half an hour. Yeah, I can't believe you, Louis. You're saying uh, he didn't have a dream. He didn't have an epiphany, Louis. I think he's had a couple of long necks up there. <laughs> if he thinks Hindmarsh is going to score the winning try. But no, the atmosphere down here is absolutely wonderful. If anything, the crowd's uh, built, improved in the last... 15 to 20 minutes. It is a wonderful crowd. Newcastle really embracing this event uh, and it really is a, a, a great atmosphere here. Parramatta supporters to my left, Doggy supporters to my right and we're only minutes away from the grand final so very shortly we'll grab Nathan Hindmarsh, Wendell Saylor, just get a couple of words from the pros, from the experts and yeah, it's grand final time as Rabs would say, it's time for the big dance and here are the cheer girls out there now performing for you. Jono at So the cheer girls are getting ready, Maroon, and we are getting ready for the grand final. The old rivals of the 80s, Canterbury and Parramatta. They played each other in the 84 grand final. Canterbury were too good on that occasion, 6-4. Two years later, it was Parramatta getting one up on them, 4-2, and sending Ray Price and Michael Cronin out on a winner. What will happen in this grand final between the Bulldogs, who are two-time champions in the Legends of League? Will they make it a three-peat, or will Parramatta upset the apple cart and win their first bit of silverware in a wee while? Let's go sideline. Maroon is down there with the big Wendell Saylor. We're going to go sideline with Anthony Maroon. He's got Wendell Saylor and Nathan Hindmarsh. Maroon has got a couple of absolute superstars with him. Let's go live to Maroon. Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, we do have a couple of the uh, champions from today. We've got Nathan Highmarsh and Wendell Saylor. Firstly to you, Del. Uh, well, you bow out now, old mate. Yeah, look, Parramatta played pretty well, but I'm proud of our boys. Really good effort. We haven't been to the uh, finals before, so uh, good effort. And thanks very much uh, for the invitation to come today. And it's great to see the crowd turn up. Newcastle, they love their footy. What about you, Heine? How do you feel, mate? One more and you could get that uh, illustrious illustrious yeah, trophy. I've been reminded about that a thousand times today, <laughs> thanks to Vossi up there in the box, calling it out every five minutes, so that's great. But, yeah, the boys have done well to get here so far and took one game to go, so I'm not counting my chickens before they've hatched. To be honest, I'd like to see you beat the Bulldogs because Willie Mason's walking around talking three-peat, three-peat, so well, we couldn't beat him. So I think everyone wants to see us beat the Dogs. Yeah, yeah and I want to see you get a grand final ring. Thank you, Wendell. I'd appreciate that. That'd be great. Yeah, I'll go take that home to my wife and kids back down. <laughs> yeah. Great. So, guys, the most important thing here is the concept Legends of League, the Mark Hughes Foundation, and you are two of the blokes that have just got behind it, supported your mates, and promoted this wonderful event. 
Yeah, look, I think it's easy. Like, rugby league has been so good for, for both of us and our families. But also, rugby league people, they love it. And Mark Hughes is an absolute leg legend. Yep. Uh, foundation, they're doing a great job. And um, I played in their golf the other day, and uh, it was wonderful support. Yeah, it is. It's uh, at our stand. It's our third year now. So, raise a lot of money for the Mark Hughes Foundation. And it's not just, as I said earlier today, look, it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity for the boys to catch up as well. We haven't seen each other for years and yep. years and years. So we, we enjoy that side of it. Uh, we enjoy putting on a display for the, uh, the fans, but we also enjoy raising money and catching up with each other as well. Righto, boys. Uh, congratulations on your efforts so far today. One more for you, Hindy. All the best with that. As you always do, Dale, you get along and you support a great cause. And we've had been a pleasure seeing you again today. Thanks, mate. Love you, mate. Oh, you, Anthony. <laughs> Beautiful. And, mate, and Dell, he let everyone at Triple M down today. He lost. Just kidding. Legends of League Grand Final is coming up. Thank you, Maroon, and we are getting set for the grand final. It's the old rivals from the 80s, Canterbury, Bankstown, and Parramatta. Who's going to win today? Louis, will it be Canterbury for the third consecutive time, which is huge in rugby league and in this tournament, or will it be Parramatta, who've been the surprise packet today? They had victories over the Panthers. They had a, a win in the last pool game against Newcastle, and they've just beaten Brisbane. So... An incredible performance from this Parramatta team. They've been in the competition three years, but this has got to be their finest hour. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's an amazing uh, you know, feat to get there, to go in this uh, tournament and undefeated. It's a huge uh, task. The, the, the Bulldogs, the two best teams of, the, of today are definitely in the grand final, which is uh, well-deserved. Yep. I think it might come down to who had the longer break. Uh, yeah. Is the longer break going to help the Bulldogs? Is the shorter break going to help Parramatta? I'm not too sure. Only time will tell, but... I do believe this Parramatta side can upset this Bulldog side, but you know they've got to respect the ball here, and you know it's the old cliche saying, respect the ball and field position. But in this grand final, if you want to beat this Bulldog side, you can't continue to give uh, the Bulldogs too much field position and let them attack that uh, try line because they're very, very good at it. The thing that's impressed me most about Canterbury is they've just a they've kept their consistency right through across the three years, but this year there seems to be more combination plays, not just in attack but in defence. They seem to be just playing like an NRL team. Just, you know, just so many structures, which you don't normally see structure-heavy rugby league in a tournament like this. No, you're 100% right. The talk out in the field is spot on by this Bull, uh, the Kennery Bulldogs side. You know, they're telling where they go. They're looking up. They're playing numbers and seeing where the numbers have got to go, where the ball's going to go. And they're working really hard for it. And if, if they need to get numbers on the open side, they're going. They're working that extra, uh, putting that extra effort. And then when you go down to the bottom and all the sides are together, they're in a nice tight huddle. They're not talking to any people. They're talking tactics, how they want to play, what they want to do. And they're talking about completing sets. And it's basically, you know, it, it is. It's like they're out there playing in the NRL and they want to be successful. They don't want to embarrass themselves and they want to um, continue the ride of having this side uh, continue to get the grand final and win this trophy and, um, and really make it their own. So the last two years, uh, they've looked spot on, but I think this Parramatta side is uh, probably the, the closest side it could go to beating this uh, Bulldogs team. Well, let's see if that's the case. Let's have a look at the run for Parramatta. They beat Penrith 24 points to 7. They then beat the Newcastle Knights 25 points to nil, And they've just beaten the Brisbane side to get into this grand final for Canterbury. They had their first game against the Barbarians. It was 32 to 13. Then, of course, they played the Broncos. It looked as though they were looking a little shifty, a little unsettled in that game, but they picked up the win 17 points to 10. And then, of course, they came out and beat Newcastle in that semi-final. So both sides coming into this game undefeated. Canterbury have managed to keep an undefeated record, Louis, for three years. So if they lose this grand final, it's their first loss in three years. So that's what we're playing for. Whereas Parramatta, they've been undefeated this year. But they've been competitive the last couple of years. They were strong in 2017. They were strong in 2018. They didn't make semis or finals. But, geez, this side, it just seems a little different. I, I don't know if it's a coach change or maybe an attitude change or what it is. But Parramatta, to me, look a bit different from the one I saw the previous two years. Yeah, well, I... <laughs> I think it's just a, a little bit of youth. There's obviously, obviously a little bit of speed. Yep. Uh, they've got some really good um, you know, ball playing abilities. They've got some hard men in the middle there, like Nathan Highmarsh, who we just heard from. Michael Buton has been unbelievable to watch um, this tournament. He's scored a couple of great tries. He's had his hand in everything. His kicking game's been spot on. So, yeah, look, they've really got a, a, a class side all over the park, and they've got Ray Price as coach. So, you know, if he's telling you something, you're taking it on board and you do it. But then. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, that, that Bulldog side, like you said, to not to go through the last three years without a loss, that's a massive effort. I know how much time they put into their game yeah. away from this. Uh, you know, they get together every week. They play a game of touch. They, you know, they go and uh, get lunches and foods together, and that's what happens. When, you, when you've got a tight bunch of blokes who actually have got really good mateship, uh, you know, special things happen. See, you played in two grand finals, one in 03 for the Panthers, one in 2016 for the Sharks. Both were great for different reasons. In 03, it was the first title for 12 years for Penrith after their historic win in 91. Then, of course, in 2016, it was the first for 50 years for the Sharks. Um, how was your preparation different for those two grand finals? Yeah, well, when I, in, in 2003, I was only a young kid. We just come in and we had that little bit of arrogance about us is that we can score we can score points from anywhere on the field. Doesn't matter if we're behind, but we had this really tight mateship. And the good thing that I love to compare this 2003 and the 2016 side is that we had really good old senior heads in 2003 who drove the way. Yep. Uh, and we all just bought into it. We all, we all did everything together. We went for lunches and dinners together. And in 16 was the exact same. Mm. We had some older heads. Everyone drove what we wanted to do, what we wanted to buy into. And we all we did everything together. We were just a real tight bunch of blokes. And we, we achieved something that we always wanted to achieve as a group. And um, that was winning grand finals. To do it at Penrith, absolutely mind-blowing. And at the Sharks, after 50 years, to get that first one to take that trophy home, mm. uh, turn off the port sides, as they say. But, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah absolutely, uh, uh, you know, a, a special moment. They're the things that you'll never let go. It's that uh, camaraderie and mateship that you make, you know, winning grand finals. And that's why this Bulldog side today, we're talking about they haven't lost a game in this Legends of League, is because they are so tight. Mm. And it goes back to all the games and, and the grand finals and, and, you know, the way that they stay together. And that's why, you know, they're very hard to beat. Well, we're certainly getting pumped up. We hope you are, whether it's on KO, the Legends of League website, the Legends of League Facebook or NRL.com. There are our wonderful, proud tournament partners. Thank you for all your help. We'll take a break. On the other side, all the action of the grand final in the Legends of League tournament. Will it be the Bulldogs for the third time? Or can Parramatta win their first title in this competition? We'll find out on the other side of this break. And welcome back to McDonald Jones Stadium. Well, it is the pointy end of the pencil. There it is, the grand final. Canterbury and Parramatta, the old rivals of the 80s. Canterbury going for three successive premierships in the Legends of League. Parramatta, their first. My name is John O'Farr. Joining me in commentary, Brett Kamali. Of course, he played for the Knights, the Mariners, the Storm, the Northern Eagles, the Sharks and the Dogs. And Luke Lewis, he played for the Panthers and the Sharks. Noddy, we'll start with you. Who do you see winning this grand final? And will it be decided in regular time? Yeah, I'm not too sure. I think it actually could go to extra time or golden point. Um, I think it'll be a very close game. I, I was a part of the Dogs, the first uh, victory of Legends of the League they had. And it was um, certainly a bit of structure to how they played. Defensively, they seem to work it out by staying nice and tight and sliding and sort of showing everyone the solo. But I think the grand final, we beat Newcastle in that year's grand final. It was like a test match game of football. It really? was so close. Yeah, It was just like, just do not want to miss a tackle. Anyone comes in front of you, tackle them as hard as you can. And, and that's why I think this grand final will be probably nice and tight, low scoring. It'll be so hard to score a try. I think a couple of tries might come off the back of some chip kicks or, or crossfield kicks. Um, but yeah, I, I look forward to the clash. Obviously, it'd be nice to have a new winner uh, in, in Parramatta. And yep. I know, Louis, you've sort of already said that you thought Parramatta might win, but it's going to be hard. The Dogs have been the best team now for the three seasons of Legends mm. of the League. Consistently well. Yeah, yeah Louis, uh, we've spoken about the grand final a number of times. There's the Parramatta side on screen. We've seen the Canterbury side. Out of the Canterbury and Parramatta side, who are your best on field or who are the players that need to step up in this big dance? Yeah, look, I, I think both sides have been playing really well. I think everyone um, from you know, 1 to 14 or 15 that's there have all sort of had their little input. For me, it's the Bulldogs' defence. And for me, for Parramatta, it's their attack. So it's really matching up to be a good game. If Parramatta can get their attack right, continue to move the ball, um, have some nice... Um, you know, little exchanges of offloads and, and, and try and suck that uh, Bulldogs defensive line out of some structure, I think they'll go all right. Again, for me, the Bulldogs, well, you know, it's their big men. They're laying a good platform, big Marco Mealy, uh, Willie Mason just running hard and direct. And they've got uh, Shifty Sherwin, who's, who's, you know, playing some beautiful um, you know, skill out the back of his ball hands. And it's the kicking game with Daniel Holsworth and the little combination that he had there with Luke Patton as well. So... Yeah, look, uh, for me, Parramatta have got a lot on their plate, but I really believe that their attack can upset this Bulldogs uh, defensive line. 
Well, it was a win Noddy mentioned earlier. 10-6 Canterbury over Newcastle in 2017. Last year it was 27-14 Canterbury over the Barbarians. They were the grand finals for those years. This year, Canterbury and Parramatta. Who's going to win it? Let's have a look at some of the highlights that we've compiled courtesy of the Bar TV TV crew. It's the semi-final action, Parramatta and Brisbane, and of course Canterbury and the Barbarians, and some highlights right across the day. Boys, this was the start from Canterbury that they needed. Luke Patton getting some points, and Andrew Ryan Noddy getting some points early. He scored three bonus tries. Yeah, that's right. I think bonus try is obviously going to be very important, uh, we, which we both think will be a close grand final. So that extra one point, if you can take a bonus try, will be huge. They're just very mobile, the dogs. Like they're, at, they, they're big and powerful when they do hit-ups and hard to tackle, so it's going to take you two or three men. But they're skillful and they're athletic, and, and that's where I think they've got the right balance. And obviously, you see here, uh, Louis, obviously Parramatta, they... they Know, take an intercept try, which obviously then gets you in front. And then when, when you're in front, it's so much easier the game, isn't it, rather than feel like you've got to chase points in this competition? Oh, 100%, Noddy. And, you know, when you're in front, you're not as nervous. You know, when you're behind, especially, you know, you've only got nine minutes per half to get some points on the board, you, know, you start to get a little bit nervous, you push that pass, and you start to come up with some errors. And if you come up with some errors in the wrong part of the field here, especially against the Bulldogs, uh, it's very hard to get back in the game. For me, uh, Butner has been absolutely spot on. He'll be the man to go to. I think the Bulldogs know this as well. They'll be trying to take him out. But, it, you know, look, they, they scored a lot of points. It's, in two games, they scored 49 uh, points, only let seven points in. So, uh, look, for me, it's, uh, it's really lining up to be a cracking game. But the Bulldogs are going to be very hard to beat. Also, one little bloke I don't think we've mentioned enough, Andrew Ryan. Seriously, he is excellent at keeping um, squads together, uh, keeping a lot of ex-players together outside of... Um, you know, rugby league and what he's done with this side is absolutely amazing and he's been playing superb today. you got two best mates going up against each other. Andrew Ryan, who spent some time at, at Parramatta, and Nathan Highmarsh. Oh, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be at each other. So there's going to be a little bit of banner. And obviously the grand final also plays for 12 minutes, not the nine minutes a half, and we get a longer half time. So, you know, Canterbury played the first semi-final, so they've had a bit of a longer rest. Parramatta, who have come off just that semi-final, mm -hmm. have obviously got to turn around very quickly, but... That extra sort of three minutes of game time can, because I think nine minutes goes so quick. So Absolutely. who does that favour? Do you reckon that favour the, the longer break favour, or would you rather the shorter break? I think I think Parramatta. I think coming on the back of just one a game, you, you quickly turn around, you have a quick stretch, you're yeah. like back out there. Where Canterbury, they played like nearly an hour ago. Yeah, stiffen up. Stiffen up. You know, it's like oh, come on, boys, we've got one more one more time to get up. And yeah, I'd love to see I'd love to see Parramatta win it for the, for the fact that it's a new a new winner. Mm. Like, you know, Canterbury have been so good. And, 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 and you, so they're going to have to play amazing Parramatta to beat them. It's interesting you say that, Brett, because, you know, the, the Canterbury side that I've seen today has just been all class. So that shows you not only the improvement with Parramatta, but the improvement with the tournament if Canterbury are now sort of almost going into the grand final as underdogs. Well, I don't know if they're underdogs, but I think it, they're obviously... Got to, we know what you're going to get. They haven't lost a game in three tournaments. Yeah. They played. They're a consistent side. They defend well. They don't. They don't drop the ball too often. They have a high completion rate. They have a, probably the best kicking game of the tournament, with two very clever halves in, in Holdsworth and Sherwin. So they put the ball in the right positions. They, they don't give you much of an opportunity to say, "Here, yeah, we'll give you easy outs or free balls or, or times to screw our try." So Parramatta, though, like Parramatta in this tournament, have been unbelievable. Like we saw them in the first game beat Penrith, and like, oh yeah, and then. They just come out against against Newcastle and were absolutely flying. And, and now they've taken that in the semi-final. So they're, they're probably the hottest team at the moment, Parramatta, but because only we know what Canterbury give us. Yeah. yeah. We've got the same from Canterbury for three tournaments now. Yeah. yeah. Louis, you were the coach for Penrith today. Uh, your first game, not sort of the best start, 24-7 to 7 over Parramatta. But how did you see Parramatta? What were you telling your Penrith players to... To look out for danger signs, that sort of stuff. Well, the first thing I said is, uh, boys, we probably should have trained and got together a little bit more. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, they got out there. They had a bit of structure. Uh, they had some shape. They had a lot of talk. But their energy levels uh, were spot on. They were chasing everything. You could see that they really wanted it. Uh, they, they were sort of nailing everything. I do believe the Bulldogs going to this game uh, favourite, um, purely because they haven't lost a game in this um, in this tournament uh, for the last three years. So yeah, massive task for Parramatta. But I do believe. Uh, this is a side to beat them, and I, uh, I hope for Hindy's sake too. I really do. I'd like to see him win it. 
Well, yeah, I mean, Noddy, you, you had a, a couple of little jabs at Hindy. Uh, if he picks yeah. up a medal, how are you, are you going to find him at full time? Oh, he, I, if, if Parramatta win, I'll make sure that I, if I do the winning side's interview, it'll be Nathan Highmarsh, congratulations. <laughs> so a, little bit of, a little bit of fun at the start of the day, saying, oh, he's been, you know, he's got to lift his performance. But he, he's been great for Parramatta. And, and as much as the banter, he cops a lot of criticism for never winning a premiership. Mm. He, this, I reckon he'd be super keen to win because you know what will happen when he goes back to work if they get beat. He's a, <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll cop more rubbish, you know. Yeah. He's, he's got to win this game so he can actually stand up and go, hey, oh, boys, I won something. Because like, no. <laughs> otherwise, he'll just cop another year of criticism. <laughs> well, Louis, I mean, for so many years, you know, for Cronulla, you know, they always talked about the Amco Cup win in 79 and that was the only trophy that the Sharks had. And then all of that was silenced in 2016 when they won the comp. Is that the case with Nathan Highmarsh? This is his Amco Cup? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Probably. It probably is. Well, it's the only other opportunity now he's going to get to win the grand final. He can't go back. And, yeah. But, mate, Jizzy's had a great career. Oh, I, I, I love watching career. him play. He yeah. was an absolute idol of mine. I love him off the field just as much as I loved him on the field. Um, he's probably one man that I do believe in our game really deserved the grand final. Uh, didn't get that opportunity. Got there a couple of times, but mm. just couldn't get the win. So, yeah, I hope, I hope today he gets that win. This is the MK Cup. This is the Nines. This is the Legends of the League. This is the Winfield <laughs> Cup. This is the Optus <laughs> Cup. This is the, the Super League. Whatever else there is out there. This is Nathan Highmarsh's <laughs> chance. <laughs> well, look, it's going to be a terrific game of rugby league. Canterbury and Parramatta, they are your final in this Legends of League. It's sort of a final that not many expected. I mean, a lot of people thought Canterbury will be there for sure, but Matter. They've come out of the blocks. They've put on some really good performances against Penrith. They then had a big win against Newcastle. Then the final against uh, Brisbane to get themselves into this big dance. They're preparing on the field as we speak. Canterbury can't see them out on the field, so they're probably in the dressing room just having a, a final talk. Noddy, what's the message from Hazem El Mazari to the Bulldogs? What does he say to his players? Oh, I think they'll play exactly what we've seen from the from the three years from it. Oh, they'll have a really high completion rate. Um, They'll, they'll, their kicking game will be first class. They'll have make sure defensively they work really hard from the inside out. So they'll slide quite a lot and, and feel like you can run around them, but they cover the edges very, very well. So I, I think you, the talk from Hazem, and, and will certainly be that they have to find lots of energy. They, they've got to go out and start extremely well and, and literally take Parramatta out of the game. Because I think, as Louis said, if Parramatta start well and, and then get that bit of belief and the players they've got like Michael Putin has been probably one of the best players of the tournament by far he's been so good you know to watch so they've got quality strike and they, you know they'll then start defending the try line they'll have motivation they'll have desperation so you know, it sets up like every other grand final would set up that you don't want to lose yeah, and I think if you're a Parramatta you'd be doing the exact same thing you need to go at these guys yeah. fast let's get a really good start here don't get them too much energy Let's make sure we can put some pressure on them when they've got the ball in defence because they're going to be sore. They're going to be, you know, a lot of these guys are down there stretching for the last hour, you know, trying to get their hemis right to get through this game. And you know what it's like. As soon as you stop for a little bit, that soreness kicks right in. It's very hard to get moving again. And before you know it, the first half could be gone, done and dusted, and you might not be able to get back in the game. Yes, this is this is their fifth game they're playing today. Yeah. Like against, and we've said that how much the competition's risen this year yeah. to what it was last year. Oh, so enormous. they've got to be shattered, the players, but. I think they'll both want to probably be giving the ball back to the opposition at the other end near the try line and try and have a lot of energy defensively rather than actually give the ball back on their own try line. Well, we're getting set for the grand final. Here come the two teams, Canterbury and Parramatta. Who's going to pick it up? This could be Parramatta's first title outside of a major title since they beat the Tigers in 86 in the Panasonic Cup at Leichhardt. Boys, uh, scoreline Noddy. Who wins it and by how many? Oh, oh, oh. I'll say Canterbury, but I think it'll be like 8-6. Low scoring. Yep. Okay. Louis, you've gone for Parramatta. Parramatta and High Marsh to score a try. There you go. So he, What he, was your score? You said 18, I think 12, it was 18-12. Yeah, 18-12. 18-12 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and Heine to pick up the match-winning try. So let's see if that is the case. Why don't we get the most loyal fan that will pick and stick <laughs> to tell yeah. us his tip. Maroon, uh. tell us who you think is going to win at halftime well, and at full time. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, boys, I'm going to tip Canterbury to win 23-16. Interesting, though, uh, Jono, you are talking about that Panasonic Cup. I'll come back to it. It's a kickoff. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. And now Parramatta take it up through Timmy Manor. So the grand final is underway here in the Legends of League. Will Canterbury go three in a row or will Parramatta pick up their first title? Hindmarsh gives the ball across. Tukey now takes it forward for Parramatta. 
Great contest. Hope you're enjoying the action and right across the day, big grand final here as Tukey gives the ball away to Manor with a big smile on his face. He takes it forward over the quarter line. Whether you're watching on KO, the Legends of League website, the Facebook site or NRL.com, we hope you're enjoying the coverage. Brett Kamali, Luke Lewis, Anthony Maroon joining myself, John O'Farr in commentary. And here comes Canterbury, Sherwin. Now take it forward through Asatasi. And he will play it a couple of metres short of the try line. Who can be the first one to draw first blood in the grand final? Now it goes Grimaldi from dummy half. Tries to find Tonga, but Grimaldi will score. And the Bulldogs are in. Noddy, the perfect start for the men in white and blue. Yeah, what a wonderful start for Tony Grimaldi. Sneaking down a short side from dummy half. They come up with an error. Trying to offload the ball. Parramatta early in their set of six. Come up with an error. That's how Canterbury got an amazing field position. I wonder if he looked up and said, oh, there's Tukes. I reckon he's got Mark Tukey for pace. He did in the end. He just beat him on the outside. Just what happens when you get close to the trial line. And unfortunately for... And Param Sherwin. Yeah, what about that for a oh, kick? That is absolutely superb. Louis, perfect start for the Bulldogs. And I noticed in that little replay, courtesy of Bar TV, that Mark Tukey, he, he was a bit filthy on himself for missing uh, Grimaldi on that occasion. Oh, absolutely. He's a competitive bugger. He's been excellent here this afternoon, Mark Tukey. He's come up with a little bit of a... A mystery there, but again, that's just the fatigue factor from the whole day. Playing four games, this is his fifth game now, but here they are, Parramatta back on the attack. And they take it forward now, beautiful play through Williams. He'll bring it over the quarter line and just short of the half. Now Robson from dummy half, on to Witters. Wide to the most determined man in rugby league, Michael Butner. And he's taken high, Maroon your sideline. You love that high shot on Buttes. Yeah, it was a little bit high. I think it was just a little bit of a reaction. Okay, the referee's doing nothing about it. It was uh, Willie Tonga, the culprit, but everything's A-OK -okay out there. So as Manor plays it now, and it's Witters from dummy half, a couple of metres short of the halfway line. Six points to nil in favour of the Dogs as Reddy takes it forward. Nice little step off the left and right, away to Robson, now to Witters. Witters pushes his way through and over the halfway line. Bulldogs in front at the moment. Early stages of this grand final as Robson puts the kick down to the pattern and General Patton takes it out. Lukey Patton brings it off the quarter line area and he's tackled a couple of metres into almost that attacking half as Shifty Sherwin goes from dummy half and Brad Moran takes it forward for Canterbury. He's about seven or eight short of the halfway line, middle of McDonald Jones Stadium. Sherwin now to Rennie Matua. And a, a haircut that has impressed Anthony Maroon. And he plays it a couple of metres short of the half. I'm thinking about getting that haircut. <laughs> OK, let's see how Miss Portugal feels about that as, as Willie Mason takes it over the halfway line. Now they go from dummy half. Sherwin puts a little chip kick, was taken out late in the play. Williams, Tonga. Williams comes at the ball. This will be interesting to see how this goes. Noddy, thoughts on the pace of the game so far? Oh, very fast. It's a very high quality game. Both sides are having a crack, but defensively being very good. There's an off like this. We see Mickey Butner. Butner down the sideline away from Feeney. And a good tackle there from the general. Puts him almost into touch. Uh, Louis, how have you seen the game so far? Yeah, it's all Bulldogs at the moment. They're, they're getting up the field very nicely. Come up with some nice little kicks. They're obviously already on the scoreboard. The Parramatta, they're just giving away a couple of too many Errors coming out of their own and you can't afford to do that against the Dogs. So now Mark O'Mealy has possession after Harrison spilt the lollies. Are you still confident with uh, Parramatta Maroon or have you jumped camp? No, mate, it's early days. Seven minutes and 45 seconds left in the half. I think, uh, I, no, I've, I've tipped the Doggies to win what this one, John. What are you doing? You're putting words in my mouth. <laughs> I'm just trying to catch you out. You've got one of the best memories in radio. Mate, John, John O'Wright thought I was talking to him, then he turned around. <laughs> Give him, give him some instructions when he gets out there. Tell him what he's got to do, Maroon. Oh, I don't think he'd appreciate that. Well, I'm just <laughs> tripping over the equipment here. Oh, never good to do that as Mason takes it forward for Canterbury. They lead 6-0 in the grand final. Seven to go before half time in the Legends of League tournament. From dummy half, they play it. Holdsworth along the back line. Asatasi couldn't hold onto it. And it's a knock on to Canterbury. So a little bit of nerves coming in after that perfect start, Louis, for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it was a beautiful ball there by Daniel Holsworth. I think that uh, as a Tarzi probably couldn't just see. I'm going to blame the sun on that one. But, uh, yeah, look, uh, a little bit of nerves probably kicking in there for the Bulldogs. But it was a really nice um, 
well set up set by the for the doggies and luckily for Parramatta that they come up that error. Yeah, I don't think they'll want to come up with any more mistakes, especially for the first half Parramatta. They've had two two sets coming out of yardage technically and they've dropped both sets and one try has been conceded on the back of that. So a nice kick there from Dean Witters. It goes downfield into some open pasture. And Utah picks up the ball, but Butner's picked it up, and he goes over for a bonus try. Oh, beautiful stuff from Butes, but it's no try. Maroon, oh, you'd be disappointed with that one, being a Parramatta supporter. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I don't know what the ruling was there, but he's coming straight off. He's being replaced. Michael Butner, interesting, uh, earlier there, uh, Jono, you were talking about the Panasonic Cup win for Parramatta. Yeah. Uh, man of the match that night was Tony Casado, and he won, you wouldn't believe it, a national Panasonic video recorder and a carton of Winnie Blue, so they were great days. <laughs> yeah. And I think Peter Sterling picked up the man of the series and I think he won about $20,000 worth of National Panasonic gear. I think he might have got a Mazda RX-7. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're back to the action as Canterbury now. Rod Silver, he gives the ball away and Parramatta now will play it looking for points here. And they take it forward through Ben Smith. Six points to nil. Five and a half to go before half time in this Legends of League Grand Final. From dummy half, it's Witt. Along the back line, Robson puts the kick. Rennie Matua knocks it down. Yeah, calling for a penalty there through Matty Ryan, but the referee says play on. That's Stephen Clark. And now Canterbury take it forward through Dean Hallitow. They'll play it a couple of metres short of the half. Bobcat Ryan from dummy half onto Shrek. And O'Mealy, beautiful ball, but it's taken away by Witters. And now it's play on, and Parramatta now will play it through Matty Ryan. This game... Both sides sort of started well. Canterbury the first point scorer, but Noddy, Parramatta are starting to just get a bit of momentum now. Yeah, they're starting to find their way into the game. Canterbury have come up with a couple of mistakes. They're starting to see that Parramatta, I think, Parramatta, I think, are starting to, you know, they've improved their completion rate, but now they're probably starting to get a bit of a sniff. They've got to come up with points here, Parramatta. They've got to be able to turn this position into points. So now they'll play it from dummy half, away to Witters. Parramatta on the charge here, pushing one away. Oh, brilliant hands from Hindmarsh. Just that was impressive to get. Hard to get the ball so low for a tall man as he oh, just charges his way through. Jeez, I reckon he's half a chance for first points here. Hindmarsh or possibly that golden try as Robson puts the kick into the end goal area. Picked up by Patton and he's tackled in the end goal area. Thoughts on your hero, Nathan Hindmarsh. Uh, Louis, uh, how have you made of Nathan Hindmarsh so, in this, so far in this grand final? Oh, he's been excellent. He's been excellent all day, uh, Hindy. He's had a red hot crack. He's out there you know, trying to make a break. Almost come up with a break there. Willie Mason come up with a beautiful tackle. But uh, again, Parramatta really starting to get some good field position. They can't give away a, a silly penalty. I mean, a silly mistake here. They've really got to play out the sets, trying to keep getting repeat sets and get that fatigue factor to kick into the Bulldogs. Well, you said 8-6 the score line, Noddy. It's looking that way at the moment, unless Parramatta do something here in the next three and a half minutes. Yeah, it'd be nice if they're able to get on the score line. They've, they've got themselves back into the game by completing some sets, and Canterbury have come up with some errors, and just whether they're good enough to score a try against such a well-drilled, scrambling defensive team, which is Canterbury at the moment. So Ryan gets the ball away. Now there's a chance here. Good ball away to Reddy. Reddy towards the line. Oh, has he got the ball down? It's yeah. gone into touch. Oh, Maroon, you were sidelined. Thoughts on that? Did Reddy get the ball down? No, nah, mate, I think he's gone out. And anyway, the referee's ruled that way. I thought he was 100% genuinely over the touchline. Well, a superb effort. And Noddy, it really shows you the determination as we look at the replay. Great head on shot. Oh, Jeez, he was unlucky there, Louis. I think it's a try. From here, I look like a try, but now we can't be bitter about it. The, the touch judge had to make a call, and he's seen it a bit of a different way. You, you blokes all need to call into uh, spec savers at Charlestown <laughs> Westfield on the way home because he was out. Yeah, thoughts, yeah, Noddy? Yeah, was I, he out? I think his leg was out. I think his legs and hands was out, but the ball touched the... The ball did get down, but unfortunately your body can't be out. I'm with you, Maroon. That's it, mate. We stand yeah, side by side. We, we're so good. We pick and stick, me and you. Oh, Maroon, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers in arms, Kamali and Maroon. But that's that, that's that scrambling defence from, from Canterbury that, that has won them the last two tournaments. Like that, that's desperation and big play. Massive play to stop that try. Yeah, we saw it in an earlier game, Noddy against uh, Newcastle. And I think it was Bullno that was denied the try on that occasion. 
courtesy of defence. So now they've got minute 40. This is where they've got to score Parramatta. Well, I think if Parramatta score here, Louis, we've got a superb second half coming up. But, I mean, we have regardless, but it, it'll just make things a little more interesting. Yeah, I'll be getting high marsh on there right now. Minute 30 to go. They didn't get the ball in his hand. He was creating something. Well, let's see what the Eels do. They go from dummy half away to Witters along the back line onto Dennis Moran. The up and in defence from the Bulldogs. Spot on, isn't it? Absolutely superb at the moment. And Williams looking dangerous as now they take it forward, the Eels. And they play it through Ben Smith. And he'll play it a couple of metres short of the line. Dennis Moran and acting half. From dummy half they go. Tries to get, oh, puts the little choke kick away. It's taken by Sherwin. Sherwin looks for support. And Ben Smith will put him to ground. So a chance goes begging for Parramatta there, Noddy. And Canterbury's defence again holds out. Yeah, try line defence was amazing again from Canterbury. Just able to stop any tries coming down and get easily scored. Parramatta certainly threw plenty of football. And there's a chance here that the Dogs could return Servia on Parramatta. They've had all the running Parramatta the last five or six minutes, but... This should be heartbreaking to see the try with 25 seconds to go. So Halatau plays it into opposition territory inside you, the final 20 seconds. You tie on a chip kick. Okay, well, Mason's put the chip kick through. Beautifully picked up by Timmy Manor. He pushes one away, and you tie, and Mason put him into touch. So the strong defence on offer there. So six points to nil, the score, and that will be the score at half time in this grand final of the Legends of League. What a performance from both sides. Canterbury picking up the first uh, try. And uh, Parramatta some work to do. Louis, how do you see the second half going? Can Parramatta still do it? Oh, absolutely. It's only one try. Uh, I think Parramatta can get right back into this game again, but they can't start the second half like they started the first half with a couple of errors coming out of their own end and give an opportunity to the Bulldogs. They've really got to just get down there. They've got to be patient with it. They've got to push up the support play. They're going to have to push the pass a little bit, a little bit maybe... You know, second phase play, getting you a bit of offload, maybe around the corner pass. I need someone running to a bit of a hole. Uh, and I think the man to do is probably, you know, Butner there and linking up with Nathan Heimarsh. OK, let's go down to the ground. Anthony Maroon is with Dean Witters. One of Parramatta's finest here. Dean Witters, how'd it go, mate? How, what do you got to do in the second half? Yeah, we've got to hold the ball and hopefully we get to take one of those chances that we can create. But we've got to defend well. They've got so many good options in attack that you know, you've got to be on your game. Otherwise, they're going to score a lot of points against you. It'd be awesome way for you blokes to come together and win this one today. They are beatable, aren't they, the doggies? They're going for a three-peat. Yeah, they've been a, a little bit unbeatable, I suppose, over the last few years. And this is probably as close as anyone's got to them. So hopefully if the Para fans get behind us, we might be able to pull this off in the second half. It'd be good. What about you, Dean? Are you coaching the uh, Rabbitohs women's team in uh, 2020? Yeah, and I'm really excited about it. The women's game's going forward in leaps and bounds, and I'm really proud to be involved in the Rabbitohs. I love the Rabbitohs, so great to be back there involved. Yeah, good on you, mate. You've had a wonderful career. We wish you all the very best for the second half of the grand final. Thanks, mate. Hopefully we can get the money. Back to you. Yeah, thanks, Maroon. Thanks, Dean Witters. And what about big Willie Mason? Grew up just down the road, half an hour away, and Mace opening half. The Lobster, a short side play, you're in front, but gee, Parramatta's throwing plenty at you. Yeah, well, um, we're defending well, so we just need to keep that up in the second half. Now, obviously, if we defend and they don't score, we win, so we're going to uh, we'll be busting our ass in the second half, so we don't really want to lose. It's a hard battle even getting here, so it's worth it. I tell you, you must love this team. You're the 2004 Clive Churchill medalist, and you got the band back together yet again. <laughs> yeah, it's our third year, and I'm... It's just enjoyable the whole week. Matty Hill's put a great, uh, great show on, and it's for a great, uh, it's for a great reason. Mark Hughes Foundation. So all the boys turn up. It's been great. So whoever wins, wins. All right, big boy. Let's get back to business. Big Willie Mason, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Steve Allen. Thank you, Maroon. Willie Mason and Dean Witters, two big players in their respective sides. So who's going to win it? Will it be Canterbury for the third time, or will it be Parramatta for the first time? Six points to nil. The scoreline at half time in the Legends of League Grand Final. Myself, John O'Farr, Brett Kamali, and Luke Lewis in the commentary box up here, and Anthony Maroon down sideline. Noddy will make his way down to the touchline where he'll capture all the action post-game with either the Bulldogs or the Eels, and all the celebrations will be captured courtesy of the Bar TV cameras as Rennie Matua takes it forward for Canterbury. They lead six points to nil in this Grand Final. And now it's Sherwin from dummy half and a good ball to Moran. And he plays it right on the halfway line. 
Now Sherwin from dummy half. Rennie Matua. We don't argue on Michael Butner. Timmy Manor tries to get in there as well. Good start here from the Bulldogs, Louis. Yeah, great start from the Bulldogs again. Really starting to find their feet. The kicking game of Sherwin's been excellent. Oh, just waiting to see what was going to happen there. It was a really nice kick, but luckily for Parramatta, they'll get a 20-meter restart. So, Maroon, what's the atmosphere? What was the talk at halftime? Yeah, lots and lots of... Re it's, it's really getting serious down here at the moment. The doggies are talking about those bonus zone tries. Let's get one, they're saying, but whatever we do, let's not let one in. Boys, my bold prediction for the second half. Look out for number six, Moran. My man, Moran. He's about to cut loose for the Eels. <laughs> He scored a uh, try earlier in the day from an intercept. Let's see if he can do it again. And the Eels were going left to right of the screen as well. And so Parramatta now on the charge. That man Moran has it. And swarming defence from Canterbury. Bring him to ground. Six points to nil. Ten and a half to go before full time. Can Canterbury do it again? Now the Eels take it forward through Matty Ryan. They'll play it a couple of metres short of the half. Which way do they go, Louis? They've got to go short side there, I reckon. Oh. So oh, Mars, the jump. They go from <laughs> dummy half, Michael Witt. He takes it forward. One of the great rhyming slangs, Michael Witt, as Hindmarsh takes it forward. Good pass away to Ryan. Oh, no look pass to Williams, who puts the kick. Play is still on. That's the try of the tournament. There's the short side play. Very John good. Williams, take a bow. Anthony Maroon sideline. That's got to be better than Dennis Moran's effort. <laughs> that was a beautiful try. Beautiful pick up there from the winger. Here it is on the ring play. They go to the short side. The boys said, we're going to go to the short side. And then look at this beautiful little kick. Followed through. And then he just swoops down. A beautiful try to Parramatta. And they are back, baby. Oh, that's Peter Sterling to Steve Eller in the 86 major preliminary, Louis. That was superb from Parramatta. Oh, absolutely. Beautiful little short side play. And it was all spotted by the man we've been talking about in Nathan Heimarsh. He was at dummy half. He's seen an opportunity to go down that left edge. He comes up with a beautiful little play. And that was a nice little kick. And well finished off there by Parramatta as well. And they're right back in his game. So we're underway. Six points to four. Parramatta on the scoreboard. And now Canterbury, the pressure on them as O'Mealy gets it from Shifty and a big hit from your hero, Nathan Hindmarsh, Louis, in that first set of six. No, he's been excellent, Hind. He's been everything. Chasing everything. Setting up tries. How yeah, good. Oh, he's had a blinder today. I really hope that he can get that winner's medal. As now they go along the back line, Canterbury, and they take it forward. Nice work from Hallatow to bring it almost to the halfway line. They go from Shoe and from dummy half. Now on to Andrew Ryan, who scored a number of bonus points tries. Picked up beautifully. Hallatow gives it away to Shoe and on to Feeney. Wide the Bulldogs go. And they come over the halfway line through right. And he will play it just shy of the quarter line. From dummy half at Shoe and good wall to Holdsworth. Chip over the top is a good one. They're flying, but it's Tonga that gives uh, defense and it's Butner that gives attack. And he'll play it out of his try line. Parramatta, they look a different side after that uh, John O. Williams try, Louis. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of confidence has come back into that jersey of Parramatta. And they're looking sharp again. Looks like they've got a little bit of energy back into those legs. I love what Mark O'Mealy did there. He just chase all the way down. Hits uh, Butner with a beautiful shot. Just letting him know that he's aren't in front yet and we're still winning. I'm coming to get you. Well, Hindmarsh has had a blinder today. And he takes the ball up. Wide it goes. Picked up by Paul Carriage. Gives the ball back inside to the 12 in Robinson. He goes forward for the Eels. And they're perfectly positioned now for a, uh, a try here for Hindy. Maybe a game winner, Louis. So your prediction might be coming true as Parramatta. They play AFL at the moment as it comes back to Harrison, who's lost the football. Oh, they, couldn't, they couldn't afford that. That was the worst thing they could have done, Parramatta. They've gone sideways under the under pressure. All they had to do is come up with a really deep kick and a good defensive set. And now they've given the Bulldogs every opportunity to seal this game. As Mason takes it forward, uh, what's the atmosphere down sideline, Maroon? Yeah, absolutely intense. We've got players walking up and down. and They're all in one hub huddle, the Rabbitohs play the uh, Doggies players and the Paras player. Interesting, boys. Willie Mason is out there playing, and he's wearing an earring in his left ear. Can you believe it? Yeah, we saw that in the interview that uh, Stevie Allen did at the halftime break. He is ready to go. It's now Hallatow plays it from half. Goes away to Mason. Now to Holdsworth. Holdsworth pops it back to Hallatow. Hallatow along the back line. Oh, couldn't be picked up there by the Bulldogs. 
and they've lost possession so chance for the Eels as Robson comes on and Dennis Moran takes a break we might get a chat Maroon if you can find the great Dennis Moran as Parramatta take it up now through Ben Smith and this might be the chance Louis that they need with the ball yep that was a really good defensive set there by the, the Parramatta Eels it was all pressure getting off their line not giving the Bulldogs too much time and now they've got their opportunity they're in good field position here so now Parramatta take it forward through number nine in Michael Witt and uh, they give it wide and now to Butner along the back line they go to Witters Witters beautiful pass to Robson Robson holds up the show and go and goes inside the quarter six points to four five and a bit to go in this grand final here comes Timmy Manor for Parramatta and they go towards the line they play it a couple of meters short that's the last for Parramatta here they need something Robson left side they go to Butner in the in goal area and Harrison oh geez if he was an inch taller Louis he would have scored I love his enthusiasm he's chasing everything Butner he's been excellent like we've said all day today that was a really good chase unfortunately the kick just a tad too long but it's exactly what they need at Parramatta so now it's taken by Canterbury and they play it five short of the half uh, what's the intensity? Is it lifted a little sideline, Maroon? Absolutely, mate. You can just hear them from the bench yelling out to the uh, doggy supporters, hang on, hang on. Keep the intensity up. Get down the other end. Let's score another try and put this to bed. So lots and lots of talk coming out of the doggies camp at the moment saying, don't drop your heads. Don't blink. Stay on the game. We're only five minutes away from making a three-peat. And here comes Big Willie off the field now. So Mason comes off. And it looks as though... We'll just try and work out who's come on there. Holdsworth. Holdsworth. Daniel Holdsworth as Tonga comes now. And it comes for Hallatow from dummy half. Away to Holdsworth, the fresh man on the field. Chip down, but that has gone into touch. Louis on the pull. So Parramatta, they're getting the opportunities. They're now got to start taking them. Yeah, absolutely. They've got another perfect opportunity to get out of their own end and create something. Probably wasn't the best kick there by Daniel Holdsworth, but the boys, they're so used to a different size footy field. It's been sucked in by 10 metres, and when you look at it, it's a tough kick to do down that left edge. Two points to margin. Four minutes till full time. Parramatta take it forward. Looking for their first title in the Legends of League. Canterbury looking for their third. Now they go through Moran. Wide to Robson. Now to Butner. Butner oh, just through a hole, and he's brilliantly brought to ground there by the Canterbury defence with Shew and a Rod Silver. Harrison from dummy half on the acting blind. And he comes inside the attacking quarter now. Chance for the Eels. They trail by two. On to Robson. High kick is a good one. Comes through. Williams tries to take it. Beautifully taken by the General Louis. And that's why Canterbury are looking as though they're going to pick up three in a row. Yeah, I think Daniel might get a new contract from another NRL club. He's been amazing at fullback. He looks like he could still continue to play. He's been excellent out there for the Doggies. And that was a beautiful take. So along the back line they go now to Ryan. Andrew Ryan takes it forward. And it's six points to four. This Canterbury side, they just keep winning. Way to O'Mealy. Haven't had a loss in three tournaments. The only side to do it. Others have come pretty close, but this is the team, the dominant team for the Bulldogs. And now they put it downfield, and it'll be taken up by John Williams. He'll bring it off his try line almost to the quarter. Two and a half to go. Parramatta needs something. They need a miracle. Harrison takes it forward. They look like they're building to something. Robson, Manor. Maybe that miracle try from Hindmarsh is still coming, as predicted by Luke Lewis, the former Panther and Shark, as Hindmarsh gives it to Carriage. Now to Harrison. Wide to Butner. Butner puts the kick. He might have been held back there. Paul Carriage picks it up. Play on is the call. No, the penalty will go, Louis. He was held back. You know what, that, that's nearly a penalty try. In my mind. He, he gets that butte, no, he would have been hard to stop. Absolutely, the pace that he's shown is now Parramatta start coming here. Oh, Highmarsh has come off. Oh, well, two minutes to go. Moran, Butner, Robson, Winners, out wide, try to Reddy. Joel Reddy scores for Parramatta. And that's given them the break. That's given them the difference. 8-6, Maroons doing backflips. What was your thoughts on the try? Oh, beautiful quick hands from Parramatta out to the right side. They just kept passing and passing. 
Beautiful backline play and a great winger's try there. But boys, 90 seconds to go in this type of football is a long time and it's only Parramatta 8-6. Well, 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 Louis, you said there was going to be a miracle try in the final moments. You said Nathan Hindmarsh, but Joel Reddy, he could be the difference for the Eels in 2019. Oh, geez, that was nice to watch. Nice football, beautiful silky skills. Uh, but I'm still thinking Nathan Hindmarsh gets on there and scores a try. <laughs> Well, it's 8-6 at the moment. They've got 60 seconds, the defending premiers. Parramatta, they've just got to hold on. Is the Hindmarsh try coming? And now Sherwin has it. Have the Bulldogs got one last trick in their bag? Down to Tonga, down the Western touchline. Tonga with the footwork. He needed support. He goes over the half. The Bulldogs are coming. Halatau, wide they go. Grimaldi tries to get the pass away. He can't get it. Drama here, 30 seconds to go. Defending Premier's on the rack. Parramatta could pick up their first silverware. Mason takes it forward for Canterbury. He plays it with a couple of metres short. The crowd, you can hear them in the background getting behind both teams. Can Parramatta hold on? Can the Bulldogs snatch it? Holdsworth. Back inside, Utah pops pass, Grimaldi, now it comes Halatau, Halatau, he is tackled a couple of metres short, last chance, three seconds left, it's all down to this play, Canterbury will play the ball, that's it, that's it, it's all over, Parramatta win their first Legends of League title, they've defeated the defending Premiers, in what a grand final, Luke Lewis, what a finish, what a game. You predicted Parramatta to get the winning try, and they've done it through Joel Reddy. Oh, absolutely amazing game of footy. It was all the Bulldogs the first half. The Parramatta Eels worked their way back into the game. But again, Joel Reddy scores a try with a minute 20 to go. But the Bulldogs didn't die wondering. They come from the other end. Willie Tonga makes a beautiful break. They could have scored over in that corner. But uh, Dean Halatau comes up with the ball. Parramatta too smart. They lay it on with about five seconds to go. Didn't want to give them a play the ball. And they come up the win. And it's good to see Parramatta get that silverware. Disappointing for the, the Bulldogs to lose. You know, it's their first loss they've had, or first loss they've experienced together in three years. So, what an amazing tournament it's been for both these sides. Yeah, absolutely. Canterbury's first loss comes in the cruelest way. What a performance from Parramatta. They have been undefeated right across the tournament. It started with their win over Penrith, and it finishes with their win over Canterbury Banks down. Parramatta are the legends of league champions for 2019, the first in the three year history. And let's go sideline now. Anthony Maroon, he's down there with Dennis Moran. And before you go, mate, Legends of League, what a great concept. You get together with your old mates, and uh, not only that, but it's for a good cause. Yeah, look, I just want to say, I know that the Nudie and all the boys know who's been watching, and um, yeah, great, it's a great concept, love it. Good on you, Dennis, all the best, buddy. Let's go over to you now, Noddy Kamali. Yeah, I'm here with Marco Mealy, Canterbury. Nearly three in a row, but what a stage for a grand final. No, it's good. It's good to see that Hindy's eventually won something. So, uh, you know, good motivation for Parramatta. Yeah, it was an amazing game, obviously. You guys jumped out and led, and then Parramatta started getting the swing. But that was set up enormously there at full time for a victory from you guys, just to steal it off Hindy and rob him again of it. Yeah, no, he deserves it. He's been a great uh, ambassador of our game, and uh, it was a good good feel out there the whole, the whole sort of second half. Yeah, you, you've played in all three Legends League tournaments now. It seems to be getting a bit more competitive, a bit more uh, structured to it every year by year. Uh, I don't know. I'm getting older and slower. <laughs> so I know we had a couple of injuries in that last game where, where we were short of numbers. But, uh, yeah, the more numbers, the more depth, and the younger blokes we start to bring in helps a lot. They tell me you've done a hamstring. How does a front rower do a hamstring? Uh, it's when you've got three discs in your back that play up all the time. <laughs> no, Roy done his knee, so we had no Roy. And then... Uh, done the hemi so I just lived around. Yeah, obviously a great concept again, you know, obviously Legends of League and the fans have turned up. Yeah, and it's great to see all the sponsors that get on board and support the clubs and that goes back to the Mark Hughes Foundation. Thank you, Ogre. And obviously Maroon, you've got a very, very special guest. Yeah, absolutely. And as I speak, the plans are underway to get a statue in Church Street, <laughs> Parramatta, a ticker tape parade for this bloke. Heidi, how do you feel? I'm happy. I'm happy. It was a good day. It was a good grand final. Uh, our boys did exceptionally well. And we knocked off the champs, you know, they were looking at three in a row, so 
It was, it's a good feeling. It's no, it's no NRL grand final, apparently, but it, I'll take it. Yeah, bloody <laughs> oath. And great to see blokes again, like we spoke to Dennis and blokes like Dean Witters and fellas like Paul Carriage. We haven't seen them for years. No, you probably won't see him for another few years. <laughs> so, no, but it was a really good day. Thanks to the crowd for sticking around too. Uh, all the money raised, Mark Hughes Foundation, obviously, but uh, enjoyed it thoroughly. Had a good day. And to all his mates at Fox that say he hasn't won anything, there you go, boys. Up you, says Hindy. So to Noddy. <laughs> and Noddy, it's back to you. Uh, he's I've got with the general. The general. You you're happy that Hindy won, mate? You're happy that Hindy's finally won something, or you would have went three in a row for the dog? No, I'm not happy. I'm not happy, Noddy. No, stuff him. <laughs> Mate, we're all friends, aren't we? Oh no, I guess I guess I'm happy. He's a lovely bloke, um, and he, you know, he's played a long time and not won a grand final. So, uh, good luck to him. Yeah, mate. Obviously, what a great game today. You know, it's your fifth game of the day. Body's probably getting a little bit sore, and to finish like it just did. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it was a good finish. I think it's good for the crowd. I think everyone's happy that we got beat. You know, we're um, as, as you said, we're going for three in a row. It's disappointing for us. Uh, we, we pride ourselves on, on coming up here and doing a good job of going three in a row. So. I guess we'll be back next year. Obviously, it's a big thing to get back around your mates, hang out, do a bit of training, and obviously bash each other again. Oh, it's huge, Noddy. You know, it's like getting back with the boys and like-minded guys. Uh, you know, it's good to see everyone. We'll have a couple of beers tonight, and uh, like I said, start planning for next year. Thank you, General. Get ready for the next year, eh? Thanks, a lot. Thanks, you, man. Well, there this it bloke is. is all so the Newcastle. These gates. Well, there it is, all the action of the post-game celebrations. Parramatta picking up their first title in the Legends of League for 2019. A superb win, eight points to six, uh, the final score. Luke Lewis, what did you make of the grand final? What a finish for Parramatta. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I loved it. I've loved the whole day, to be brutally honest with you. Good to get here with all my ex-teammates, people that I've played against, looked up, idolised, absolutely spot on. The crowd was amazing for a great cause for the Mark Hughes Foundation. Uh, hopefully there's a whole lot of money raised that we can uh, yeah, get over to there. Uh, to, to watch that grand final, uh, to witness uh, High Marsh win a, win a grand final, absolutely spot on. But I really love the way that uh, Parramatta played today. Michael Butner, uh, he was just spot on for Parramatta. Uh, and the Canterbury Bulldogs, well, they didn't miss a beat right up until about a minute 30 to go. It's the only mistake that they really made. And, you know, uh, unfortunately come in the grand final. But, uh, wow, what an amazing uh, way to finish this um, excellent uh, concept of, of rugby league oh absolutely we're just having a look at highlights now there's the first try to grimaldi for canterbury that gave them the six points to nil lead and they held that for most of the game and then of course it was a terrific effort from john williams on the eastern touchline and then of course it was joel reddy that picked up the try for Parramatta, and that got them the win so a marvelous performance here a wonderful tournament a couple of people to thank to adele to Rebecca Bagley, to Matty Hill. Matty, you run an absolutely brilliant competition. Please keep this going. The fans love it. We as broadcasters love it. Everybody gets involved. It's a terrific tournament. To the broadcasting team, the hardworking team of Brett Kamali, Luke Lewis, Anthony Maroon, all of us here. To Freddie, the TV director, to the Bar TV TV crew, thank you so much for all your hard work. You are the Rugby League Kings. To everybody involved behind the scenes, getting out the team sheets, getting all the teams ready, all the gear, all that sort of stuff. These sort of events aren't a solo project so a big thank you to you my name's John O'Far hope you've enjoyed the last few hours of the Legends of League Parramatta they are the champions for 2019 they've beaten the defending premiers the Bulldogs we'll see you again in 2020